So yo what's up guys, how are you all so in this video are gonna see, what if Naruto had hates Rias in High Shoal, this is part 1 and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe, and some world replace. A soft laugh rang and filled the room, it was intoxicating to listen to, it was hard to believe that he was in this room with them. A soft smile from a beautiful girl, it's almost time, she said. Issei Hyodo sat in the corner of the sofa, and unfortunately, Kiba sat beside him instead of any of the girls within the room, they all sat on the other large couch or the loveseat, a large coffee table between them, with either a few boxes of lunch or various drinks. Rias Gremory, a stunning girl with red hair, turned toward her friend, she sighed and frowned, her hands sat atop a short school skirt, she turned her a gaze toward her friend. He will be here, the hair was one of her most defining features, along with one of the biggest busts within the school, despite Issei joining the club, she was still distant, his dreams seemed much closer now, but nothing had changed. His deepest desire to see those wonderful breasts of hers, trapped in some lacy bra and then finally being released from their constraints for him to witness. Though, he supposed he should keep his head focused on the current problem in the current jitters he felt, though, thinking about his favorite subject did help with that. They were all gathered here to help their king in a raiding game, the bastard known as Riser Fenex who was engaged to Rias Lucky Asshole, they were to help Rias escape from that predicament. Tense minutes passed as the clock kept striking, a magical circle appeared, and a person stepped out, she was a great, grey-haired beauty dressed as a maid, she got his heart beating a little faster and another thing going. Good morning, are you all prepared for the raiding game? Grafia said, she bowed. Almost, Rias glanced at the door, we're just missing one more. Who? Issei asked himself, he thought everyone here was all there was to it, the beautiful Akano, the cute Kaneko, and the innocent Asia there was still one more person. Who was it? No one else had trained with them, unless she had brought another one last minute. As the time passed, the more Rias clawed at her skirts, her eyes repeatedly darting between the clock and the door. He will be here, Rias said once again, more to herself than to anyone else. Issei leaned toward Kiba, his words coming out a whisper, um, who else are we waiting for? Kiba stared, his features forming into a scowl, whoever it was didn't inspire positive feelings, the other unhelpful knight, he spat. Why do you seem so sure? Akano asked. Ah, you really didn't do that, did you? I think it's been established that it would only work against you. Rias tightened her lips and crossed her arms that accentuated her already impressive bust, no other methods would entice him. What kind of methods did that involve? Issei's mind went into overdrive from that alone. Wait, Issei interrupted, turning the other's attention to him, who are we talking about? Once again, his question interrupted as to who the mystery knight is, another magical circle appeared in the room, it made Rias audibly gasp. To think he wouldn't come, this time, even Akano was displeased. Riser appeared alone this time, the room became pretentious by his appearance alone, a smug smirk appeared on his face, Rias, my dear, let us get this day over with so you may finally be my wife. Before Issei or anyone else could say anything, Grafia decided to intervene, now, Lady Rias, if you and your peerage are prepared then we will proceed to the destination of the raiding game. Rias looked at the door a final time, as if willing it to be opened. My lady? She was silent, but then her shoulders fell, yes, I suppose we are ready. As if on command, the door handle rattled and the door opened, everyone turned to the intrusion, dressed in the school uniform, it was a guy that Issei knew well, he also wore burnt orange headphones, which Issei recognized as an expensive make. His brows were furrowed, and a hard look on his features, he always had the perpetual mean look. Rias let out a relieved sigh, there, now nearly my entire peerage is present. Not like I had much choice, the new arrival frowned, his arms crossed as he shifted his weight. Of all the people that flickered across Issei's thoughts for the identity of the night, the last person was Naruto Uzumaki. The cold blue eyes, the whisker scars and the bandaged arm, not to mention the unfading scowl, his tie was never made, and always had his top buttons unbuttoned, his headphones only added to how unapproachable Uzumaki seemed to be. By his various deeds, he was also given titles by the populace of the school, the bad boy, delinquent, asshole, or Issei's favorite, the mirror alter ego of Kiba, dark Kiba, that last one didn't stick sadly, but it was known that Uzumaki did not like it. For some unknown reason that made Issei cry out to the world in unfairness, a few of the ladies of Kuo Academy dug him, not only that, but the mystery of what was underneath the bandages on his right arm was a debated topic. So, my love, your peerage has grown little, 
judging by your efforts, you truly wish to marry me. Do not call me that, I prefer quality over quantity at any rate, Rias replied. Then I shall demonstrate both, Riser replied, oh, Naruto decided to tune in, so, this is what is happening, I think I am actually glad I came. Issei smiled and almost verbally agreed before he saw the betrayed look on Rias, then he remembered how Naruto obtained his infamy. Chapter 1 The sky was a dark red with black clouds that seemed to flow faster than normal, this was their domain, one that belonged to the devils and they alone, as he took a deep breath, he reflected that this was his first time in their dimension. I am not even supposed to be here, he muttered to no one. They called themselves devils but they looked like any other person, the only difference was that they had wings, angels had the same wings too, only with different colored wings, how strange, not, Naruto met plenty of strange things throughout his life, the physical oddities ranged from disgusting, and monstrous looking individuals in his own dimension. The topic of devils made him aware of his own affliction, a devil that belonged to Rias, he breathed out a deep sigh, since he was a devil, he had wings too but they were useless because he could fly without them in the first place. He listened to the music playing in his headphones, Naruto had to admit that there was an abundance of music in this dimension and far different than the ones back home, it was a companion in these unfamiliar dimensions, the other one where schoolyard gossip seemed to rule. Uzumaki, are you listening? Uzumaki, funny, Naruto hung the headphones around his neck and looked at the group that assembled, he had seen some training during that week, and he honestly didn't know what to think of it, he wasn't sure how powerful people were here. Not even a little bit no, Naruto replied, it was a lie, but it gave a reaction that he was after, a little disbelief from Rias, with a mix of anger, by Akano, annoyance and amusement. The others glared at him, except for Issei who was confused, still, he could see the loyalty from them all that was placed in Rias. All were prepared to give it their all to fight, they all saw her as a friend, or was it as a master? Naruto glanced at the battleground of this little raiding game he had been dragged into, hell was a schoolyard. You haven't been listening to the plan? Rias asked, it wasn't a great plan, did she truly plan on sitting back if she hated this as much as she said it did? She should take complete control, fight tooth and nail to release herself from this, it only spoke of her empty words to him. If there was one thing he would like to see, it would be to see the look on her face if he immediately forfeited, hum, probably wouldn't be worth it though seeing through some device lacked the intimacy if he weren't here to witness. I have the best seats in the house, I plan on taking it all in. Why you're not gonna help? Issei said, Naruto glanced at him, he flinched, he wasn't even trying to be intimidating. Naruto didn't train with us, Kaneko stated, the most obvious of statements. How long has he been a part of the peerage? Issei asked. I am right here you know, the least you can do is ask me yourself, Naruto said, Issei went wide-eyed, his jaw going slack, and it was some time before the school started. Naruto could tell there was some questions on his tongue, where had he been this entire time? Amongst others that Naruto didn't bother himself with, and nor did he want to play 20 questions. The rating game will begin in one minute, Rias Gremory vs Riser Fenex. Naruto looked at the landscape, it was a perfect remake of the school, down to the shrubbery and small little details like the blinders in the rooms and the colors of every set of walls and windows, he had to admit that it was a good idea to fight on familiar ground. Begrudgingly, according to the rating game no one would be callid, and will appear in good hands when they were eliminated. Why you want help us? A blonde girl that stood by Issei spoke up, he hadn't seen her before, another new person under Rias? Naruto was surprised that she wasn't the least bit concerned by the pervert, still, this girl looked awfully innocent with her wide eyes that was somehow was filled with betrayal, okay, he did feel a bit bad for being that cause of that somehow, however, he wasn't about to let just any pair of sad eyes rope him into this. No, two crestfallen looks from the innocent girl and Rias, the others frowned and looked disappointed, while he didn't particularly enjoy those looks, he did relish in small enjoyment from Rias. I won't be helping Rias because she's not my friend, far from it. Karama stirred within, and his voice rumbled in his ear, this is going to be so predictable it makes me sleepy. What are you talking about? He responded, don't mind me, I think I'll reminisce about a few of these one day. Go back to sleep you ass, Naruto replied, smart move, I have to save my brain cells for until you smarten up. Do you even have any brain cells? You're made of chakra. Meh. Karama said nothing after that, while Naruto did not look in the seal, Karama would likely observe, this was the only interesting thing that happened in a while. He blinked, realizing that his mind was focused on the conversation. Asshole, Kaneko stated, 
fully unaware of the small exchange he just had with his fluffy but giant friend. Okay, Naruto muttered, the school seemed so fond of their nicknames, unwanted and awful, there was another name too, even thinking about made his blood boil. Another announcement was made, the rating game will now begin. The voice echoed throughout the arena, yet, no one moved at the moment of the call, they all looked to Rias. She flinched, a word died on her lips, and she glared at him. He scoffed, and her hesitation probably affected the others. Start the plan without Uzumaki. The others took a moment to even begin following her orders, moments ago, they seemed fired up, but as they moved away he noticed their energy had lessened, all because he shared some words with them. Soon, the sounds of battle began in earnest, explosions rang and echoed, lights flaring in the air, walls tumblings and glass breaking, a few commands being thrown out. Rias went out on a stroll, and he followed, Rias peeked at him, and he tilted his head as he stared back, something on my face? I was only doing what I thought was right, Rias said. Only after against my own wishes, so, this is what you've been preparing for, you know, I might have forgiven you if it was something important. It is important, she retorted, he could see a question forming, and he decided to expand on it. To you, but there's really nothing more, he said, yet, now, I only feel only more. He grit his teeth, he recalled that almost indescribable feeling. It's, it's not what you think, you are dying, I won't lie and say what you had influenced me a bit, but I couldn't let someone die right before me. An actual reason, instead of all the other things she had said, he scoffed at her and cranked up the volume on his headphones, there was nothing else said between them as the minutes passed. You do know that all the others will think you're protecting me. Other than your peerage you mean? He asked, she nodded and swept a strand of her hair behind her ear, Oh well, once everyone is down, I do intend on forfeiting. You can't be that cruel. He heard those of Riser's peerage going down, pawns and other small fry, he still didn't get this thing down, but it was about chess, he did hear that Issei took all of Rhea's pawns, he was just a knight, what was up with that anyway? He had little knowledge on this system. A person running at him at full speed wasn't even trying to be stealthy, fast enough to close their distance, one moment they attacked and the other he kicked her through several walls. An announcement of retirement, it was then he realized what had done, he placed his foot down and frowned, ah, damn it, I didn't really mean to do that. Rias just stared at him, it was instinct, think nothing of it. He saw the devils running around, somewhere he heard the walls crumble and more destruction around the school, devils flew around, flinging around colorful techniques, one devil spat about bombs. Two weeks isn't enough to teach someone how to fight well, he muttered, Issei isn't that scald. Rias stared out at the battlefield, are you just going to stand by and let this happen? I am being forced into marrying him, this isn't my choice. Naruto glared at her, this is about choice now. What about mine? If I was going to die there, then it was going to be my choice, but you took that away, as if I did die anyway. Rias Gremory's queen has been eliminated, she turned away, but he still heard the gasp of panic, Rias began to walk, and he trailed her steps, yet he heard more casualties join the list. Riser Fenex's three pawns and rook have been eliminated. Her head held a little higher, with a spring to her step, Naruto decided to walk a little ahead so he couldn't see her good mood, he wore his headphones and played a song. Thankfully, it was deflated when her rook was defeated, Naruto drowned out the announcements by putting on his headphones and playing more music. So, he did what he said what he would do, watch, he watched as Rias confronted Riser, watched as the innocent girl returned, Issei's dress break that somehow worked, ah well that was still funny, plus, he got to see the underwear that the girls wore, still, it felt a little wrong, the eliminations of the all the other pieces, how Issei came to the scene and watched how Rias forfeited her bishop piece to protect her. Until there was the pawn Issei, the great king Rias, and him, the knight, Riser still had his queen and bishop. Naruto sighed as he saw the pervert fighting against Riser, although he supposed fighting would be a generous term, whatever training they had all gone through seemed to have garnered little results, simply put, Issei was getting absolutely dominated, sure, he was throwing punches and still standing, but he was outclassed, it was painfully clear that he would lose, he didn't give up, despite it. Riser was stronger, and more scald in his hand-to-hand -hand combat, Riser didn't even bother throwing out any of his fire techniques either, he wanted to flaunt at how much better he was than Issei. Naruto paid no attention to Rias, and her uselessness, still, what would be the outcome when this ended? Rias, you're pathetic, Naruto said, her pretty little red head glanced at him, her eyes wide and glassy, a tear escaped from the corner of her eye before it became more defiant, and what do you think you're doing? 
Naruto wasn't bothered, he already told her of his own intentions earlier. And you? I've been stuck to your side while your friends fought while you stayed behind and did nothing. She flinched and looked away, such hypocrisy when someone proclaimed her slaves were her family but neglected didn't fight alongside them, she whined about the unfairness of it all. She trembled, all of her hope crumbling right before her, it was pitiful, she didn't believe in Issei, or herself for that matter, well, Naruto didn't really believe in them either he supposed. He closed his eyes, and he thought of his own problems, he kept track of the one-sided trades of fighting, was that Rhea's plan all along? that he would be forced to act in the face of uncertainty in his own fate, that their best interest matched? Other than this devil business, she was just a regular young woman, almost a civilian, while he lived a life of a shinobi, it was. He sighed, so, have you finally come to a decision? Karama asked, behind, inside an open gate lay a friend, a source of a hardship in the past, the mountainous fox grinned, a twinkle in his eye like he already knew how it would end, Naruto didn't answer, there was no use in answering a rhetorical question. In the real world, his attention brought back to the fight, Riser stood over Issei, his foot standing on his chest, Issei's face purple and swollen, blood trailed from his cracked lips. Admit defeat already, you're quite boring, Riser said. No, I can't, Issei replied, his eye was puffy and purple, had to give him that, he at least tried. Naruto let out a breath, he had to relent that it was easier to envision a future with Rias alone, not to mention that Riser was a prick, and that put him at risk it made his decision easier to handle. Looking at the bright side of things, least he would hand what Riser deserved, his attitude needed some work, he wished upon plenty of things upon Rias and none of them well. Rias could shackle him, lock a great deal of things away, however, she could only go so far, he still had his heart, his own views and beliefs and those he could never take away. Naruto stepped forward and passed the crumpled form of Rias, her gaze trailed up to meet her eyes, glazed with tears, but they turned deviant when they met his own, it, however, only worked against his previous thoughts, unless she was a better actor than he gave her credit for. You have some luck Rias, unfortunately, he ignored whatever expression that Rias had in favor of pouring his attention on Riser. Leave him alone already, he yelled, Riser turned to him, his eyes narrowed, your battle is with me. Issei climbed to his knees, but he could barely stay steady, he even found the will to even shout at him, Uzumaki? These formalities weren't a thing back home, whatever words he might be said were interrupted when Riser need him in the face, dispose of him my queen, would you? Riser Fenex turned his attention to him, Naruto resisted the urge to move in and save Issei, he didn't want Rias to suddenly mess up his generosity, so she would stay behind him if he could help it, if she went down, then it was over, besides, Issei would be fine. What was power if you weren't able to properly wield it? Naruto found that out the hard way, it wasn't dependable. Riser strode forward toward Naruto, a small explosion popped the air, and an announcement made its way towards Naruto's ears. Rias Gremory's pawn has retired, someone spoke from within him, Karama rested a hand against his cheek, almost lazily, wonder what kind of limitation these games they have, looks fun, beat the shit out of each other so hard and you're fine in the end. Their talks always happened within, and no one would be privy that he might be having a conversation, sometimes he might space out, but he could carry on other tasks, Karama continued to speak. Still, I always knew you'd step in eventually, oh yeah? Naruto said, he could almost sigh, he only found out just now, what did Karama see and he could not. I've always found it funny that you now have a jailer too, Karama replied, laughing, now that's irony. Shut up will you? Naruto replied, he heard the loud laughs from the fox, bastard. Riser was yapping when turned his attention back to him. This raiding game was a waste of my time, you should have realized this my lovely Rias, Riser said. Shut up, don't call me that, she spat with her teeth bared. My my, is your knight giving back your courage? Riser replied. I've been known to have that effect, Naruto said, he shrugged. Turns out you're not as bright as I hoped, despite how little intellect it requires to see how foolish it is to face me. Naruto laughed, Karama of course found this hilarious but he could tell for a different reason. Naruto could hear the deep rumble of his laugh inside his mind, although, it was probably twofold, at the insult, and at the fact that Riser didn't have a clue as to what was about to happen, Naruto hoped it was the former. Naruto dropped into a stance, it had been a little while since he had fought, but it wasn't easy to forget his lifestyle, he felt his anger funnel into concentration, to pluck Riser's feathers. Then, I suppose another example must be set, Riser replied, little meaningless taunts. Show him what the Fenex can do Riser, another girl that resembled Riser said. 
As much as he wished could fight along to a funny song that came on, he put his headphones aside. Riser shot forward, so slow that he could dance around him, he exchanged some quick blows, his form was good, but his speed was severely lacking. Naruto connected a fist to his stomach, and Riser staggered back but was quick to retaliate and fire another punch. Naruto left arm grappled his with Riser's, and his free hand crossed with his. Naruto heard Riser's grunting as he tried to overpower him. Naruto pushed him back a step, and another, he smiled at Riser, who only glared back with his teeth bared. Riser's arm glowed a flame. The heat flared upon his hand, rising with each second and alone with his strength. Naruto wanted to show Rias an example of how she was wrong, that there wasn't any need of turning him into a devil for him to live. He felt the searing pain in his arm, and he grunted as he tried to crush Riser's arm. It was enough that Riser let go of his right hand, quickly raising his free fist, he brought it down on the pretty boy's face. It was an immediate improvement to his looks in Naruto's generous opinion, only improved further when his fist met Riser's face twice more in quick succession, his onslaught was enough to bring Riser to the ground. Naruto wasn't done yet, he would be unrelenting, crashing his fist against his face, over and over again, yet, before he could his signature move, he was interrupted, a small fireball separated him off Riser, it was enough to send him some meters off before he recovered, Naruto was granted no reprieve as a small bolt of energy was sent at him, he jumped out of the way and an explosion erupted, pieces of debris swept by, and he shielded his face. His power burst forward, of his friend and his own, he would display just how far beyond he was compared to Riser. Plumes of smoke and dirt shot up between them, he decided that the smoke worked in his favor, he dove into the ground to traverse towards where the other two girls that attacked him. Where did he go? One of them asked, the blonde devil with her back facing to him, the other one was in the air, one the Rias called the Bomb Queen. He burst from the dirt and into air, he latched onto the flying devil's ankles, she let out a yelp of surprise, he gripped her tightly, and with his strength he whipped her down and swung below, she crashed against the pavement of the schoolyard, the earth and concrete letting out a loud crack, yet, he was not finished, a Rasengan formed in his hand as he dove to where the Bomb Queen lay. Riser's queen has retired, he didn't stop there as he turned his attention to the other girl, he sped towards her, and she held out her arms and closed her eyes. No wait. He didn't, and his attack lasted only moments, the last piece retired, and Naruto returned to his protective position in front of Rias, Riser finally stood from where he had been brought down. Let's get that forfeit out of that mouth of yours. Riser tried to stand, his limbs shaking as he did so, his face bruised, but it quickly went back to normal a scowl and fierce eyes, yet, Naruto would not give his opponent reprieve. Naruto appeared right before him, Riser's eyes widened, Naruto's hand tightly clutched his shoulder. Just wanted to resume from where we left off, a massive Rasengan forming in his hand, as he held him in place, Naruto didn't even wait for him to reply as he planted his technique in his stomach, he was flung over a bench, whipping around as he skid across the grass and walkways and through a fence. Once he stopped, he shakingly stood up, gashes, scratches and even a twisting blister wound on his stomach, they slowly pieced together and healed, Riser clutched at his stomach, his teeth grit together. Naruto grinned at the state of his distress, what you did to Issei, will be turned on you, let's see how far that regeneration powers of yours goes, yeah? Naruto felt power in case him, whatever words that Riser might be said was lost on him, Naruto no longer had any interest in it anymore, as a sentence spilled from his lips, Naruto closed the distance and broke his teeth in, Blood sputtered out from his mouth, not yet finished, he punched him in the nose, and he heard a crack, Riser seemed to love his own looks. He screamed, but to give credit, Riser tried to fight back, he swung his fists, fire engulfing them, a feeble attempt. Naruto almost felt bad, but the cruelty had shown to Issei pushed that feeling down, he parried any physical blows and deflected any fire techniques, the surroundings were soon lit aflame, the red flames matched the sky above. Come on now. Thought you would give a better fight, Naruto taunted, any attempts at power was overpowered. Try as Riser did, but it ended up with him laying face down in the dirt, he dragged his head through it. It was then Naruto felt he truly channeled his asshole Rai, perhaps all those mean spirited words of the school truly affected him, it was nice to let loose at someone other than Rias. Maybe I have become an asshole, Naruto mused, he sat atop Riser, still not giving up or yaw. Do I really have to use some more drastic measures? How about, lava? How much would that hurt you? Would you come out from the ashes like an actual phoenix? You, you lie, he sputtered out, dirt bursting from his breaths, why can't I move? A seal, and I am not, this fight was boring, and you're just pathetic, Naruto replied, 
A yellow orb appeared in his hand, he poured the required chakra into it, his technique began to glow red and hot, like lava in his own hand, it was wasn't long before Riser finally forfeited. If only good things could last, Naruto turned to the king and ruler of his life, Rias Gremory, the red-haired senior of high school, she sat, slack-jawed in bewilderment. Why you won? Rias replied, Naruto stared, I honestly, didn't do this for you at all. The habit of going to school bored him, taking a short ride on a packed train where he could barely find a seat with how crowded it was, Rias practically clung to him whenever they rode it. Often though, they would usually separate after it, not this time though. Breaking that monotony in their daily commutes seemed a challenge, as in these times he always accompanied Rias, to distract him from that fact he needed ways to entertain himself, listening to music, reading a book, or creating simple games. One such game would be to just practice his balance, swinging one foot and landing another foot on the dividing lines of the sidewalks, a dumb game but it was enough, apparently, his slow speed was not enough to deter her. Naruto increased his pace, which made Rias do the same and kept the steady handful of steps between them, when he slowed the pace, she did the same, yet, kept it up despite slowing to a crawl, his own slow gait annoyed even himself and heaved a mighty sigh. Okay what do you want Rias? Naruto asked, he swept his hair back, which also knocked his headphones back to hang around his neck, we already spend enough time with each other. She looked so smug with herself when he started their conversation, she matched his pace as she walked up beside him, she tried to stop her smile, but she gave up, I want to thank you. You've already thanked me enough, it's annoying, Naruto continued his hops, or skipping, whatever you wanted to call it. Because of you, I am no longer engaged to Riser Fenix. Well yeah, obviously, Rias straightened her uniform and swiped a strand of hair out of her eyes, well, I also wanted to ask as to why you did it. He groaned. Naruto noticed a couple of students ahead of them running to school, he stopped, if only to irritate Rias that they were going to be late, he checked his phone for the time, and found they were going to be late if they kept his pace. Yet, Rias stayed with him, patient and uncaring even as she checked the clock, perhaps she would crack, and so he continued his caterpillar walk and maybe even take a detour. It's not because I felt sorry, so you're out of luck if you were looking for that, Naruto replied, Rias stayed silent, and so felt compelled to continue. I did it because I wouldn't know what the hell would happen to me, you already know my problem. Otherwise, I would've, well, you've seen it. I see, she replied, Rias stared straight ahead. A frown formed on her lips, she seemed disappointed with his answer. What did you think it was? You already know my feelings about you, they haven't changed at all. Her expression changed, her features were set, and she met his eyes, why hasn't that changed? He laughed, that's a stupid question to ask, in fact. Why should I even answer? Rhea's chest puffed, and her fists clenched, her sense of pride welling up in defiance, I tried. She bit her bottom lip, cutting herself off, she heaved a large sigh but said nothing more, Naruto resisted a sigh, being here for so long was wearing him down. I suppose I never tried, did I? He rolled his eyes, you're late to class. That's fine, despite their late attendance in their first class, a lame excuse from Rias to their teacher was all it took to be forgiven, he rolled his eyes and went to Bis' desk, he leaned back on his chair and paid no attention to the teacher's lesson. Why was Rias so adamant on bringing him here? Enrolling him here to act like a student, he did no work, he did not listen, if he did then it was mostly for entertainment purposes. They were not relevant to his field in any shape or form, because he did not complete assignments, Rias or one of her peerage did his work for him to stay in school, however, exams were impossible for them to do, so he was near the bottom of the class. It annoyed Rias, which was the most important thing. The day passed along, and sadly without music to listen to, had rather not have it taken again, it was lunch now, with an absent Rias, a huge plus. Naruto sat on a bench in a hallway, he paid no attention to his surroundings, instead focusing on the music being played, there was no lyrics, but he enjoyed the sounds it made, they called it electronic music, but he had no idea of the subgenre. Someone called his name, and again, then it was repeated, and Naruto finally decided to get it over with, he turned to see the brown mop of hair that belonged to Issei. What's up? Naruto remembered the hole in his belly as Rias worked on him in the middle of a park, he wished he weren't there to witness that kind of thing again, those ing chess pieces was just a grim reminder. Issei looked surprised, um, you're not going to beat my ass? Why would I do that? Because others say so. Well yeah, Issei shrugged, you also did beat up a couple of those guys for some reason. I was just defending myself, Issei looked around the hallway, it wasn't private, 
Some people littered the halls, but they were engaged in their own conversation. Can we talk? Why not? Naruto replied, he wasn't doing anything, Issei led the way, down the hall and up the steps until they were up on the rooftops of the school, there was the sight of the large buildings of the city, Naruto leaned on the railing as he turned to look at Issei, what do you need anyway? Issei gazed intently as then he thrust himself to his knees, how are you so close to Bucko? He pleaded, I just want to see her beautiful breasts. Gross ah, uh, you got it the wrong way buddy, I hate her if you don't seem to recall. Except you are able to talk to her, while I am barely able to get a sentence out of her pretty lips, you must assist me. Issei shot up from his knees and grabbed him by his arms, a crazy glazed look in his eyes, not only that, it wasn't a question, it was kinda disturbing. Don't touch me, I don't where those hands have been in the last hour, Naruto replied, or will be soon after this conversation judging by his comments, he dusted where his hands had touched for good measure. Sorry, senpei, damn, why are you guys so formal? Naruto said, what was so bad about calling people about their first names? His question was ignored. I just want to grow closer to her and yeah, yeah you've established that. Why not just talk to Akano and see what Rius likes then? They're pretty close. Impossible. The same problem comes up with her too. Naruto sighed, you gotta be kidding me, two of the great ladies, and both their breasts are so big, and I wonder how they look every day, especially if I could compare them side by side? That's the dream. An image that left him conflicted, I'll tell ya right now that there's a lot of animosity between Rius and I, so you're shit out of luck with me helping, as for Akano, actually I think I'll just keep that to myself. You selfish bastard, he laughed, I am a man too why no. Then you're my rival. What? I thought you were Naruto felt the world darken, like a spotlight was affixed on his person, blinded, and the rest of the world was cast in darkness. His chest locked up, breathing deep made his chest hurt. A shudder ran through his spine, it trailed like a dark hand up his spine, it was suffocating, his limbs began to weaken, trembled as he tried to remember how to breathe, he collapsed to a knee. A cold sweat ran through his body, he could not breathe in air, it was like his entire body locked together, it hurt to try and move. Hey! What's wrong? You went pale like you're dying or something, Issei said, his voice sounded distant and barely registered. Do you think so? Naruto asked, or rather, he probably thought it, no matter. All he had to do was focus on one thing, he sensed for his seal that Rias kept on her person, thankfully, it was close by and it was easy to find. All he could focus on was the seeming never-ending sensation of dread, never mind his surroundings, as time passed, he begun to take note of himself, his vision was blurred, gradually, he felt his limbs relax, he gasped for air, like he forgot how to breath, it came out in gasps, his heartbeat was slow but felt like it was trying to burst through his chest. It was frighteningly easy to envision that, his chest and ribs popping away, his limbs and bones popping and expanding with blood gushing through, all right, maybe enough of his imagination, he thought. The headphones on his head were silent, his hands were on some slick wet surface, he was drenched head to toe, no wonder it was easy to imagine. Droplets fell from his hair as they hit the surface, one of his only thoughts was how his headset was wrecked. How did he get wet? He noticed the bare feet by his side, someone was rubbing his back, red soaked hair at the corners of his vision, soft bare skin, droplets of water falling down her long legs. Are you alright? she asked with a soft, concerned voice. No, 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 why did she have to be showering? Her skin looked so soft and wet, it was her long red hair that seemed a curtain to the more intimate parts of her body. Ya gotta be kidding me. He almost stumbled trying to look away, he expected to be hit, trashed around the room, he would let it happen even if he didn't mean for it, however, it was not to be as he expected. Do you need help with anything? She asked, what he felt was another kind of pain, it was like his body was going against him, all this seemed was another false layer of concern. I need you to put on a damn towel, what's the matter with you? Where's your dignity? Bathroom peeking wasn't something he wanted to carry around to his name, again, yet that hand was still rubbing his back. If you're certain you're okay, she said, yes, yes, I am. He spat, it was a great relief when the pressure on his back disappeared, who takes a shower anyway at an abandoned building. It calms me, she said normally, no sign of distress that he expected, he felt pathetic, especially being like this in front of her, Naruto heard clothing being ruffled before it stopped, I am dressed. Naruto looked up, Rias was dressed this time, garbed in the school uniform, her long red hair was damp, Naruto stood up, he almost felt normal again, like that entire episode hadn't happened at all. You're wet, she said, 
saying you two felt wrong but that was the only response that came to his head, it continually flashed damn it, now he had image in his head. Naruto took off the school jacket and wrung it and he did the same to his shirt, he didn't talk to her, only focusing the actions before he left the room, Naruto discarded the headphones into the nearest trash can. Akeno was outside holding a tray of treats, her eyes widened at them as a little smirk appeared, her eyes trailed down to his chest, ah, having showers with Bucko now? Did she want to shower you her thanks? Shut you 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 p. Naruto muttered as she gave a little giggle, he could not stop his cheeks from heating up, something that only made her laugh. Puddles were formed underneath him as he took his shoes and socks, these shoes and socks, he rather have his sandals, Naruto checked the phone he was given, it wasn't wet and it looked to be still working. He threw his jacket and shirt over the heater, he had some fire techniques, but had just end up ruining them. You're getting naked, our relationship is going fast, not that I don't enjoy it, Akano replied, her hand placed on her cheek as her eyes scanned him over, having girls fawning over him was nothing new to him, especially with the large influx of visitors to the hidden leaf. Naruto didn't say anything, but he still felt his cheeks heat up against his will, Akano was an attractive lady, and that teasing smile almost made him not want to look at it, those breasts were something else perhaps like. Rias entered the room not long afterwards, her hair fully dried this time. Are you sure you're okay? She asked, Naruto only returned a curt nod. He sat on a chair and decided to have one of the snacks that Akano had made, trying to ignore everyone and the pure shame he felt, maybe he should have left. It was hard to shake the images just prior, and now one thing would always pop into his mind whenever he would think about Rias, that she wasn't just some cold, dumb, malicious demon devil or whatever they call themselves, a hot young woman would always trail after it or before it. He felt true despair, why did that have to happen? Oh shut up already, Kurama yelled, how much longer will you keep groaning? You know what? I think I like this torture you're experiencing. He appeared calm and focused, but within he was writhing, he was brought out of his thoughts when the front of the door slammed open. Issei spilled on through, his eyes wide and filled with panic, rushing over to Rias, his words came out in a rush. He was breathless, Uzumaki disappeared. I dunno what the hell happened but one second he was there and other he just popped away, we need two. Issei froze as his eyes finally saw everyone else with him, Akano and himself, eyes went down to his half-naked form, S senpai? Yo, Naruto grimaced, it had to get bad, Issei regarded them all, each of them one by one for several moments before it stopped on Naruto, the panic was replaced by a sense of distress, the eyes spoke of betrayal, and his lips trembled, w why are you naked? You were about to get it on with them aren't you? Suddenly he wept and bolted out the door, you dumbass, Naruto eyed Rias, that perv is in your peerage. She heaved a sigh, I know, Rias, she flinched, since we're talking, and I'd like to keep those exchanges low on the daily, what would you think if a teacher caught me out in the halls half naked? You think they would suspend me? Akano had her chin in the palm of her hand, staring intently, no, detention perhaps. Ah, so what if I flash some people what about then? He declared. You'll do no such thing, scandalized, with her mouth hanging and head shaking in disapproval. Akano laughed, well just go home for today. What? Really? Akano giggled again, being corrupted by Uzumaki-kun are we? Rias stuttered, w well, you don't have any spare clothing here in any case. Oh, so we're ditching the rest of classes. Whatever, this worked fine for him, Rias would have to be near him in any case. Let's go then, he said, Naruto stood and gathered his belongings, still heavily damp from his shower. A glowing seal appeared below her feet, and he stepped beside, it was an interesting application, one moment later, they appeared in a rather large apartment for the city. Has the world turned upside down with Rias skipping class? Rias said nothing, her only response being a crooked pout and crossing her arms. He stretched and went to his own room to change his clothes, a plain orange t-shirt and some joggers, ah, comfortable stuff, he passed by Rias' room, which was always closed, no exceptions. To his surprise, Rias sat in the living room on the loveseat, he debated on leaving but it felt like she would win, he sat on the big couch for himself, he wanted to watch some television, so he found the remote and switched it on, it wouldn't be a quiet thing like he hoped. How far were you when that happened? She asked, he glanced at her, eyes narrowed and wondered what her aim was, thoughts filtered through his mind, but nothing came up, he returned to his show. The other side of the school, on the one of the balconies. Her brow furrowed and went deep into thought for a long while, Thankfully, it was a nice pause as he delved into his show, I am worried about you. Oh yeah? 
He rolled his eyes, that process should have ended a long ago or should NT happen the way it is, none of it makes any sort of sense. Sure. Naruto said, Rias shook her head, no, I am serious, that strength you showed in your fight against Riser really should NT be possible with the limitations with the devil pieces, do you remember what happened with all my pawns? He decided to humor her, if only to close the conversation, right, can't really forget what happened to me, it took all your pawns right? She nodded, yes, but you took only a knight, as you can see, Hyodo's potential hasn't been fully realized, yet, you haven't trained at all, correct? Yet you're far more powerful. Whatever, he replied, what's your point? She frowned, whatever the extent of your power, it should NT be able to be contained by one knight piece even compared to how you faced Riser. The conversation brought up the topic of strays, there were plenty of ways he did not want to die, turning into a stray was on that list, how they deformed into a twisted creature with a crazed mind. Whatever, it's not your problem, except it is, she replied, I'll ask my brother if he's ever seen something like this, if he doesn't have the solution, then I'll ask the person who made these pieces, they should be able to figure it out what's wrong with you. Naruto stared at her, but she paid no attention to him, she looked rather deep in thought, I'll believe it when it happens. That piece inside him was similar to Karama in a way, a seal, it integrated inside him, and if it broke it would probably cal him judging by his researching. Can I ask something? Rias asked, you just did, he chuckled at his overused joke, was he the first one to think of this comeback? She smiled for some strange reason that he couldn't guess, he sighed, go ahead. This thing on my arm lets you teleport to me, Rias said, she mentioned to her shoulder. Yeah, he had asked and she had said she would do it if it would help him stop being his ass though, in her own words. Have you always known how to fight? That was more than one thing, but he answered anyway, of course, I have to be good at it. Oh, and why is that? He turned to her, and she peered back, he shook his head, and she tilted her head to the side, an almost sly smile, he rolled his eyes and turned to the T, V. They watched more of the television before another thought entered his head, Rias, you should get me another pair of headphones. He didn't ask, because that would be too nice, she frowned and her cheeks puffed, but her expression changed as a smile appeared, only if you do well for our exam tomorrow. There's an exam tomorrow. Naruto said, she gave a matter of fact nod as she once again crossed her arms that accentuated her already large bust, damn, he almost saw them bare. There is, Rias was peeved, so, do you agree? Naruto briefly thought about it, it would be some work, but he hadn't done anything meaningful since he had arrived here. I will if it's a good set. Then it was her turn to think, her lips changing in a variety of expressions, if you get an A. Fine, he felt like he was bartering with a parent, truly pathetic, she had all the money, she had all the power over him, she could practically teleport away, and he would be a goner. Ria smiled, great, there's lot we have to study for Uzumaki. She looked so giddy, he could see the mental note taking and filing she was doing in her head, that time spent in hell was already enough for him. Right. I am not going to study, but, you can't get that good of score without studying and you never study. Very true, he replied, but I want study with you. Rias stared for a long minute, then if I win, you wouldn't mind if I add that you would spend the weekend with me doing anything that I want? He almost laughed, okay sure, she went back to her seat but stared at him for a while, eventually he was able to tune her out when she started to do other things, her phone and giggles, homework on the coffee table, and then simply watching the shows with him. Naruto felt his mood life when she was silent, then, of course she had to ruin the whole thing again after all that time. Thank you again, even if you said you did it only for yourself. I don't think I've ever met someone who wanted to thank me as much as you. Naruto's focused on the paper in front of him, he looked at the writing on the board of instructions, he heard the taps and scratches of pens and pencils in the room, he laid back in his chair before a fresh memory popped in his head that told him the answer, he quickly wrote down the answer before leaning back in his chair. Ah, shadow clones, so, useful for cheating answers for his paper. He sat near the windows and edged his paper so that his clones could see the questions, one clone had seen all the answers, which had given the information to be written, now all they had to do is pop after finding the answer and he would write it. Naruto would have welcomed being kicked out, but Rias wanted him in this school, it made things harder for Rias seeing as she was so insistent on him being here, she also solved a problem when it came to tests that he refused to do. Naruto had to give her credit for this one, a temporary one. Naruto was the first one to finish during the exam, even being faster than the vigilant Rias and Akano, the teacher eyed him, a look of expectation on her face that he was about to destroy. 
The teacher took his paper and a look of disbelief crossed her face as she took a quick look through the pages, surprising, but I hope you continue Mr. Uzumaki. I am only doing this so I can get something in return. He was stared at, then I hope these incentives keep coming. Naruto took a seat back on his chair and doodled random things in his notebook, that was his entire book, as there was no reason to take notes, some people thought there was someone doing his homework for him, they would be right because Rias did, this test would be all him, he cheated, but it was still him. The ring of the bell sounded, signaling the end of class, chairs being pulled back were heard and some excited chatter between students were heard, he waited, his gaze locked outside the window. The sound of a container settled on his desk, and Naruto looked at the perpetrator. Rias, Naruto muttered, some murmurs were said about how rude he was, among other things, even if he only said her name without some honorifics attached or her last name. The girl herself was smiling, she swept stray hairs away from her face, this is for you, seeing as you finished first. Naruto peered at the object on his desk, it was box, a bento, I've already made my lunch if you didn't forget. She was still smiling, Naruto kinda wanted to wipe it off her face somehow, nothing came to mind however. Cold, Kurama commented, Naruto noticed that the fox wasn't the only one saying something, the civilians here were very loud. Why is she giving him lunch? Is she into Uzumaki Senpei too? Rias talked, I know, but I thought you might appreciate something better prepared. True, he was tired of the same sandwiches, he took the bento box, not mad that I finished first? Well, it remains to be seen if you've accomplished our bet. Then he heard the comments of how much an asshole he was, with Rias bento in hand he made his way towards the cafeteria to eat, it was lunchtime, so other students were on their way to it as well, or if not, into town or somewhere else on the school grounds to eat in private. When he made it to the cafeteria he sat down on a table and began to eat, as he put the food into his mouth, it exploded with flavor, why did it have to be that way? He stuffed it into his face because it was that delicious. He had expected another ordinary day today, but when Issei sat down across from him that was wiped off the table, that was okay, had much rather have that happen, he had no headphones, he had no music, that might have made him more approachable, it also deterred Rias from speaking to him, and it helped drown out the sound of her voice. Senpei, can I talk to you? Naruto's brow twitched, he wondered what he wanted this time, sure, why not? Issei took a quick look around to make sure no one was listening in, while some people curiously looked at their direction, the drown of the crowd was loud enough that people wouldn't hear them, are you a boob man or an ass man? I thought this would be important, of course it is. He laughed, but he shrugged, I guess, a boob man? There was a flash in his eyes, like this was something that Issei was experienced in talking about, not the experience part, but the talking part, big ones? I don't know any size is good, they're just really nice to look at okay. Why was they talking about this, if you're not going to talk about anything else I am just going to leave? Ah, sorry. I just didn't know where to start with you, I, uh, was wondering how long you were a devil. That was better, having friends that talked about nothing about girls must have done that, about some time before school, maybe a month or two it started, been stuck with Rias ever since. So, you, were normal before then? He asked, I was normal, Naruto replied, though, their definition of normal was different, he wasn't from this dimension after all, perhaps Rias had a suspicion about, or at least with his abnormal status. There's one other thing I want to know, it's the reason why I wanted to talk to you in the first place, Issei said, Naruto waited, there was a steely resolve in his eyes. Why were you walking with Bucko yesterday? You said you hated her. He didn't know why he expected something else, we live together, and she walks with me. You live with her. Senpei why are you so lucky? Issei said, he looked emotional ith his head buried into the table and his arms covering his head, he mumbled others things like how he had spent a lot of time alone with her. Luck, Reet, it was obvious from this conversation that Issei shared didn't share a mutual dislike for Rias, Issei was a turned into a devil because he got stabbed in the gut and because he carried something he called a scared gear, or metal gear. A weapon to, something like a weapon anyway. Naruto appeared within the confines of his seal, the visage of Kurama appeared when he went deeper, Naruto gave a smile, he had no hard feelings towards Kurama, hey that sounds so familiar, I wonder why. Hope it's not evil and doesn't try and escape. Kurama gave a blank stare, like he was unimpressed, disgusted, go enjoy your bento Rias gave you. Bastard, Naruto focused back in the real world as he ate the last remaining remnants of his food, Issei continued to talk. Senpei, since you hate Bucko, switch with me, then she'll come to me when she's all lonely. Naruto laughed, oh wait you're serious. 
Besides, it's not by choice, and I think I hit my daily limit of Issei today if you keep talking like that. What do you mean not by choice? Naruto threw the box into the nearest trash can, somewhere across the cafeteria. Look, you don't have to deal with this stray devil crap that you've seen in your first outing, I do, alright? I have to worry about that every time, so that means I have be in contact with a person who made me like this every second. He had seen some of Issei's training during Golden Week, Naruto had done plenty of his things but he was mostly restricted to around that area, he trained on his own, but it done to hone his own shinobi skulls, try as he might to control the energy Rias had graciously given him, it was very difficult. Is it that bad? Look how far I was from her the other day, I can't be more than a city's distance away at most, Naruto replied. That's what happened? Issei asked, and he nodded, I am glad you're okay. I am too. They were quiet for a while as he dug into the rest of his lunch, it was so much better than the packed lunches or the cafeteria's selection. An excited expression appeared on Issei's face, Senpei, when that huge orb appeared in your hand it was so cool. Issei replied, look at that, he wasn't all girls and boobs in his head after all, can you teach me that? Thanks, and no I can't, they continued to talk, Issei was alright if he wasn't talking about girls all the time, before long, the bell rung. He might as well go to his next class and sit in there and do nothing again, because apparently, he could not even leave school without his condition acting up. Naruto didn't think whatever dirty thoughts Issei had about Rias, however, Akano was a different story, hey, she was an attractive gal. Once his conversation was done with Issei, he continued with his day in classes, the sad thing about being a senior was that he was in most of Rias' classes, ah, uh, why did he always have a seat near her? You look confident, she said. Rias was seated behind him. You might as well hand over the money, he replied, the teacher was going over the examination rules and expectations. Only when we get our marks back, ah, uh, Naruto groaned, he had to wait an entire week for that. He stopped talking to her, despite her speaking more, he heard whispers from the others looking onto this spectacle, they were trying to be quiet about it, but he could hear every word, all about how one of the two great ladies of Kuo was talking to him, of course, he had been openly hostile to her since he had been here. Being an ass to Rias was apparently sacrilege, she's talking to him again? But, he's an asshole, that's why she's so great, always nice to everyone, no wonder everyone loves her. Praise for her and shit talking to him, though sometimes there were positive comments about him, his looks, and even what the bandages on his arms hid, some said the sleeve of his arm was covered in tattoos, others said that he possessed a burn injury. There were always conspiracies about what was hidden underneath his arm like how the tattoos signified he was a part of some organized crime, they were some truly weird shit that they came up with. She's trying to melt that cold emotionless heart of his, Naruto threw a piece of eraser at the person who said that, he was not cold, and he was not emotionless. He was a shinobi for s sakes, the D-class missions were far better than the hell than he was currently in, seeing as he was finished with his exam, the teacher wouldn't give a shit if he left, he stood and left for the halls, and for a while he just wandered. Uzumaki-san. Someone behind him said, it was Sona Citri, another devil that Rias had mentioned that was here in the school, she was dressed in the academy uniform with the ever so short skirt, Sona adjusted her glasses as she peered at him, another figure who thought he had authority over him. Are you skipping class again? Kinda, it was an exam, he shrugged. Aside, disappointment marred her face, I can't imagine you ever finishing early, it's preposterous, in fact, I escort you to some. Naruto walked away and paid no attention to her again, and she trailed off, it was just a remainder how far had fallen, ah, just a visit home would be great, Sona caught up to him. Being a student, you should know that you're expected underscore. What are you going to do Sona? Give detention. We both know I am not going to do that, do me a favor and suspend me or kick me out, Naruto laughed, give a shout out to Rias for me will ya? How rude, she said, I demand that you stop these games. Games? He chuckled, the only person who can demand anything of me is Rias, because why no, slave things, she's the only reason why I am in this school in the first place. Sona didn't say anything, other than a frown as she walked off with her head held high. If only he had music, Naruto continued to walk through the halls like he belonged here, with no teacher to bother him, he heard someone else walking down the hall that he paid no attention to, at least not until there was a tap on his shoulder. Naruto turned around to see the shorter redhead girl that he was chained to. Oh god, he flinched, you're skipping class too. It was Rias again, she smiled, but of course, I finished my exams too. Damn. Why did I expect you to finish last? She laughed, well, maybe we're closer than we think. 
He snorted, that'd be a bummer, a question formed on lips, so why are you bothering me now when you barely did before now? Thanks to you, I don't have to worry about myself anymore, the Gremory are known to be caring to their peerages, and I want to keep that reputation. Even if I am an asshole to you, especially you, Naruto stretched his arms and had a feel of the dress shirt and vest, it was not as comfortable compared to some of the stuff he wore, but it was better than the school uniform, it not something he would wear often. Rhea started to hum to herself, her gaze locked into a mirror on the coffee table as she applied lipstick, Naruto could have made some derogatory comment, but nothing came to mind, it was still there, the need, but the thought lacked, what was the use anyway? Try as he might to make Rias feel like she was nothing more than acid on his tongue, it didn't work, she took all his words all of it filtered it clean through, and turned it into a smile and appreciative eyes. What a weirdo, seriously, part of the fun of it all was seeing the reaction, why did she have to be so selfish? He missed the old good times, the simple old good times, the fun old good times when any comment affected her, now she was just, a punching bag, that smiled at him. Hoped she was happy, she ruined what little fun he could have. What are we doing again? He asked, whatever it was, he was going along with it, Rias adjusted her tight red dress, it was strapless, and, well, he didn't realize how great it looked until he saw it. Strapless looked magnificent, perhaps it was the bare shoulders, the lack of bra straps, or the cleavage, maybe it was the size it was all of it, thankfully, Rias didn't notice, he hoped so. I asked my brother to help you with your devil piece, and in turn, he asked the creator of the evil pieces to help out, this party is just an excuse to find what might be wrong with it. He paused in his buttoning of his vest and looked at her, long red hair now swept aside as she attached an earring. It seemed she was serious, what else would she do? She didn't have to do anything, if she could get this devil piece out of him, he would be grateful, but even then, no use thinking about it, not when he couldn't get the answer by himself, this wasn't his specialty. A visit home would be nice, is that it? He asked. Naruto held out a formal jacket to inspect, he was in formal wear, but not the type he was familiar with, but what they called western wear, he placed it back on the couch, he went without the shoes, as he preferred his sandals, so maybe it ruined his image a bit, he might change it. Still, dressing up was a bit fun, it was interesting to see the different cultures around this world, and their beliefs, television, and the internet. Well, formally, it's a celebration for you winning the rating game for me, my, brother, just used that as an excuse to have a party. He noticed a frown. What's wrong with him? Naruto didn't meet her brother yet, though, he was at the rating game, and he saw the similarity. Rias gave a stilted laugh, oh, nothing. He's just, um, he's just overbearing, which might be putting it mildly. Oh, he picked up the light blue tie that was on the couch, before he placed it back down Naruto saw her stand from the single love seat and drop down to the seat beside him. Do you know how to tie that? She asked, her eyes still bright as ever. No. Why do you think I never wear the one on the uniform? I thought it was your preference, it is, you should wear it, she said, and picked up the tie lane between them, it will bring out your eyes. It can do that. Of course, with what? Magic. Rias laughed, nothing like that, it's just a shade lighter than yours. I don't get it, he stood up to put some distance between them, it didn't work as she followed, tie in hand. Let me try and put it on you, she said, he frowned as she swung the tie behind his neck he could smell her perfume, and he realized she was as tall as him, her soft hand weaved some loops before she let go and admitted with a little smile, actually, I don't know how to tie one either. I don't blame you, you're not a guy, why did you try? I thought it was easy, it should nt be too hard, he grabbed a hold of it and tried to tie it together, how does it look? Terrible, oh yeah. You just gave up, then ill try again, Rias hurried to the kitchen table, grabbed a magazine and flipped through the pages as she made her way back, and do it right. She showed him a page, he didn't see what the magazine was about, but the pictures on the page illustrated how to tie several knots, it seemed complicated, but she was determined to tie it for him, unwilling to hand it over. Okay, you're trying too hard, but you tried for me, she replied sternly, really, this is nothing. Did she have to be so, dramatic? He sat down on the couch and watched the television, though, she was right, this was nothing. Okay, I got it, I think, get up please, oh yes, sure, of course master, bucko or whatever. Rias paused, blues bored into him, her voice was nothing more than a yearned whisper that escaped through her trembling lips, please, anything but that, anything. The sincerity was impossible to miss, like a lightning covered hand that pierced his chest, yes, it was that obvious, trust him, he experienced it firsthand, suddenly, 
he was very unsure on how to act. Um, well, okay, he muttered, he tripped over his words, what the hell, this was different, far from her usual reaction and when he hadn't even for it in the first place. Her eyes brightened with a tender smile, thank you. It's not like, never mind, he wasn't sure what he was going to say. Rias remained silent as her hands grasped the tie and wrapped it around his neck once again, a concentrated look appeared on her features, and she occasionally looked aside on the pictures to follow its directions. There, all done, she tightened it, and he loosened it, she stepped back and he did too, you look handsome. Of course, how about me, how do I look? Rias stepped backwards and clasped her hands behind her back, it enunciated her chest. A, okay I guess, she looked spectacular, but he wasn't going to admit that to her, she frowned, sighed, and sat down, Naruto sat back on the couch and watched some television. You should complete contracts, it will help you in the future, Rias suggested. Naruto rolled his eyes, I am not in the slightest bit interested in that Rias, there's no use in trying, so don't bring it up, it was a nice silence, but he saw her staring at the corner of his vision, he twitched when she didn't stop, even when he looked at her, what? Is there something the matter? Why? Her lips pursed, it's just you're not being as. Asshole-ish. Usual with me, nice save, and besides, you're not even reacting anymore, what's the point? He caught her staring by the corner of his vision, her eyes closed by the intensity of her beaming face, then he realized how she might take it, she didn't say nothing more a long while, until, of course, she did. You know, there's a soft heart inside you, I am thinking. Don't push it, she tried to hide her smile, but it was done half-heartedly, but, really, is there something that, that I can do? They were things she should know, but, he wasn't sure she could do anything much that someone else could do, no. He wondered if she knew, or if it was things left unsaid, for now, he would play the slave, and she would play the master. Some party this was, sure, the food was great, no ramen, but it was filled with people he didn't like, he didn't even bother to remember their names either, he wanted to limit the number of devils that he would meet, so he kept in a corner with Rias Peerage. Rias handed him a drink, and he eyed it suspiciously. Drink it, it's good, he took a sniff, some type juice that he couldn't recognize, he shrugged and took a sip anyway, it was as she said, delicious. Golden eyes watched him, blank, unamused, Naruto had noticed that it was the same look, emotionless, dead eyes that beckoned him into the dark abai. Do you say anything at all? Naruto muttered before the thought even finished. Judging by the spark of fire in her eye, Kaneko was not, asshole. Was the word she said, just the one, his eye twitched, other than that? He was stared at as Kaneko devoured a large cookie, she pointed at Issei, he's a degenerate pervert. Issei whined, are you hungry Uzumaki-kun? Rias asked. I could eat more, is there ramen? No, what the hell? But, ramen isn't ill stop you right there, you like ramen then? Ill keep that in mind. Good luck with that, Naruto leaned back against the couch, he doubted that she would ever surpass the masterpieces that was Tuchi's ramen. Bucko, is it true that you make bentos for senpei? Issei asked. Hum? Yes, why? She replied, you're so lucky senpei. Naruto crossed his arms once again as he regarded Issei's reaction. Why wouldn't the guy get into his head about Rias? He glanced at the redhead, what kind of company do you keep? She blinked at him, you're a part of it too, what a bunch of losers. Yeah, I am surrounded by idiots, everyone last one. Shut up Karama, go back to sleep, why? This is interesting to me too, plus, I want to witness, Karama trailed off ominously, and inside, he grinned. Witness what? You'll see, someone tried to talk to him in the real world, ah, am I a loser too, Uzumaki-kun? Akano asked. A little less maybe, he cleared his throat, he focused on the peerage huddled together in the corner, where is Kiba anyway? Light Kiba. Issei laughed, Naruto's eye twitched, hey Issei, Rias tied my tie and said I was handsome, did she do to that to you? And no, Issei teared up, Naruto would have the last laugh, don't laugh bucko. Rias was doing a terrible job at trying to hide her smile, but she didn't laugh, I am sorry, but, as for my other night, he said he wasn't feeling too well, she frowned. Whatever problem they had, it was theirs to deal with, the conversation went into small talk, until the moment someone who resembled Rias approached. My little Rhea Tan. How are you? So, this is the savior of my little sister. Naruto looked up from his drink, crimson hair, and a smile on his face, Rias' brother, he was certain. Several devils around them glanced at him, before going back to their business. Rhea Tan? 
Naruto muttered. Rias returned his glance with an uncomfortable smile, and yeah, I am Naruto. Sears X Lucifer, oh cool, for now, how about we converse somewhere privately? Sears X gave a nod to Rias, she commanded the others to stay put and they walked away as Rias tugged on his sleeve for him to follow. They exited the main hall of the party, and through a couple of sets of doors until they entered another large room in his large mansion. Rhea Tan told me that you have some problems with your evil piece, Lucifer replied, gone was the almost carefree air, replaced by a smooth professionalism, huh? I sure do, I have to be near her at all times, mostly, sometimes I can be further away, but I haven't really tried how far. Hum, interesting, usually, this process only lasts several weeks, or at least until they can control that power, as far as I am concerned, some months is abnormally long. What would happen if it's removed? He asked, removing pieces is difficult to accomplish, often, it ends in the death of the holder. Naruto appeared in his seal, then again, that grin Kurama had, well, what do you know, that's familiar. Kurama hummed, I don't think it's as violent as what happened with me. I remember how much it hurt that it made me pass out. I think the question that's more important to you, would you still be a devil? Another would be what would happen if he did remove it, Naruto turned away from Kurama and focused on the world around him. Rias' brother spoke to him again, would you kindly show that yellow orb you displayed at the raiding game? Sure. A yellow Rasengan formed in the palm of his hand. Interesting. The man had a curious look to his eye, and Naruto knew the next question, how about, demonic energy? Rias glanced at him with her greenish-blue eyes, Rias knew that he had another type of energy, it was the reason he was turned into a devil after all, he had never explained the specifics of his power, or the extent of it, I can't, no matter how hard I try. Can you try for me? I guess, Naruto closed his eyes, focusing on what they called demonic energy, it took a long time, yellow surrounded him, a familiar presence of that power, tinges of red would be seen throughout, melding occasionally melding together with the yellow. Naruto stared at the unfamiliar, alien little black ball that floated within this entire aura. He supposed, this would be a representation of the mixture of power, two he was familiar with, and many others that belonged to the tailed beasts and sage, it was his to use, of course, the black ball is something he had no clue on how to use. Isolated, and unfamiliar, it mirrored everything around it, and he stared at it, this thing did not belong, Naruto hesitantly reached out, and halted a breath away, then he touched it, and the result was immediate. Naruto stumbled but instead of falling to the ground, someone caught him, it was Rias, her blue eyes filled with concern, he felt his erratic heartbeat, and his throat felt dry, he moved away from her, and she stepped closer. I am fine, he spat, and she stepped back, it wasn't as bad as before, but it was not a great feeling, he tried to calm his heart with calm deep breaths nothing worked but it would pass eventually. Sirzex placed a contemplative hand went to his chin, and he was silent in contemplation, that power is unfamiliar to me and I fancy myself as having witnessed all forms of power, we can't discount the fact it may play a part, Rhea Tan. Please fetch some water for the young man, he looks thirsty. Rias looked at them both before she walked off, it's definitely the reason why she might have resurrected you. I needed no resurrection, Naruto replied, Sears X smiled and hummed, regardless of you both think, Rias wanted to me to try and help you, she is very concerned about you. Naruto frowned, ah, sorry. She just wanted me to be serious about this, to do whatever it took to help you. Well, I saw the concern, and I made a promise, and a promise between siblings is not one I take lightly. Words to be kept, I get it, I'll say something, but I also want Rias to be here too. Ah, don't misconstrue, she didn't want any of this said, I am saying this out of concern for my sister. I understand completely, Naruto replied, the bond of a sibling, even if Naruto didn't have a blood brother, he knew. Sears X eyes bored into him and he nodded, I also wanted to take this chance to thank you for getting my sister out of that marriage. Oh yeah. Do it again when I am not around, his eyes widened, hum, it sounds like my dear sister has a road ahead of her. The door opened once again, and Rias walked in with a glass of water, he took the glass without saying a word and drank it until it ran dry. Rias, I am sure you noticed, haven't you? Naruto said, he felt his teeth grit together, with my fight with Riser. Rias flinched when he shattered the glass in his hands, a shard in his hand, since one of his arms was a prosthetic, made from the first Hokage's cells, bandaged to hide the white skin, the other however, was his own flesh and blood. Not that I think I am special or anything, he gripped the broken shard, and he watched her eyes widen, the panic looked on her face as she shouted out what he was doing, he slashed his arm, it was painful, but it was nothing new, blood dripped from his wound, 
a messy gash ran down his arm. Ah, you ing idiot, he felt Karama's chakra run through, a yellow glow encased around his arm, until it was spotless. There was no need, Naruto said, he couldn't look at her, she didn't need to know anything more, he passed by her, and went through the door. And you accused her of being dramatic, Karama, shut up, it was nothing. Yeah, it was nothing, but still stupid to do, what's with this anyways? I already know how this will end, because I know Naruto Uzumaki, and you also know how it goes. He didn't reply. Rias Gremory filtered through the crowd, some congratulated on her first victory, which annoyed her to an extent because she wanted to find someone, it only slowed her down, her eyes swept across the crowd, it should have been easy, but it was harder than she thought. Rias took a deep breath to calm the shakiness in her breath, her hands rubbed together in a nervous manner, she searched the crowd again, before she found who she had been looking for. This should help, hopefully, hello darling. Her mother smiled, before it faded, is there something the matter? I, wanted to ask for some advice, suddenly a wide smile appeared, oh, has my dear daughter finally found a boy to love? What? No, it's something, pretty much the opposite of that, can we move somewhere private? Other than her wide eyes, she gave a nod, they had to cross the crowd again, and it took a while as they had been repeatedly stopped once again by the guests, they entered a dining room that was empty. What is it dear? Rias crossed her arms, unable find the start of it all, she settled on just explaining all of it, when she found Naruto in a crater, his stomach open, a knife clutched in his hand, his weak whispers, her explanations and his denial to that solution, that's where it all started, sometime before school had started. So, it is boy trouble then, Vanilana Gremory giggled. Rias frowned, if you want to put it that way, it's just a joke dear. So, is there any way you can help? Rias asked, her gaze hopeful. Do you like him? What? Do you like him? Rias noticed the rather serious gaze from her mother, um, a bit I guess, he helped me win the rating game. Her mother gave a little sigh, a scolding tone to her voice, from what you've told me, he is not a nice person, especially not towards my daughter. He's actually not that bad, oh, defending him. Of course, he's a part of my peerage, and I know him a bit, Rias replied, her mother waited patiently for her to continue, Uzumaki-kun helping me in the rating game, he says that he did it for himself, but I'd like to think he also did it to help me, he also calls me Rias, and I even asked him too when he called me by another and he didn't stop, there's a lot of small things too, it's, just complicated with him. Her mother sighed, then, if he's like that, it sounds like he's frustrated, he's getting to know you better, for now, I think it's better if you leave him alone for a little while, especially what happened today, perhaps, let him make the next move to talk to you. She tried to relax at the party, but the constant image Naruto slashing his arm, crimson blood spilling out, and his features unaffected, his arm erupting in golden light was at the forefront of her mind before she watched it heal together. It didn't happen that quick when she had encountered him. Bucko, you okay? Akano asked. Oh, just Uzumaki-kun, have you, talked with him at all? A little, he can be funny when he wants to, Akano smiled, where is he anyway? He's with my brother and the creator of the evil pieces, Rias then told her of what happened earlier, which, she regretted doing, considering her, preferences. Akano gave a shiver, and she wet her lips, Ura, I hope you won't mind if I borrowed him, or maybe, I can come over. You'll have to ask him, I want to give him space, my my, bucko, that face you're making, are you a little jealous? I am appreciative of what he did, but I don't love him, Rias replied. I never said anything about love, Rias gave a deep frown at her best friend, and all she did was giggle. A resounding cling clang of glass lightly striking against another was heard, up ahead, the familiar sight of blonde hair and whiskered cheeks was in display for everyone to see. This should be interesting, Akano said in anticipation. Oh no, Rias said as she moved forward, whatever was going to happen, it wasn't good, she heard Naruto clear his throat and began to speak. I am about to say some truths, and whatever the reaction will tell me everything, hello slavers, I am sure all you are having a wonderful night, because I am sure I am not, I am a knight of Rias Gremory, and you all suck, this peerage crap is just some lame attempt to hide. Rias finally reached him and yanked him off the steps he was on, she felt her face flush with heat, a gnawing feeling in her stomach. Took you long enough, Naruto said, Rias heard the murmurs of disapproval, some of the anger laced in the devil's words, she didn't look at anyone in the eye as she passed through the crowd, suddenly, her brother stood in front, his eyes with a hard look. Sears X frowned and gazed at them both, I think it's best if you return home for now, I'll have your peerage returned after this mess, 
he sped past without another look. Rias and Naruto stepped out of the glyph and into the apartment they shared. Why did you do that? Naruto brow raised, is that a question, or is that a command? Either way it's obvious. He crossed his arms and shifted his weight, she sighed, it was true, she was just flustered, you can say all you want to me, but leave everyone else out of it. Naruto stared blankly at her for a long moment, a stifling silence, he did not say anything, he did not give any indication of a yes, all he did was knock off his footwear and untie his tie and leave for his room. Wait. Rias voiced, what did you find out? Naruto didn't say a word. He wasn't sure if it was a good week, or if it was a bad one, sure, the headphones were back and the sound was on another level than the last one, the only interaction he had with Rias or the others in the past week was him handing over his perfect marks over the last exam to Rias. She had a hopeful look when he had approached, but had only told her that he was owed a pair of headphones, after what he had pulled a couple days prior to that, he had expected a fierce denial, but she had relented, saying how she was impressed and bought him the pair he had desired. There had been little said between him and the others, he spoke to Issei a couple of times, and even to Akano once, other than that, he had no other interaction with Rias Peerage, Rias hadn't initiated any conversations with him at all since they returned from that party, it made sense that she was angry. Here he was, holed up in his room in Rias apartment, he had found a console earlier this week attached with a cheap price sold by an angry mother while a child sobbed quietly behind the door, it was a steal, so he bought it anyway besides someone else would buy it and he had to do something to pass the time. Just as he about to teach that little prick boss who's the actual boss around here, a seal activated on his prosthetic arm, that momentary lapse in concentration spelled a you died. Bullshit. It seemed Rias was always involved in his displeasures lately. He had only told her to use it in emergency situations, so it better be one. Naruto ran to the door to put on his sandals, he closed his eyes, and concentrated on the seal another couple of deep breaths and he performed the technique. What the hell is going on? Naruto said, Naruto looked at his surroundings, they were at the school and the surrounding field had holes and other debris. S senpei, when did you get here? Issei asked, he ignored him in favor of whatever mess he got into, there was a lot of people he didn't know, two chicks in tight suits, one fallen angel with too many pairs of wings and some other unimportant people. He was missing a lot of context and he didn't really care about it either. He wanted little to do with this crap. Naruto picked up the small, piece of paper folded into a ninja star and handed back to Rias. Uzumaki kun. Um, I don't suppose you can fight this person. I hope, Rias said. Everyone looked in a state of distress. Some scratched clothing, some small craters littered the grass, and Rias' barrier had been placed around the school that glowed red. They hadn't fought long, that was clear. Another filthy devil joins the fray. You brought another one to die. How thoughtful of you, Gremory. Naruto gazed back at Rias, an uncertain look in her blues before he stared at the fallen angel floating in the sky, you're the one who did all this. Of course, my name I don't care about your name, just go away. The fallen angel laughed, you'll be the first fatality in this new war of mine. Oh, those types of people, coupled with the attitude, this would be neat, I mean, if you're having trouble with high school students, I don't think you're that impressive, what would everyone think? He noticed the wild look in his eye. The dark emotions hidden within of this fallen angel, the fallen angel growled, you would be wrong you little maggot, I've only been toying with them, there's no use in utilizing my full power. Oh, yeah, the whole I was only pretending to be weak is so much better. Your sass has only gotten better since you've arrived here, Kurama chuckled, he had to thank Rias for that. The fallen angel whose name Naruto didn't catch or even care for growled again, it'll show you. This place will be nothing but a crater, a spear of light formed in his hand. Oh cool, almost like the lightning spear in that game, then it grew and Naruto had to credit the guy a bit, he had a little bite to add to the talk, whoever you are, that won't be happening, you made the biggest mistake, you see, the only one allowed to hurt Rias Gremory would be me. You get to do that kinky stuff too, Issei muttered. Now's not the time you perv. Naruto could make an even stronger technique, oh, but there was no need to be so juvenile anymore, besides, he didn't want to cow the guy. This was the reason why he learned his father's technique in the first place, some subtlety was needed, at least, that's what Kakashi said to him once. Naruto removed the bandages on his hand to reveal the white prosthetic underneath, but more importantly, for a seal to be visible on the palm of his hand. Go flaunt your power somewhere else, he raised his hand toward the fallen angel, and a barrier appeared in front of Naruto. What did his dad call it? It was something complicated, thunder god guiding, something, close enough. It was cool. 
but it was too complicated to remember. The fallen angel threw his spear and encountered Naruto's technique and swallowed it whole, like it never existed in the first place, he knew the answer already, somewhere in the middle of the vast empty desert back at his dimension. The fallen angel had a look of utter shock when his spear was made null, that was his cue, Naruto utilized Kurama's chakra and shot up to where to the fallen angel flew. Naruto hammered down with Kurama's fist, the man choked on his scream as he was sent down into the earth below, Naruto raced down below in the crater that was formed, before the fallen angel could move he grabbed the person with and encased him in Kurama's chakra so he couldn't escape easily. He was still conscious, and Naruto ignored the various insults that he made, had been called worse by people in online games. I don't really want to know what's going on, but is it over? He said, I want to go back home. You were glowing, and flying without wings, she whispered, he peered back to where Rias leaned against the doorway, before he placed his attention onto the screen, he wasn't sure how to continue that conversation, Rias was silent, and it was several minutes as she continued to stare at him, he glanced a few times but her gaze refused to break. He continued to play through the video game to ignore her, Naruto would have liked to say he was good, but video games were a new area for him to explore, to enunciate that fact, he died, his gaming skulls suffered from his onlooker. Why do you keeping staring at me? It's creeping me out, and don't say I was glowing for the seventh time since yesterday. I don't understand. Were you always this powerful? She asked. Rias moved closer as the bed pressed against her added weight, her dainty arms stiff, and hands clutched around the edges of the mattress. I haven't changed much since I've met you, he died again and restrained a sigh. You hadn't trained of any sort? She asked, nothing meaningful, no. He tresses of her hair hid her features, and fingers dug deeper into the cushion, he noticed these details, and then he died with his mind being elsewhere, he frowned and continued. I, resurrecting you should nt have worked, and even if it did, it should have taken more pieces to do so, I don't understand it, Rias said, she looked at the screen, she paid no attention to the chaotic nature of the action, it was slow for him, but he still had to look down at the controller at times. Ajuka told me it was more like the early prototypes where it didn't work or failed, as in, they turned into creatures that were only a figment of their former selves, perhaps it had something to do with his chakra, Sirzex had hinted to that. My brother explained it to me, Rhea said, of course, it was only natural that Sirzex would explain to her what they had found out, the restrictions didn't apply to. Yes, I was there Rhea, he replied, what he did know was that there was little solution to his problem, theories, but nothing solid, some of which may or may not cal him or transform him into some horrific monster. He died again, but he continued to play without complaint. You noticed it, haven't you? Karama said, depends on what we're talking about. The relationship between your chakra and the need for you to be near Rias. Oh, that, I've only figured it out yesterday, Naruto said. It was hard not to, some other kid no one knew had come to him and asked for the captive, and Naruto had given to him without a question. Rias had asked about that action, but it didn't matter to him, Naruto tried to leave after that but when he got back to the apartment he was forced to return to Rias' side, the distance hadn't affected him until after he had fought, he had to wait at the club's room while Rias dealt with the aftermath of it all. I had some thoughts, but I wanted to make sure, Karama replied. Wish you shared it with me, he muttered, Rias said some words he didn't catch, what? I said, I don't know how to fix this, it's fine all right. You tried, it didn't work out, the attempt was what mattered, he found out a couple things, but he still had another shot or two. Ill continue trying then, until you're back to normal, Rias replied, her chin rested on her hands and watched as he played. Until his condition no longer affected him, except, there was no going back to normal was there. Naruto didn't notice he had died until he had respawned. So other than that, anything else? Soft eyes gazed at him, and her voice rose with emotion, as for yesterday, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for protecting us all. There's only so much gratitude that I can show you. Naruto wandered through the world of the game, but it was aimless, it was nothing. You say that, but it means very much to me, he was silent as he tried to focus on playing the game, he wasn't even sure what he was doing anymore, he gripped his controller, almost cracking it and words spilled from his mouth. Rias, you're intense sometimes, how else am I supposed to take those pretty smiles and gratitude? It wasn't long ago when I called you names and you would defend yourself or say how this is how you saw things, it was so much easier before then, Naruto shook his head. You think, my smiles are pretty. I didn't say that. That's what you take from this. Honestly, he didn't really know what specific words he said, and I did not say that. I think I said Uzumaki-kun had a soft heart before. You're so damn weird, 
Perhaps, she gazed at the screen, that smile on her face, are you hungry at all? I guess, then he died again, by then he no longer felt like playing, he hadn't felt like playing since he started, but he didn't know what else to do, a coy smile formed and she swept a stray hair out of her face, I am cooking something, I'll hope you enjoy it. He didn't respond as she rushed through the door and closed it, yeah, a weirdo, like he said. She returned once again, but instead of watching him play, she wandered around the room, there wasn't much, but he had collected a few things. Rias hummed, you once said I don't know much, yeah? What about it? You're right, but I want to know more about you, he almost dropped his controller, you're really stubborn. Her lips parted, like she wanted to say something before she stopped, smiled and resumed to talk, this is the first time I've been in your room. Well, you just barged in here, I don't think so, he was certain about it, and he shot a suspicious glance, it is my home too. She was full of smiles today, she disappeared down the hall again, the door shutting close, true, she had fed him, clothed him, and pretty much done everything of the sort. Whatever, it's not my room anyways, he spoke to himself. It was a long while before she returned, a look of excitement plastered on her face as she strode in with a steaming bowl, the door was wide open, and he knew the scent as it rolled in, he knew it anywhere. Ta-da! I made your favorite uzu, maki, kun, it's, ramen, he finished, he resisted the urge to swipe it from her fingers, his stomach growled and she giggled. Take it, I made it just for you, he grasped it in his hands as she left once again, it smelled amazing, he didn't remember the last time he had the dish, he couldn't find any sort of ramen shop around town, not the instant ramen, but actual cooked ramen, as those were his favorite type, he could almost taste it, and his mouth watered, Rias returned with her own bowl and sat beside him. Her eyes reflected her glee but she neglected to say what made her happy, Naruto gave brief thanks of food before he hesitantly tried the ramen, then he started to devour it, he slurped, and broth spilled, in no time at all, nothing was left in the bowl. I am glad that you enjoyed it, Rias said, her bowl was still full. Naruto cleared his throat, first bentos and now ramen? You trying to get through to me with food? And what if I am? What did that person say? Trying to melt that cold emotionless heart. Ah, you're so lame, but I already know Uzumaki-kun is a good person, I don't have to. Hello? We still don't know if you die, I am a goner too, I am a selfish person. You don't believe that, do you? He didn't have a response, thanks for the ramen. She laughed again, she was giggly and smile why today, happy, it was, annoying coming from her, I think that's the first time you said thank you without it being sarcasm. His eye twitched, get out of my room, she failed to restrain her smile and amused eyes, you don't believe in that, do you? Shut up, wait, wait wait, hold on, Naruto interrupted, seated across from him was Issei they were in the club's room, did I hear that right? Tell me, Kaneko, did I hear that right? Yes, asshole, the degenerate pervert really is more of a depraved and filthy pervert. T that's no such thing for a person as cute as you should say, Issei said. I mean, being harem king, uh, er, what? Naruto had this cute, confused expression on his face. Rias decided to interrupt, high class devils usually have a harem, if they so wish, it's common. Wait so you're saying that's normal? Naruto said, his face widened and he turned to the self-proclaimed pervert, so Issei? You wish to be just a normal devil? I mean a dream's a dream, but what after? If Rias says it's normal, it would be plenty easy I guess. I comma I don't know, but I don't think it will be easy. Rias wondered about his thoughts toward a harem. There was little to suggest he approved and wanted such a thing. Rias hoped he wasn't interested in pursuing a harem. Naruto groaned, which brought her out of her musings. He dug his face into his hands. Rias didn't know why he did this. Knock yourself out. I am not gonna stop you, but I am sure as hell ain't gonna help you. I said that before, haven't I? Thank you, Senpei. I knew a guy like you would understand. No, I don't understand, but you do, you buddy. That's all the approval I need. Akano entered the room with a tray of treats, first, she went to Kaneko before moving along, ah, Uzumaki-kun, I made these especially for you. Cool. Naruto smiled, his eyes shone, and he reached for one. Rias felt a pang of jealousy in her chest, Naruto had never shown that much appreciation toward her, and Rias had made bentos, and even ramen for him, she bit her lip to stop words from spilling out, after all, Naruto didn't belong to her. Akano held the tray away from his grasp, and she waved a finger in a playful manner, no, ah, ah ah, let me. Rias saw bite-sized cookies shaped into a heart in her hand, Akano bent forward, 
a wink. AMD fed him a cookie. Naruto blushed. He blushed. A raw, pure, scolding fire erupted that she could not say anything anymore. Senpei you're a liar. You're backstabber. Issei yelled. Say what now? I didn't do anything. Rias flinched from his outburst, and she could thank Issei for disrupting the words she was about to say. Everyone except Kaneko who had no interest looked at the retreating form Issei as he shot outside the club door. Geez, Naruto muttered, Issei needs to relax and take my word for it. A girlish figure walked through the open door, an expression alike to Naruto's daily expression. A frown, her new rook, Xenovia, not dressed in a suit but instead in the a girl's school uniform, who'd done this to my former partner's childhood friend. Mouthful, Naruto murmured, it was Uzumaki-kun, Akano replied, a smile on her face. Xenovia eyes shot wide as she looked on Naruto's visage, he crammed his mouth with cookies, which destroyed any sort of imposing character that might have sparked from his earlier feats. Naruto tried to speak, but crumbs flew from mouth, it was even strange to Rias to see this, she had, expected more of the personality that he had shown since he arrived. Oh, Xenovia stated Rias spoke, her face was flushed with leftover jealously and anger, there were also the thoughts of Naruto was as a person, what Uzumaki-kun might be trying to say, is that my little pawn is like that, don't take it personally. Naruto gave an approving hum, this is really good, he muttered before he dug into the cookies again. I see, Xenovia muttered, welcome, I was beginning to wonder when you might arrive, I hope your first day here is going well? Rias asked, she had done a little distance experiment with Xenovia in the morning, it hadn't bothered her, so Naruto was the unique case. It is, thank you. Xenovia said as she sat down on an empty loveseat, she wasn't the textbook example of comfort, but being in former exorcist not more than three days ago, she was doing fine, so, you had someone like this under your command this entire time? He's a part of my peerage, yes, Rias replied, she looked to Naruto for a reaction, but he was nonchalant, and it seems he's powerful. You didn't know? I did not, Naruto spoke, seeing as I didn't get the chance to ask, why become a devil? Rias frowned when Akano had taken a seat beside him, their knees touching. I was excommunicated from the church I was following for my whole life, and I found that the biblical god Ao is dead, I have nowhere else to go. Naruto was silent and he blinked, oh, that's rough, he sat back with a contemplative look, and barely responded to any of Akino's advances, it brought relief to Rias. You're, even more powerful than what you showed, aren't you? Xenovia asked, a spark of curiosity behind her eyes. I guess, he didn't pay much attention, I didn't want to be a devil, I very much wanted to stay human. There was no ill intent behind his words, stated in a matter-of-fact way, he drank a cup of tea he had been given. Interesting, it devolved in the small conversation from there, until that is, Naruto shot up, with the largest grin since, ever, he said nothing as he shot up from the sofa and out the door. Where is he going? Akano asked, I don't know, Rias said, she followed him, but with a slow pace that belonged to a respectable devil like herself, what peerage that had gathered in the room stepped behind her, he had already turned around a corner by the time she got out of the building. Rias became aware as to why it might be, as she felt some type of energy nearby that he sped toward, it was familiar, because it felt was like Naruto's own, Rias hastened her step, because it must be important. She turned more corners until she caught up to see a large sphere structure that had materialized in the courtyard of the school, a spectacle to behold, especially to those not of supernatural origin, a small group of students and teachers looked on in bewilderment. This was something they had to fix, a raven-haired man the source of the power in portal stood impassively in front, his gaze locked onto Naruto, the stranger was clad in a worn poncho with a layer of snow littered on his features and clothing. Naruto knew this person, he put his arms in the air and exclaimed, Yo, Sasuke, what the are you doing here? Rias approached the duo, Sasuke, gave her a passing glance before he focused on the blonde, with the brief time, she saw his eyes, one of them was rippled in grey. Kakashi asked me to retrieve whatever situation you got yourself in. Did he now? And you were so worried about ol' me weren't you? TCH, I can leave you right where you are, let's go, I have things to do, Sasuke said. Ah, you see, I am in a, troublesome situation here, Naruto scratched the back of his blonde locks. Sasuke sighed, then let me simplify it for you, you stay and I leave, are we both go now, I am not going to wait. Hum, when you put it that way, that's an easy one, wait, what was Naruto planning to do? He took off his jacket, and threw it in the portal, and a look of satisfaction appeared. I know morons when I see them, despite the insult, Naruto sported a large grin, and stepped forward, 
his back to the portal and faced them all, like, it was them, against everyone else, Rias took a step when she heard the next words. Follow my lead, would you? Naruto froze her to the spot with a simple look, and a knowing smile. A golden flash, and before she realized, a large golden hand encased her in a grip, and pulled her closer, you Uzumaki-kun, what are you doing? Making my own decision, we're checking out my home for once. His home. Except for Zenovia, everyone a part of her peerage sped forward to intervene, and she realized Sona Citri's her rival own peerage had also appeared, however, she already knew the outcome, no, stop. Rias commanded, but was ignored, the knights were the first to reach her, Kiba, with his sacred gear activated, a sword appeared in his grasp. Another sigh escaped from Sasuke, you'll deal with the consequences afterward. Whatever. Naruto replied, Kiba, as well as Sona's own knight, froze in the air, a look of surprise marred their faces, the knights were shot backward by an invisible force, that crashed against the others in pursuit. What was that? None of them were hurt, thankfully. Hey. Why the worry? Rias will be with me after all, Naruto stated, she was pulled closer and they both dove into the portal, Rias closed her eyes in nervousness. The air steeped into her lungs, stinging and cold, her eyes opened, and the intensity of the brightness blinded her, the warm grip around her frame released, she didn't expect it, so she stumbled into the snow, the ice burned her bare skin, and she shot away from the contact of the snow, but it was deep, and her feet still entrenched in the snow. Ah, that sweet air of wherever we are, hey Sasuke where are you going? Haven't seen each other in more than a year and you're off just like that? Rias heard Naruto's loud voice that echoed around her, she squinted her eyes, strained to see the form of him until her eyes adjusted, she shivered from the cold, it didn't seem to bother either of them. Away. I am sure you can find yourself back to the village, as for me, I am continuing where I left off. All right, see ya I guess, Naruto said, he crossed his arms and looked at this person he knew, the only response Sasuke gave was a little gesture with his hand without looking back, peefed, trying to be cool all the time. Sasuke disappeared from the heavy thicket of the snow, the trail of his prince was left behind. Rias found Naruto's jacket that he threw and wrapped it around her to stave off the bite of the blizzard, the jacket smelled like him, it was large for her, and oddly comforting despite that she bad been practically kidnapped, still, Naruto wouldn't hurt her, she knew that much. Naruto returned to her, but before a word could be said between them, someone fell to the ground beside her and gasped at the sudden cold. Who would even follow us? Issei. Naruto muttered. Senpei. What are you doing? Issei kneeled on the snow and held himself for warmth. Naruto picked him up by the collars of his jacket, what am I doing? What are you doing? Go back. Not before you tell me, Issei replied. Rias was touched by his concern, but, she wasn't sure what he was trying to accomplish. You're acting like I am the bad guy. Rias is under my care now, besides, she can teleport back there, remember? If she teleported back, then, something that made her sick to her stomach would happen to Naruto. Rias decided to speak, besides, Issei seemed especially attentive to what she had say at all times, this wasn't an exception. Uzumaki-kun is right, go back, it'll be fine, tell the others the same. I if you're sure Bucko, absolutely certain, she replied, Naruto glanced at her before he focused on Issei. Wherever they were, it seemed to make Naruto happy, his grin hadn't even been replaced at all, it suited him, better than any other expression, if this would fix and grow their relationship, then so be it. There see, Naruto said, and he pushed Issei back into the portal before he could say another word, he stared at the portal, until it disappeared a few moments later. I is this your home? Rias stuttered from the cold, and she pulled Naruto's coat closer, her legs were still bare, a skirt was not the best at shielding from the gust of wind and the air gnawing at her legs. Not exactly, but I get what you're asking, we're in another dimension, like yours. Another dimension? While Rias had thought Naruto was a unique character with a special power, him being from another dimension that wasn't the underworld hadn't occurred to her. He approached, a warm hand placed on her shoulder, you'll see in just a moment, he disappeared. She blinked, and looked everywhere and found nothing, Uzumaki-kun. Another shiver, he had tried this before, and it was still the same outcome, why was that? He appeared again and stumbled onto her, she caught him before he could tumble into the snow, she held him in her arms, most of his weight pressed against her, Rias could feel his chest rise and fall, his hot breathing that blew down her neck, she shivered again, and this time it wasn't from the icy wind, Naruto was like a furnace, and Rias wanted more because it was very cold. How terrible it must feel to be this way, to have his body work against him, 
Rias had made a promise, one she would fulfill, to fix this affliction of his. She panicked when he finally stood up on his own, but a grin was still affixed on his lips. Crap. I can't believe I forgot about this, his eye twitched, an annoyed look before it disappeared again, anyway, she wasn't sure what that was about. Um, what will we do now? Rias asked, her legs were shaking now, and she couldn't stop it, her body trying hard to find any sort of warmth, he was silent, his eyes closed, Uzumaki-kun? His eyes opened that revealed an alien orange that replaced his familiar blues, we take the flying route of course. Rias gave a yelp as Naruto scooped her up bridal style and charged into the white sky through falling snow, his hands were warm, so warm, as they flew higher, the winds became harsher and the temperature dropped further, she could no longer feel her legs, and it was had to breath with the wind. H hey! Stop moving, I am going to drop you! Naruto yelled through the howling winds that rushed past them. N no you want, and it's cold, Rias circled her arms around his neck, and her legs to touch as much as him as possible. Oh, was all he had to say, he adjusted himself, his hand outstretched, a yellow sphere formed in his hand, before it glowed red and grew hot, this help. She stared at the sphere, he held lava in his hand, the heat it let off made her sigh in relief, Rias peeked at him, his orange eyes focused in front. Yes, thank you, Naruto could be, sweet, when he wanted to be, she didn't say nothing more, and he didn't say a word either. She wanted more of this, because she was appreciative of what he had done, it was times like this, Rias wasn't certain how to act around him, he had made his frustrations clear, it would be easy to act sultry, but it didn't seem as simple to act that way with him, it might have an opposite effect. He was unpredictable, in a way, it was, complicated. It was a long flight, she could have flown herself, but she'd rather not have done that, besides, Naruto seemed to have forgotten that fact too, they were no longer in the freezing capped mountains, but it was still cold in the sky. There it is, Naruto said, that cute grin still affixed on his features. Rias looked down to see the site of a large village settled in the sea of forest green, the most noticeable landmark. Busts of six people were carved from the side of the mountain that overlooked the village, a large wall extended around the entirety of the village. I am guessing this is your home. Sure is. They said nothing more until they descended, and stopped in front of a large gate that led into the village, Naruto let her down, and her bones cracked from the lack of movement as she stretched. Naruto walked a few paces in front before she caught up, it's nice to see it after months away. She peeked at him, his eyes were soft and a gentle smile, Rias noticed how he stood, his shoulders slack and his features free from creases of a frown, if this wasn't the textbook example of comfort, then. He strode forward, a bounce to his step and Rias followed close behind him, whatever might happen, it would be important, after all, Rias was certain no one else was aware of this other dimension, otherwise she would have heard of this place. Where are we? She asked, they approached a gate, and she noticed two men inside a kiosk inside. The village hidden in the leaves, the two men inside the kiosk called out to them as they approached. Oh. Looks like the hero finally returned from his mission, one of them said. Hero? Mission? Mission? Naruto muttered, Yeah, Hokage sama said you were off on a mission, also said when you returned you were to report in immediately with no detours. Right, who's that? The other man asked, his naval bridge covered with a layer of bandages. Don't worry about it, Naruto said, Ah, I see, mission related, what with the get up? Hey. The other man beside him interrupted, Let them go, they need to see Hokage sama. Right, sorry. Naruto proceeded inside the village, a contemplative look, what were all these titles? Whoever this Hokage was, he was a leader. Right. Let's go see Kakashi, Kakashi? Is he not the Hokage they spoke about? Same person, and Naruto was familiar with him, who was her knight? Why did the man call him a hero? What was this whole other life that she had wandered into? Why were there people casually jumping from rooftop to rooftop? She was picked up once more as Naruto flew in the air toward the mountain. Several children cried out from below, their inaudible shouts and a few calls of Naruto's own name. There was a building at the base of the mountain, a banner decorated in front and a wall encased around the property, this seemed to be their destination as they slowed their descent, but instead of stopping on the ground like they did before, they went through an open window on the top floor. Take the door next time, okay? An annoyed voice said, they landed inside, and she made sure she was proper, it was hard to accomplish with the method of transportation. No can do, besides, you and Pervy Sage did this all the time, Naruto replied. She was greeted by a man with his face covered by a mask, 
He stood behind a large desk with stacks of papers, a large white hat placed on one of them. Hello there, it seemed Naruto had been busy, wherever he was. Oh, it's a complicated story, Naruto stated, this is Rias, Rias, this is Kakashi, the Hokage of the village, he's the leader. Hello, Hokage-sama, Rias gave a bow, words spilled that she had said many times before were repeated, I am Rias Gremory, a pure blood devil, an heiress to the Gremory clan, one of the remaining 72 pillars. Good afternoon, Gremory-sama, you may call me by your preference, please, take a seat, I want to extend a welcome to you as a guest to my village, Naruto, take a seat, because it does seem complicated. Rias sat in one of the two chairs, the one beside being filled by her personal savior, if not a reluctant one, Naruto had a contemplative expression. Nice to see you again, Naruto smiled, he was filled with smiles today. It's nice to have one of my ninja return from, there was a glance sent to her, whatever situation he seemed to have gotten himself into. Ninja? Before she could think about it, the Hokage had addressed her, I hope you don't mind waiting for Naruto to explain. It's fine, I do not mind, okay, Naruto. Start at the beginning, because you weren't assigned on a mission when you disappeared. I am been waiting for this, Kurama muttered, Naruto ignored the fox and continued with his explanation, he was not interrupted and he told everything, the moment he met Rias, evil pieces, and onwards, everything that he could remember, it took a while, before he finally stopped. How exactly did you get injured? Kakashi stated, his face emotionless, Naruto couldn't tell what he might be thinking. That, uh, he frowned, this was too embarrassing, too complicated, and he had to tell Rias of all people, Kakashi crossed his arms, and waited, I was experimenting with my dad's technique, when, I tried, to do something that didn't include the seal, which made me end up at where Rias' dimension was. They stared at him, what? It's hard to explain okay. I almost died, because all the chakra I had was spent, even Kurama's, since I was practicing with Kanai, I, well, I sorta, accidentally stabbed myself when I landed. There was a crater, Rias said, there was no sense of amusement in her eyes, nor any mocking that he could see. I fell very fast, and hard, the thought of it made him sick again, one moment, he realized he was falling, the next, in a crater. I suppose that explains everything, but, oh, here it comes, Kurama stated, and inside, he chuckled. What? He asked, but there was no response, I am not sure where to begin, Kakashi stated, a sigh of frustration escaped from him. A sort of, life-ending sense of dread filled his stomach, a premonition, but was it one if it were to start the next moment? There was something that he skipped over, that he hadn't given a moment's thought about and it was about to cal him. The Hokage, former teacher, pervert, looked at him, Kakashi had given him many looks throughout the years he had known him, whether with pride, sadness, happiness, but, there was nothing as clear, as palpable as the look of disappointment, never had he looked so let down. Kakashi spoke in a hard voice, regardless of your feelings toward your situation, you did not handle this in a way befitting of a de facto representative of the leaf, as well as the alliance, this is not how you treat other foreign powers. It was silent then, almost, as Naruto heard was the loud, incessant, cackling that belonged to Kurama. Why you knew about this? Naruto accused, knew? Of course, the first moment we figured out we were in another place. Why didn't you tell me about this? It wouldn't be as funny, Kurama said. As funny. This was something that Naruto hadn't even given the briefest of thoughts, shame poured into his being, intense, consuming, he wanted to crawl into a corner and stay there, it wasn't done. Since this is a diplomatic issue that you raised this isn't entire his fault. Rias interrupted, Naruto was surprised at her outburst, and he had no clue what she was trying to do, he's done some good too, he helped me with a personal matter, as well as stopped a potential war from occurring. He was too shocked to say anything, this girl, who he had treated so poorly, had defended him, Rias she shot him a pleading look. Despite him being from here, he's a part of my peerage too, so he's aligned with me, it's also my fault, as I am the one who ignored his refusal, if I had listened, none of this would have happened. Rias looked to the ground, and took a breath, she clutched at the hems of her skirt, his school jacket still wrapped around her. A brief silence, before it broke, Kakashi sighed. I guess, Naruto, is still Naruto, you didn't mention this? Kakashi asked. I didn't know, Naruto replied, he wasn't certain about the devil's structure of power, nor about the war he averted. I suppose it does help, he pivoted his chair to gaze out the window, before he returned to speak, this is a matter that I can only speak for myself, ill convene a five-cage summit. Really? Naruto asked, it was that big? Yes, 
For now, considering your situation, I am appointing you a temporary liaison, until the alliance selects an official candidate, so, take this as a mission to repair any broken bridges, we do not want to make any enemies here. You're giving me a mission. Did you expect a punishment? That will come after, now, the two of you should get some rest, Gremory Sama. I hope you won't mind staying here several days before you return. Not at all, Rias replied, he couldn't spare a glance at her, he still felt the shame. I can arrange a hotel for your stay if you wish, no, that's fine, I can stay with Naruto, we've shared an apartment together, there's also the chance of his affliction that might bother him, Rias replied. Kakashi nodded, good, you may leave, I'll send someone for you tomorrow. Naruto didn't speak as they walked through the village, gone was the grin, replaced by frown, not the angry one she was accustomed to seeing, but a sad one, his energy had waned, the bounce no longer present. She would wait, it seemed to work well last time, she was the one who had initiated it, but he had spoken like nothing had happened between them, so, perhaps she should do the same. Rias followed him, and she gazed at the unique streets, there were many little things to look at, sculptures, signs, artwork and other things as well, it was like she stepped back in time in Japan, there were no towering skyscrapers, no loud cars passing by in the streets, yet, there was the odd mixture of technology sprinkled throughout. The people greeted each other with a jovialness she wasn't accustomed to, and people flocked to Naruto as they saw him, they'd asked for an autograph, or for a quick picture. Naruto, despite the earlier event, would smile and agree, except, that smile didn't fully reach his eyes, however, the longer they walked, the more relaxed he became, there was something else she thought of, she hoped this hadn't changed anything between them. It didn't take long as they reached an apartment, it looked to be expensive judging on the exterior of the building, they entered inside to a stairwell, and walked to the highest point of the complex before he dug out a key inside his pocket. He left the door open as he walked in and she closed it behind, he took off his sandals and she did the same to her shoes. Here we are, he said, he stood by a large window and looked outside into the village, there was the sight of the busts of the Hokage in view, Rias recognized the sixth that belonged to Kakashi, from your place to mine. That's true, now I am the guest, she giggled, she laid his jacket over a sofa. He didn't react, she saw him lean against the window frame and continued to stare out, she wanted to talk, since they were alone again, a frequent occurrence, but she wanted to be alone with him more often, where should she start? She wandered around the living room, picture frames were on a nearby desk, a thin layer of dust on them, and she saw a picture of him when he was younger with three other people, some she had met today, Kakashi, Sasuke, Naruto, and a girl, both boys glared at one another, while the other two were smiling. You're popular, Rias said, she figured small would be a nice start. Yeah, he replied, he didn't want to explain on why that was, she asked another question. So, you're a ninja? He smiled then, I sure am, that's, so cool. Huh. That's explain why you're so cool, cool? I've been he sighed, he was till bothered by what happened earlier. It's fine, we all make mistakes, Rhea said, she thought of his resurrection, and his healing, no matter how well we think of ourselves. Gremory no, she said, and he gazed at her, Rias approached him to tap his chest with a finger several times, just because of what happened, doesn't mean you must stop being mean, or call me by my name, I, want the real Uzumaki-kun, we've known each other for a while now, haven't we? He laughed, and then shook his head that's, a relief. Why is that? I don't know, he didn't know. She looked out the window to see what he might be staring at, it was everything, what do you think of me Uzumaki-kun? She had feared this question before, because there was something about his words when he said them, whatever they might be. He looked at her with those blues, gone was the disdain, honestly, I don't know what to think of you anymore. This was progress, it made her happy, in the future, I hope, that you call me a friend, maybe even more. If I were to apologize to you now, it would be a lie. It was something that she had figured out, Naruto's meant every word that he said, he didn't lie. Rias felt a smile pull at her lips and looked out to the village, she had never said anything about apologizing. I am looking forward to the day, noise, he was too deep in the comfort of sleep to know what it was, he turned his eyes toward the dark, and dug deeper in the cushions. The crying of playing children outside, they vied for the sight of the hero, he ignored the sound, and returned to the lulls of the sleep, the knocks tore him away from the comfort, it wasn't the kids like he thought. He yawned and sat up from the couch, bones cracking when he stood and stretched, he picked up the pillow that had fallen and placed it back, he blinked a few times before he realized where he was, this was his living room, that was his TV, the couch that he slept on, the little dents on his floor, this was a place he knew, he was back. 
itd been months more knocks more disturbance of thoughts he shot up from his couch and went to his back door he found an anbu waiting on him a mask of a cat hokage sama wishes to see you and our honored guest at two thanks he replied the person didn't leave also it's a pleasure to have you with us again ah uh, thanks it's good to be back the man gave a nod and jumped away another yawn a glance at the clock told it was nearly eight a whole six hours before he was to meet kakashi that left plenty of time to see his village and delve into its delights he wandered into the kitchen and looked inside his fridge whatever what was in the fridge it leaked into his nostrils and almost made last night's meal escape he gagged and slammed it close there had been old milk eggs and whatever leftovers he had stored inside since he his disappearance it was putrid in his kitchen cartons of food were laid about on the table and counters they had ordered delivery last night luckily none of them had opened the fridge leaving the kitchen he knocked on his door rius get up he returned and searched to clean months old trash any containers wrappers or the like that he found to throw away or to clean later it looked like he would have to eat out for breakfast he wasn't alone and hadn't been for months so he had to buy the food again there was a small breakfast place nearby ichiraku's was closed in the morning a sad fact in life but it would be open later in the day he knocked on his door again and went back into the kitchen to brew himself a cup of coffee as he waited he remembered he had to see his landlord to solve the issue of missing several payments a quick stroll down a flight of stairs and he knocked on the landlord's door it opened and revealed a balding old man a flash of recognition and the man gave a bright smile ah the hero it's nice to see you again a firm eager handshake yeah naruto replied i can say the same anyway i haven't paid the last oh that no it's fine the hokage himself came over and paid since you've been gone oh yes yes now i was about to make breakfast would you like some it's okay i have someone over right now and i haven't seen the village in the long time so we were going to eat out the man rubbed chin and gave a smile a smile that naruto was immensely familiar to seeing ah a young famous good-looking man like yourself it should happen a lot and of course you would want to see the village after your time away sure he replied and yeah i would i want keep you he chuckled naruto said his goodbyes and muttered a few things about old guys inside his apartment he poured his cup of coffee you seriously not up rius he yelled he knocked again before he wrapped around the knob and pushed it open it was something he should have regretted to see red there was her hair sprayed out on his bed the sight of bare soft flesh then there was a boob just the one and it was big gaw he slammed the door closed unbearable heat ran up his neck why are the hell are you naked wow then again he hated this girl so you he couldn't shake the sight from his mind he heard a few murmurs that he couldn't hear what it's the only way i can sleep she said nonchalant about the entire thing it's very comfortable have you tried it no i haven't god who does that i do every night whatever get up i am starving we're going out oh okay several moments passed before she opened the door she was dressed in the school uniform because she had no other clothes why were the skirts so short why was he complaining he didn't look at her instead going into his room don't open the fridge he opened the drawers to pick out a few choice clothing he'll buy you some clothes then well eat something you do that you did the same for me of course should warn you though i am not as rich as you if that mansion was of any indication no that's fine i am just wondering how the fashion is here he stared at her and she didn't move from the door you can get out now oh the door closed and he mumbled about rius as he changed it was odd that she wasn't mad it usually ended terribly for him though the last time she was clad in a towel so it seemed she had no problem being naked weird it was likely that he wouldn't be fighting at all today casual wear would do instead of a jacket or a sweater dark loose fit pants and a t-shirt he found his wallet and he also found his headband that had been placed on the drawer he wrapped it around his head just to relish how it fit around him it belonged there it took it off technically he was off duty though he wouldn't forget it when he left to the other worlds again rius was seated on the couch her eyes glued to the screen this was probably how he looked like when he first arrived in a new place she glanced at him her eyes curious and warm a difference she had no look of disdain how does this look rius asked she wore a revealing sweater she knew what boys liked naruto looked up from his phone it didn't work here looks okay i guess he said just that it was all he said 
She liked this outfit. Maybe he did as well. There was nothing defining that told it, no lingering, doe-eyed, shy glance or even shameless staring. He was stubborn, another fact. She needed one more. A semi-formal outfit would complete it. Something that spoke she enjoyed her brief time here, but enough to present to the Hokage. Rias went back into the changing room and back into her school uniform. She returned to him, I need one more. Another one. I hope this one won't take as long, he grinned. It made her heart skip a couple of beats. He was comfortable, he was happy. Carry this for me, would you? She handed him the clothes. He frowned, fine, she smiled. This is fun, I am already enjoying today. I am glad to know that Rias enjoys burdening me with a heavy load. She laughed, and rolled her eyes, they walked through sections of clothing, which do you think would look best? No idea, I haven't seen you wear any, he muttered, Naruto wasn't paying much attention, his gaze centered on anything that caught his eye. Naruto must have a preference to how she dressed, despite every word toward her appearance being okay he must have something he liked very much, he was still a young man, after all, and they enjoyed the looks of young women. Rias' eyes caught a mannequin wearing a pink sundress, that would be perfect, why, classy, and formal, maybe, it was hot in this dimension, rather than back in the human world, she wondered if they were in a different season, it would be fascinating. She took a few moments to check out a few designs, hmm, are these all the stores here? I am pretty sure this store is one of the best that I know about, otherwise, no idea. I am a bit disappointed, he shrugged, I am sure one of the other cities in the country have better shops, this is a shinobi village after all. Oh, that would make sense, do you have cars? Yeah, but we don't really have any roads, and they stay in the civilian cities. Strange, she replied, Rias had grabbed several dresses that she would try, perhaps he might prefer one of them. Okay, I'll try them on, can you decide which is best? They walked back to the changing rooms. Any of them would be fine, I need to see if they fit first. Ah, uh, just hurry up, I'll be quick. Sadly, Naruto didn't much attention when she tried them all on, he hadn't spared more than a glance or two before he said the usual response, she did settle on a couple that she liked. Rias led the way through to the cashiers, Naruto bought the clothing without any hassle, what a role reversal, she had done the same thing when they first met, except now, the air between them wasn't tense. They walked out the store, the people around them called out to him, and he responded with waves, they would ask where he had been, and he would respond on a mission. Another thing she had noticed, was that each and every one of these people had the same power as Naruto, or, at least with the same feeling. Rias found a particular store for women, that would be perfect, they wandered inside, it was relatively full, patrons wandering around the store with their spouses and such. Is that him? She heard a whisper, oh my god, it is, he's with someone. She glanced at this commotion, a couple of retreating women was the source, she paid no mind to them, Naruto didn't care to glance at them. Rias had seen people asking Naruto for autographs yesterday, she was curious about why they did. What are we doing here? He asked with a slow trepidation. She gave a coy smile, and tried to act innocent, well, you did say I can buy clothes, I need underwear too. His arms were crossed, he looked at a stack of neatly hung bras, but it was less than a breath before his eyes refocused on her alone, he looked rigid, and a frown on his lips, a familiar sight, but this time, for a different reason. It was exhilarating. I guess, he didn't look entirely convinced. What's the matter? You did see me naked already, no I didn't. I saw a boob and that was he shut his mouth, red swarmed his cheeks, this was what she was looking for, she laughed, the sweet feeling of success filled her. He didn't say much as she searched the store of underwear, Rias looked for her size, Naruto trudged behind, still uncertain where to look, he talked again. That wouldn't have happened if you woke up when I told you so, and if you didn't sleep like that. Naked you mean? Yes, naked, words sparked, but she was wary on saying it, after all, their relationship was still rocky, a few wrong words beyond innocent and it would break. I am very comfortable with my body, that sounds very, what's the word? I I mean, I want everyone to see me, he shook his head several times, sighed, and said, weirdo, aren't you hungry? I am starving. A little, she replied, not concerned about the change in subject. Then you should hurry up. She was about to reply that it took time, but remembered he was anxious to see his friends, it would be best if did this as quick as possible, he wouldn't be best if she took up all his time. Rias grabbed a couple of items her size and handed it to him, why you want me to carry them? It would help, she smiled, these are big. Shut up, he looked away, why are you taking a couple of the same? Well, 
I have to see if they are comfortable, and every bra has. Geez, why did I even ask? He shook his head, I didn't think it would be this complicated. She grabbed several, a few lacy, and a couple that matched her skin tone, she went into the changing room to try them on. A thought crossed her mind, she could ask him to join her, but of course, that might break the glass of their already precarious relationship. She heard women fawning over someone, giggles and excited talking, she dressed and returned to him, he was surrounded by several girls, pawing at him. It really is you. Wow, you can call me however you want. See can I get an autograph please? Naruto like had done it a thousand times gave an easy smile, and was just as energetic as the girls that fawned over him. Nice to meet you. You're from Cloud. How is B doing nowadays? I haven't seen him a long time. Before she knew it, Rias had stepped to him and grabbed a hold of his arm, they paused, and Naruto looked at who grabbed him, I am finished. He grinned, great, I've been itching for some good food, I'll see all of you later, he finished signing a hat and returned to a girl. Rias suppressed a smile, she wondered what their reactions might be, but she wasn't about to look back. So those statues on the monument, they're the Hokage? Rias asked, six in all. He glanced at the statues, his blue eyes glistened with admiration, yep, except the last two, the other ones aren't with us anymore. A waiter came up to them, his eyes shifting, and the tray of glasses he held in his hand trembled, h here's your juice. Thanks. A couple fast nods, thank you, is there anything else you both need? Nah, he replied, the man liked to nod, and he went off to serve the other customers. A question formed on her lips, one that needed to be answered. You see that fourth one? He said, Rias looked up the statues again, a man, with locks that reached to his cheeks, that's my dad. His father was no longer here, she could picture his father as she stared at the bust, blonde with blue eyes, where did Naruto get the whiskers? You're proud of them all. Of course, he smiled, she looked around the patio that belonged to the restaurant, a gentle breeze, and a pleasant sun, it was not that, people constantly glanced their direction, a whisper, and a murmur the next. Don't pay them any mind he said, she swallowed hard, this was a topic she wanted to talk about, you're famous, aren't you? Yeah, he waved it off, what did you do? They had called him hero on numerous occasions. He smirked, I am a pretty great ninja, she waited for him to continue, but he said nothing else, Naruto Uzumaki is a ninja. A famous one, it caused such a tumultuous, uneasy feeling to settle in her gut, yet, awe had also taken root. What did he do to gain the love the people? There was another question that she wanted answered, that doesn't bother you? He blinked, why should it? What do you mean by that? It would make sense for a young man like him to enjoy the frequent company of beautiful women, she thought he would have understood her position, what? But how? He shrugged, shrugged, just like that, this common ground that she might have found started to crumble, doesn't bother me. The waiter arrived and placed their breakfast on the table, he asked if they were in need anything, of which they wanted nothing she had to wait until he left before she could resume their conversation. So, it doesn't bother you that they refer you as epithets, that, no matter what you do, and what you say, they'll always see you as an image that's not really you? She didn't realize that she had leaned closer, her hands clutched tightly at her thighs, Naruto hadn't been paying attention, his focus on the omelette, he leaned back, chewed his food and looked at the streets. Um, epithet, hero, our crimson-haired ruined princess, this conversation was going too slow for her tastes, it was the food that was slowing them down. I get it, like demon, and savior, he muttered, Naruto looked into her eyes then, and it was different, almost soul gazing, so that's yours. Yes, or, other than that, just my last name, she spat. Rias, I have a small commotion as a shadow cast over them, the sun blinded her sight, thought I smelled someone familiar. A dark skin man appeared, a single triangular mark on each cheek, he rode a large dog, I'd know that terrible stench anywhere. Kiba. I thought something smelled like dog, that's a compliment if I ever heard one, Kiba grinned, a bark from the large white dog. I wouldn't forget about you Akamaru, Naruto laughed, he stood up from his seat, and petted the dog on underneath its chin. Rias frowned from another interruption of their conversation, it might continue, with some hope. Been a while, so where have you been, oh great savior? Kiba laughed glad that the others got you back. It's good to be back, but what do you mean by others? The Hokage sent a team after Sasuke, what? I didn't notice anyone else other than him, who was part of the team. So, you're saying something slipped past the hero? Shut up about the hero stuff. Kiba chuckled, Sakura, Hanada, and Shino were sent after him. 
Rhea sat there as they continued to speak to each other. Naruto neglected to introduce her to his friend. He smiled, laughed, and joked. Her only company was the dog named Akamaru. He stared at her, sniffed the air, barked and did other dog things. She was finally noticed by Kiba. Oh, and who's this lovely lady? Sorry I didn't introduce myself earlier, a charming smile. Oh, right, it's fine, you haven't seen your friends in a long while, Rhea said. Naruto introduced them both, she's from another dimension, and uh, she's the sister to one of their leaders. Oh, that explains the odd smell, Kiba said, trust me, that's not the weirdest thing about her, Naruto muttered. Kiba had adopted a more apprehensive look, and glanced at them both. Do do I smell weird? Rias asked. Sorry, Kiba said, you smell good, there's just something weird attached to it, I would guess a weird energy, it happens. Oh, he could smell that. Kiba turned his attention back to Naruto, so, your job is to be like Shikamaru then? Naruto blinked, yeah, I guess so, where is he by the way? In the stone, the Chunin exams just ended, Kiba seemed more reserved, more rigid prior to their introduction, anyway, I got a mission to start. You're leaving too? There's gotta be some of my friends here. The life of ninja eh? I am sure Lee is around somewhere, see you, and uh, you too Gremory, Kiba said, Rhea said her goodbye along with Naruto, Kaman Akamaru, they jumped high onto the rooftops and disappeared. Naruto cursed. What's the matter? She asked, even Kiba noticed, and I thought he was a bigger moron than me. Rias decided to stay silent on the matter. This was something that still hung on his mind. How couldn't it? It happened yesterday, as you were saying earlier before we got interrupted. Huh. I forgot, Rias frowned. Epithets, we were talking about epithets, a name to be married into, it doesn't matter who even carries it, because that's all you are. Naruto looked at her. His eyes were different, she wasn't sure if it was better or worse, but it was better than the hate. I've been called a lot of things in my life, yeah, the names used to bother me, but it doesn't anymore, honestly, it's better to be referred with a name. Other than what? Oh, nothing, Naruto shrugged, he smiled and resumed looking at the Hokage monument, he had nothing to say about it. What a strange place to end it, besides, people know a little and the more they find out about me, the less they'll call me hero. You don't know devils then, he grinned. Was this who he was? Someone who gave bright, beautiful smiles, I do know people, and I don't see any difference between devils and fallen and people. Don't let the devils catch you saying that, crap, you're right, he sighed. You're not looking forward to this, aren't you? Let's just say, being Hokage is still out of reach for me, a pause, for now, at least. Rias leaned forward, it'll help you, you know that right? Thanks, he looked around, and put a hand in the air, hey, we're finished here. Rias looked down at her plate, when did she finish eating? I hope your day in the village went well? Kakashi noticed she wore a white summer dress, it was a different outfit from yesterday, Naruto had the decency to fetch her new clothes, that was good of him to do that. Rias curtsied, wonderful, it's a beautiful place, he welcomed them both to take a seat, while they did that, Kakashi opened a drawer to pull out a folder, and placed it in front of his ninja. This is for your assignment, in the meantime, I would like to discuss with our guest in private. Naruto nodded, picked up a folder, sure, it'll be around, ask Rias to get me back if you need me, he disappeared. The strange sight of Naruto using Minato's own technique, like father like son, or so they say. This will be long a discussion, Kakashi said, he noticed a small measure of nervousness within the girl, an important one. What are we going to discuss? Several things, I think it's best to head off with a heavier topic first, then, if you wish, share some information about our respective dimensions, he took a drink of water, this is too smooth the process of future diplomacy. That would make sense, what would you like to talk about first? Naruto, she pursed her lips, Kakashi continued, there's a few things I want to say, during today, I am sure you have noticed that Naruto is held in high opinion in the public eye. I've noticed that, yes, more than a year ago, Naruto was one of the main contributors to a war effort, and even before that, he was considered a hero by the village for saving it. That, a pause, her eyes widened, was not something I was aware of. He is also a ninja belonging to this village, and you have made him by every view of mine a slave. Her hand tightened on the arm rest, a deep set frown, it seemed she understood the severity of the situation. This is a first contact between powers, and it'll take Naruto's word for it, that this was nothing more than a misunderstanding, you had good intentions, but consider this a warning to your devil faction, that we will not tolerate any more of these actions on our soil. 
I understand, she said quickly, I, I'll make sure it gets passed on. Good, that is all I wish to say about that, now, I am sure both of us could relax now, the rest of the conversation won't be as interesting. Kakashi tried to give a reassuring smile, albeit tempered by the mask. She nodded several times, I wouldn't have done it if I knew. Let's focus on things we can hope to avoid, he hoped another war wasn't on the horizon, we can start at the basics. They started to share information, it wasn't in depth, but the minimum, the devils, ninja, countries, factions, anything that may be important, like culture and tradition. I think that's enough, Kakashi said, another important matter, is to set up a meeting between both our respective domains. I can carry that message, Rias replied, can you call Naruto to return? She nodded and stood up from her seat, he chuckled upon seeing the ninja star with the seal, Rias threw it on the ground, and Naruto appeared several moments later, unless he was busy, Minato had a faster response. Yo, Naruto gave a wave, he picked up the star and returned it to Rias. I just wanted to have another quick discussion with you, Naruto, show her around in the building. A clone popped beside and Rias was let out, Naruto had a small frown, what's up? Just a talk, he replied, a small, nostalgic memory passed, how about we talk on the monument above? If I remember, my teacher had a seal somewhere up there. Oh, yeah, Naruto came up to him, and placed a hand on his shoulder, there was an immediate change in scenery, from the confines of his office, to the flourishing village, below him, the bust of the fourth Hokage, so, this is what you have been practicing before your disappearance. Yep, I never thought you would want to live up your father's legacy, the yellow flash, it brought a smile to his face, then again, Naruto had already done quite a few things in his life, all he needed to do was become Hokage. No, I am not worried about that, I don't think I am as fast as him, I learned it for a different reason. Oh, and what is that? Naruto looked out into the village, you saw it in the war, I wanted to protect my home the best I can. Kakashi recalled the times when his master saved them, the tailed beast bomb that the Nine Tails had created to destroy the village, and in the recent war. I am not sure why I am surprised, Kakashi replied, I should have expected it. What's that epithet you called me? The number one, unpredictable, knucklehead ninja, they laughed, or, at least something like that. I think it might be been longer, they were quiet as they gazed at the village, until Naruto broke it. You sent a team after Sasuke, I did, I thought they were right behind you, a tracker team and Sakura was probably the only one who can convince Sasuke to help. Must have missed them somehow, but the more I think about it, the more I think Sasuke made us appear somewhere else. That sounds like him, Kakashi replied, a small gust of wind rushed past them, the team would return on their own, he wasn't worried, this was another problem that he had to manage, devils, you've met quite the fate, haven't you? Naruto crossed his arms, his eyes hardened, yeah. I want you to know, it's okay that you felt that way. I am sure others would have reacted the same way. I think that's where you're wrong, I messed up, now I gotta fix it. Kakashi frowned, you know that well try everything in our power to get your situation under control, the fifth is in the village, I've already asked her to give you a diagnosis, well get it fixed. I'll do that, but, never mind, it's not important right now. Kakashi spared his student a look, a hand underneath his chin and deep frown, if you're sure, I have no doubt the other cage will lend their help. He was an important asset that did not belong to other side, Gremory's loyalty lay with the devil faction, there was no doubt about where Naruto lay in this mess. Naruto handled the folder in his hands, I've read most of it, I get that you want to build ties but. Is there anything you need? I can use some advice, how should I act? He replied, I am a bit lost on how to handle it. Let's see. Kakashi crossed his arms, trying to string together an explanation that Naruto would understand, he snapped his fingers. Think of it as the Chunin exams, not within the tests itself, but outside of it, instead of representing the leaf, it's our dimension, you don't want to do anything that will spark a war, but you also don't want anyone to push you around. That's a relief, he released a sigh, alright, I think I got it, suck it up, make friends, and be strong. Perhaps, in several more years he would be ready, though, no need to rush things, yes, I am sure it will be fine. It just sucks that I am stuck beside Rias at nearly all times, if I go too far, I get his horrible feeling in my chest, not like it's gonna burst, but cave in, it, it just sucks. Kakashi was silent, he placed a comforting hand on his shoulder, he saw the frustration on his face, the way his arms trembled. Look, there's just as much fault in Gremory as well, there's no need for you to apologize to her, in fact, I preferred if you didn't, 
I can't stop you though, it was important that she saw yesterday, it will find Naruto, soon, well find out what's wrong, and well fix it. Yeah, he took a breath, there was more life in his next words yeah, it'll be fine. Good, let's return, the fresh air was a calming influence, gone was the feeling of someone staring at her back, she hid her relief from the blonde that kept stride, he can be intimidating when he wants to be. Naruto stretched as they stepped onto the streets, a few people waved at him, and he returned the favor. Yeah, that's Kakashi alright, he can play the part, he smiled, when I was first placed in his team, he put a kanai to my throat, thought I was going to die for a moment. T that's terrible, Rias replied, it's funny, he laughed. I think we have different tastes in humor, well, it wasn't funny at the time, but now, it's different. They were silent as they walked down the street, it was almost normal, today had felt normal, he wasn't angry at her in the slightest. Where are we going? She asked, we're visiting the fifth. As in, the Hokage. Yeah, he said, she asked a lot of questions, it was different from what he had been, Naruto had wanted little to do with her when he had been turned a devil. They had been stopped repeatedly by random passers-by along the way, she never saw any sort of annoyance, and it was a look that she had grown used to seeing whenever his gaze landed on her. Aren't you tired of being called hero? He didn't respond, it must have been nice to be called by your name in the human world. No, no, there's a difference, everyone calls me Uzumaki or Senpei, I find that a bit weird, but whatever, people can call me whatever they like, it doesn't really matter to me. There went any sort of common ground that she tried to find, it always seemed to slip from underneath them. If that's what you want, Naruto-kun, she looked for his reaction, but he only shook his head and continued, it was a lackluster response. They walked for another length of time until they reached their destination, a large two-story house, it was a beautiful place, there was even a garden in front. Instead of knocking, Naruto walked in like he owned the place, a confident smirk, his eyes glowing. Yo! Granny, we're here, he shouted, there were a few steps, tapping the wooden floors as it neared, and here I thought it might be a peaceful day. She was younger than what Rias expected, a blonde woman, a mark on her forehead, and gifted with a generous bust. Nice to have you back with us, she said, yup, Rias and the fifth met eyes, it was cold and rough, I am guessing your gremory? I heard you turned one of my ninja into a slave. Um, yes, that's, one way to put it, Tsunade, the fifth Hokage. Rias bowed, I am Rias Gremory, a pleasure to meet you. Naruto was the person to break the short silence, Granny, think you can help? First of all, don't call me that in front of the guest, second, I don't know yet, Tsunade said, there was a cup in her hand, and she took a drink of it. Right, if you're worried about formalities, it would have been better if you weren't drinking and if the house didn't smell like sake. Tsunade muttered something under her breath, before her voice rose, you know my fists have really missed punching things. All right, I get it, sheesh, it seemed they knew each other well, so much in fact that she didn't how to react, she stayed shut. Come on in, Rias followed her commands, and was right beside Naruto as they went into the living room, there were pictures and paintings decorated the walls, either of people or symbols, she didn't understand of any of their significances. It was true what Naruto said, it smelled of sake, and there was a couple of bottles presumably empty that laid around the coffee table and floor. Get comfortable. I need to ask questions before we do anything practical, remember, we're not here to cure you, that will come later. Yeah, Tsunade looked at them both, you've likely already explained to the sixth, but I need to make sure of how it works, don't leave anything out. Once again, she explained the intricacies of the piece that lay inside his chest, after it finished, Tsunade commanded Naruto to lay on the couch to complete some diagnostics. Take off your shirt too, just like earlier today, he took off his shirt, unlike earlier, she watched. Rias hadn't realized before today that he kept well in shape, he still had the bandages wrapped around his arm, but the fifth didn't say anything. Wow, she wondered how firm his stomach might feel on her fingers as she trailed against his chest. Her train of thought was broken by Hokage's glowing green hands, she hovered over his chest, above the area where the night piece had entered, on occasion, she would stop and write a few notes, then resume her pace, the process was over too soon. I've done all I can for now, Tsunade said her attention focused on writing notes. No one paid any attention to her, but Naruto got dressed, great, what do you think? I want to make an appointment for a scan, it'll make the next available one to you, as for your question, I can't say on what I have now, it's complicated, she frowned. There was a pregnant silence, the only sound of scratches of a pen, Naruto stared with tight lips, his arms crossed as a deep sigh escaped past them. 
Would something similar help? The attention turned to Rias. I have one last piece that you can study, if that would help at all? It would. Tsunade took a swig of her sake bottle. A quick shake afterward, before she threw it in a nearby garbage bin. Where is it? Naruto asked. Back in Japan, of course it is. Tsunade spoke up Naruto. Mind fetching me another bottle upstairs? It's in the fridge. Of course, your alcohol has its own fridge, he shook his head, and left to do as she asked. Tsunade sighed, and shook her head. Rias assumed this was directed at her. I heard you're influential, now, what do we have here? Two kids with powerful connections, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. There wasn't much to say, I've noticed his popularity. She laughed, the point being, I don't how care how nasty as gets between you two, just don't cause a war. It was all that was said. Naruto came down a few moments later, throwing Tsunade a bottle of sake, she popped open the bottle and took another sip, ill no more the next time, that's your cue to leave now. What? Not even going to ask me how I've been? Kakashi told me. Oh, it's nice to see you doing well, but I am busy too, especially with this, she held up the notebook. And drinking? That too. Rias decided to say nothing throughout the exchange, they knew each other well, if granny was of any indication. They said their goodbyes, and left the house, Naruto looked lost in thought, so she kept quiet, there was plenty to catch her attention as she looked around the village, whether it be ninjas hopping from rooftop to rooftop, or the groups of people that flocked to Naruto's side. Some had said they have come from afar for the possibility to see him in person, that was dedication, while Rias had a few connections, the difference lay in that Naruto was loved. Naruto would continue the pace after he spoken with them, he led the way, and she had no clue where she was in the various twists and turns of the streets, the village didn't seem to be uniform in their designs. The buildings turned to trees as they entered a park, it was beautiful day, hardly a cloud in the sky, there was the distant bustle of people, but it was mostly sounds of nature. Is it summer here? End of July, strange, he didn't seem interested in continuing this small talk, his tone told everything? Did you enjoy today at all? He asked, his voice was flat, unengaged. Yes, I did, I hope it will be like in the human world, she wasn't sure how to respond, especially with the scowl. But, but? She swallowed hard, this, wasn't an ordinary conversation, the tiny puddle of fear she had held the entire day had spread, growing deeper by the moment. You know it, don't you? He stopped, and turned toward her, she didn't reply, as his glare made her breathless. Come on, he shook his head, eyes glowed with annoyance, you're not stupid, just because we're not talking about it, doesn't mean it's not there. I, she started to say, but she realized no other words would come. Tell me Rias, I am sure you wondered, did you ask yourself as to why I am so angry? Why that treated you so badly? You must know by now, if you didn't before, today and even yesterday it would be obvious. His very eyes were cold as ice, it froze her to the spot, she hated that look, after everything, and everyone, that look was only reserved for her, why? Why couldn't he look at her with warmth, or with even the slightest bit of affection he held for his friends? I can't speak for the other of your peerage, but I can speak for myself, you see this village? Rias, this is my home, I've taken a vow to defend it with my life, to die for anyone that lives here, I'd be happy to do any such thing for anyone here, this was my life, I am to be Hokage one day. I am I am sorry. Rias looked away, down at his feet, as much as he wanted, she couldn't bear to ever see that look in his eye again, it tore at her heart to even think of it, not with the amount of progress, not since he had looked at her with something other than the hatred. Please, you know that that's not what I hate, you know our secret, it won't be one for long, it will be short for you guys, right? What's ten years? What's fifty? Here, it's he looked toward the light of the village, a breath, a pause, they'll know eventually, how couldn't they notice I don't age like them, I won't be normal here, and I've fought all my life for that. See can you ever forgive me? She cried, it was so hard to speak, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. His voice faltered, all my friends, I am going to watch them die, I won't grow old with them, it'll be at all their funerals, it'll be at all their children's funerals, and that's just too cruel. She reached for high, but he only stepped away, it only made her cry, I, I wanted to save you, I didn't mean for any of this to happen, please, I only meant for the best for you, you have to believe me, you have too. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. If she looked up, what would she find? Another look of scorn, like all those days that she had grown to seeing, these last couple of days were more than eyes filled with tolerance, she wanted more than that. Her heart yearned for it, she hated this horrible ache. 
Her sight blurred as she looked up, it was not what she feared, he looked angry, helplessly frustrated, with a terrible uncertainty, a furrowed brow, with unfocused eyes. I, she took a shaky breath, she forced herself to talk through the lump in her throat, she needed to stop crying, she needed words to be said, her words came natural, flowing effortlessly off her tongue, I'll never stop trying to help you, I promise that I'll do everything in my power to make you happy, you don't have to forgive me, even when it's all over, and you never want to see me again. Naruto sighed, let's just go, he walked away, a girl from another dimension is causing me trouble. That sounds an awful like Kagaya. Naruto threw a kanai, it twirled in the air and caught it when it fell from its flight, just an idle thing to do, he could watch TV, but the remote was on the other side of the room, it was too far. Yeah, but this one is 18, a student, and squishy looking. I guess I know what things are squishy looking, since I see what you see. He stopped his throw, hand tightened around the grip of the kanai, the words settled, and his mind went blank, inside, Naruto turned toward Kurama, but paid no attention, eyes closed, and resting, laid about in the expanse of the seal. The hell? You're not even human, the orange ear twitched, and Kurama slowly opened his eyes and yawned, I wonder what gave that impression. Besides, I've known humanity far longer than you, and I've been a Jinchuriki for two others before you. Right, my mom, he lingered, he went deathly still, before a shiver coursed through him, he pulled out his hair and spat out a curse, great, that's something I didn't want to think about. Kurama howled with laughter, a breath, then continued, he focused on creating more intricate spins in the air, to rid of any leftover, disturbing thoughts. Kurama spoke again, almost softly, I've witnessed lots of events, true, and I've seen what you experienced, you'd forgiven people for worse things. Yeah, I know, but this is between her and I, it was harmless, wasn't it? At least you thought it did, Naruto growled, even a reminder still made his head hot and everything unclear, I know I messed up, I didn't see it, does that mean I am not allowed to be angry? You have every right, so tell me, are you demonizing that girl? She doesn't view herself human, Naruto muttered weakly. Makes it easier, doesn't it? Kurama said, I wonder, if those were the same thoughts of the people that despised you. You carry me, so I am you. Even then, in my life and all I've witnessed, one difference is enough for the object of scorn, hate is easy. The words echoed and whirled in his head, his fingers drummed along the edge of the blade, tapping in a rhythm, he paused, and hung his head, there was the appeal to disintegrate the nearest thing he could find, or more accurately, puke something out, instead, he could only mutter a few weak words, I guess I am still human, aren't I? I don't hold it against you, Kurama chuckled, these other humans, angels and devils, they're the same to me, sure, a few differences here and there, instead of scurrying around on the ground, they're in the air like bats and pigeons, vermin. Naruto laughed, yeah, he trailed off, uncertain on what else to say. Would you have hated her more if she didn't say to be yourself? Definitely, Kurama snorted, at least she's doing some things right, we both know you're going to forgive her eventually. But not today, she had her own reasons, just like he did. Kurama hummed, there's one silver lining in all this, you're the second human I've come to like, losing my father wasn't easy, and I know it wasn't going to be easy losing you either, I am going to be your partner for a long time. He was stricken with silence, in fact, all he could focus on was the kanai in his hand. Yeah, I am not going to repeat that, Naruto laughed, that's one way to look at it. Sadly, the negatives outweighed the positives, deciding that he was finally not lazy enough to get the remote, he fetched it and switched to a random program. After some time, the door to his room cracked open with a creak, Rhea stepped out, dressed in a tank top and some shorts, of course, she slept naked, so never mind that train of thought, it wouldn't go anywhere. Her bluish green eyes hesitantly met his, her arms crossed in a defensive manner, it seemed he needed to break the silence. You hungry? She nodded, I'll cook for us, I can cook for myself. No, it's fine, I'll do it, you're my guest after all, I would say honored, but why no, he shrugged and handed her the remote. He didn't see her reaction. Maybe it brought the tense air between them down, maybe it didn't, he mindlessly grabbed the new ingredients and made something up. Rias had been a daily part of his life since he had turned a devil, all the usual, strained interactions was morphing into awkward, strange interaction. He heard the channels being changed or lingered on as he fixed up breakfast for them both, once the cooking was done, he returned to the living room and placed it on the table. Her eyes were glued to the screen, only broken when she thanked him, he sat down, and began to eat his breakfast. They watched a show he knew, but he didn't recognize any of the events, 
He must have missed episodes, Rias watched with a cute look of curiosity as one of the actors walked along the ceiling. Do they, usually do that? Not any more dangerous than that, I think, he said, he answered more questions and he humored her, you remind me of myself when I first came to the other world. How? I don't think I noticed, I am not surprised, her lips parted, but closed, a change of thought, oh. Naruto placed his empty plate on the coffee table, a sigh escaped from him, do you follow your own words? I am sorry, what? I distinctly remember you saying I can be myself around you, even if that meant I am an ass to you, because, you didn't want false courtesy, it annoys me when you open your mouth and not say a word, or say something else entirely, so, like I said, is it just empty words? Because you don't seem to follow them. Her eyes widened, you notice something like that. He nodded, I see, I am sorry. Sometimes I just don't know whether I should say it. What are you afraid of? She crossed her arms, her eyes looked away, her voice low, that things won't get better between us, and that all you'll feel for me is. Melodrama was right up her alley, he pressed his lips tightly together, it doesn't mean it's not getting better. I've accepted what happened to me, and I told you what how I've felt about it, you're the slow one here. She was silent, an almost silent wonder hidden in her eyes, are you saying she looked away, her hair covered her features. He shook his head, grumbled and cursed under his breath, it was a strange feeling doing what he did for a person he didn't particularly like, Rias had a strange patience, fueled by the unknown. He decided to focus on the show, but he couldn't figure out what had happened, Rias, we're stuck with each other until I get fixed, have you thought how long that might be? She said nothing, so he continued, you have no idea how much I thought about it, if it never gets fixed, then we're stuck with each other until we die. You'll get better, I promised you that. That's not what I want to talk about, he said, if it stays like this, then that will mean one of us will never follow the dreams we have. Rhea's lips tightened and she looked out the window toward the Hokage monument, that's an if. Just something to keep in mind, Naruto leaned back against the couch, his hand rested on his cheek, and paid mild attention to the show, stuck forever or not, he would become Hokage, a spoiled girl wouldn't stop that. They said nothing, the show ended, another started. One that Rias had skipped and started watching the news, somehow, it neared noon. We should probably go back to your dimension now, he said. What? But we just got here, and you haven't been here since, since forever. He actually felt flattered, sure, but this isn't what I want, I practically kidnapped you, your brother is a Satan, and I'd rather not do another stupid thing, why no, like cause a war, besides, well be going back and forth for a while, it was also in order. Her lips curled into an O and sat back against the couch, my brother will be worried, in fact, I am surprised he hadn't showed up yet. Maybe we can thank Issei for that, perhaps my brother trusts you. Why would he trust me? Because I do, great, let me speak to him first, he may be angry with you, her heels clicked and clacked against the marble floor, the last time he was in this mansion he insulted a number of devils. They stopped some paces away, a few steps and they would go through that thick oak door where her brother was in. Naruto turned to her, oh, so all that about your brother trusting you? She felt her face burn red, you know what I meant, she looked at him, the iron plate on his forehead with the leaf symbol, she had seen others worn in the village. He smiled, I don't, just l let me just speak to him first, Rias looked away from him, he was dangerous, his confidence in the look in his eye. Go ahead, I am not stopping you, Naruto leaned against the wall, and idly looked at paintings assorted in the hallway. Rias entered, and her brother's gaze trailed up, before his eyes widened in surprise, Sirzex exploded from his chair, calling out his special and annoying nickname he had for her, faster than she knew it, she was in his arms. Are you okay? I've missed you so much, are you hurt at all? More questions sputtered from his mouth, unintelligible words that spat one after another. It's okay, I am fine, she replied, which didn't stop from him from inspecting her, but there were no injuries to see. Good. His hands settled on her shoulders, his eyes began to harden, a deep set frown. Now, where is this knight of yours? I want to talk to him. That's why I came to speak to you, and wondering where I've been. Yes, but what's more pressing is that I want to speak to your knight. You're going to need to, because it's more complicated than you think. And why is that? He frowned again. Well, as I found out, he's from another dimension altogether, and he's an important person there, and now he's representing them as a liaison. Rias explained more, as quickly as she could manage. Oh, was all he said, he blinked a few times, taking a step back and a hand went to his chin in contemplation, a grimace formed and he paced around the room, yes, that would be complicating, especially, after all that has happened. 
They were interrupted when an argument started outside the door, she recognized the other voice as they got bickered with one another. Let's stop this, before it gets any messier than it needs to, her brother said, he made his way toward the door. I am nothing like the child that you prevailed over. I could say sorry, but I wouldn't be, besides, Riser wasn't impressive. The knob turned and rattled, the door swung open, Naruto, still leaned against the wall with his arms crossed, Grafia, hands locked together, resting on her lap, both turned to look at the intrusion. This stops now, Naruto is a guest here, and is more than a member of my, he paused, sister's peerage, Naruto, I'd like to appall. Naruto waved him off, it's fine, she didn't know, no harm done, in fact, I am the one who should be apologizing. Grafia tightened her lips, bowed and took a couple paces back, Sirzek's side, and turned to Naruto, then, let us discuss this inside, he opened the door, and beckoned him to join. Sirzek sat behind a desk, and invited them to take a seat, I understand that you're a liaison. For the Shinobi Alliance, and all the nations they are settled in. This sounds like a significant number, a look of contemplation, would you like anything to drink? Tea, doesn't matter what kind, Naruto replied, I want to apologize for what happened at your party, it was very childish to bring in other people for what I feel about your sister, in fact, I was hoping to say that to everyone who felt insulted, if you can give me that chance. Sirzek's eyes looked interested in that, well, I am sure I can arrange that, an entirely new world, that can be complicating. Like Rhea's decision, she couldn't help but cringe, yes, that too. Grafia returned, with several cups on a tray and a kettle, she filled them, and placed them on the table for them, she gave a bow, and stood back, awaiting to be called once again. Rias couldn't help but notice, how Naruto presented himself, confident and without fear. If you want to set up a meeting with my leader, I can get that done. I see, Sirzex leaned forward, if you don't mind, I would like to have a discussion with the other Satans about this entire new dimension before that happens. A nod, just to be clear, there won't be any sort of reincarnations happening in our world, that's the first, and only warning. There was a tense silence, both stared into each other's eyes, unyielding, unflinching, it was like her brother was testing his mettle, Sirzek smiled, understandable, I am sure we can put all mistakes behind. Last thing we need is a war, indeed, but you, my beloved sister, are in an odd situation because of his condition, Sirzek looked at her, are you fine with representing the devil race? You do know what I am asking of you? Of course, she replied, I want to help, while his face betrayed no emotion, she could tell by the look in his eyes that he was not pleased by her answer, or with the situation, he turned to Naruto, now, I am sure we'll find a way to remove this instability with the devil piece inside you. I hope so too, if you don't mind, I would like to ask questions about your own world, within reason, of course, Sirzex asked, Rias was about to interrupt, but she couldn't could help but think of her own talk with the Hokage, he saw that she would be forced to be a liaison. I can do that, Naruto replied, if you require any food, just ask, and he'll have it brought in, no? Good, let's start. It was a long discussion, she had heard about most of the things they talked about, something new here and there, there were a few interesting tidbits, mostly about Naruto's own views about his home. I think that should be all for now, a meeting should be done in the near future, but after I meet with the other Satans. Okay, whenever you're done we can talk about setting it up. Her brother nodded, now, about the devils that you slighted at my party. I would like to meet them one by one and give them an apology, or if they want, some other way that I can say sorry. It's settled then, come by tomorrow at noon, if you would excuse us, I wish a few words with my sister. Naruto stood up without another word, and left the room, the clicked close, and after a few silent moments, Sirzex talked. Are you okay? She nodded, the only thing I am asking of you, is transport him, and to be each other's guests. I understand, and, she paused, the last couple of days, I've had a taste of what he felt since he arrived, I know him a little more, he says what he thinks, and he believes what he says, he doesn't tiptoe around the issue, because, that doesn't lead anywhere. Do you trust him? I trust him, he saved me after all. You do know that he might have saved you because he's forced to be close to your side, he replied, Riser would likely not have allowed that. I believe otherwise, he's a good person, I've seen it, she had seen how he treated others. Do you? He paused, never mind. Sirzex pinched the bridge of his nose, she had always known patience in her brother, but for once, he looked frustrated, know this, if you're hurt at all, then nothing would stop me. I don't think it will come to that, Rias replied, she knew how far he would go, she wouldn't share it with him, she wouldn't be responsible for such a thing. 
they said a few parting words, and Rias joined Naruto outside. Well, that's settled, I don't have to do anything else today, he covered his yawn. Let's go see my peerage, Rias said, he gestured with his hand, waiting for her to continue, they reappeared in the apartment back on earth. She turned to him, Naruto, I just want to say this, my brother is a Satan for a reason, he's nothing like anyone you ever fought, he's much more powerful than Riser could ever be. There was a twinkle in his blue eyes, a sort of playfulness, he smiled, Eno, I wasn't given this mission to only apologize, if it was, then someone else would be here. She didn't quite believe what she was saying, are you saying you can match my brother? However, she couldn't deny the power of negating abilities. Well, I honestly don't want to find out, and I hope I never have too. That made sense, after what she had found out, why were you made a war hero? I fought, just like everyone else, he turned away. She changed the subject, what should we tell my peerage? Tell them, I told my friends, she sat down on a couch and turned on the television, he sat beside her and watched, she paid no attention to the program, enthralled in her thoughts, it's going to be busy for us in the next week. Yep, maybe longer than that, school would have weight, this was more important, though, perhaps she could receive the upcoming homework, she looked at Naruto, it was true, he wouldn't have a life here, he had already decided on it, there was just two. It was like her head was filled to the brim, it would be a perfect time for a shower, what helped calm him? Do you want to get ice cream? Rias asked, what they got, didn't matter, as long as it was distracting. He didn't reply, instead, he sat frozen on the seat, his eyes only reflecting the changing images, eerie, he was deathly still, it was supernatural, his lips broke the facade, I just forgot something. What's the matter? His lips pressed together, and trembled, he buried himself in his hands, I forgot the old Mons Ramen. Rias stared in shocked silence, and she couldn't help but laugh, would you like to return for it? I wouldn't mind. He sighed, his eyes roaming the room, like he was having an internal debate, you wouldn't mind if we stayed at my place for one more day, right? No, of course not, his eyes brilliant as they already were lit up, and he grinned. Shuffles of feet, and a blur of people as they sped past, many didn't notice him, but the others who did, spoke with wide eyes and hushed whispers. Naruto couldn't help but envy them, they were free to do what they wished with perhaps mundane worries, meanwhile, he couldn't even leave the school grounds without turning into a monster, thankfully, he hadn't been here long. Crazy how a week had gone and left, not that it was short, it had crawled, like a sickly little snail, there was little time to relax, with the time frame he was allotted to complete everything he had been given, the end of the five cage meeting. Senpei, someone sat beside him, it was Issei, a reminder he barely got the chance to converse with the others of Rias Peerage, or with anyone else, an explanation of what happened since their return, and all that jazz didn't count as interaction. Issei, important diplomatic negotiations and he was in school, because Rias wanted to be here, there was another dinner he would have to go to later tonight, not that he could it, had rather talk with Issei. Have you come to talk about what's good in the world? Hey, no need to say it, I already know it, maybe you got somewhere, maybe you didn't. He did see one of Rias breasts, but he wasn't sure if he should share that with Issei, as well as her apparent tendency of sleeping in the nude, not that he wanted it kept secret, but because of Issei's own tendencies. There's always goodness in the world, Issei said, he watched a girl run down the hallway, he looked at him, you were from another place? Yep, he frowned, and looked at nothing, his next words came slowly, how many places are there? Several days in and he was bored of all this political drivel, no idea, Rias and all the devils didn't know, that's why it's such a big deal. So, you lied to me about being normal, he accused, at least, it was almost a question. Naruto shrugged, if you want to put it that way, sure, but what's normal for me is back home, a village filled with ninjas, nearly all my friends are in the same, career path, plus, we don't live forever either. I see, Issei said, perhaps uncertain about his curse, but there was an odd lull in his question, um, I wanted to ask another question, are there any hot girls over there? I expected that this time, Naruto tapped his fingers repeatedly, thinking of the hesitation that Issei had given, Issei continued to speak, but Naruto paid little attention. I wonder, do you think Ino, Naruto interrupted, being home, it made me think of my past and future, I realized something, everyone else knew of the supernatural world, except you, maybe you thought I was the same, you wanted very much to be my friend, despite me stealing Rias away. What are you getting at? You hate being a devil, or however you want to put it, both of us died, with hardly any choice of being resurrected, Issei looked away, his fingers tightly clutched around the table, 
I buried myself in my anger, and laid it into Rias, you dealt with it by burying it into boobs. I, but Issei didn't say anything else, he wrung his hands together. We all handle things differently, while I am not normal in the way you wanted, it doesn't mean my life hadn't changed, it reminded him of terrible loneliness in his youth. I died, Issei muttered, his face was blank, you died, Naruto repeated, he cracked a smile, he couldn't help but think of something else, it wasn't a good time for that, thankfully, Issei didn't notice it, they sat in a long silence, the students in the halls reduced to a trickle. Clubroom? Naruto said, wordlessly, they made their way outside, Issei finally broke the silence, less subdued. You must have been busy, I barely saw you or Bucko since you returned and explained what was happening. Naruto shrugged, unbothered by the change in subject, you're on the dot, meetings and meetings every day, eat, get weirded out by Rias, sleep, and then again the next day. Why? I am a liaison, besides, I insulted all those devils at the party, I have to deal with that. Issei smiled, that was pretty funny, I think some of the others thought the same, what kind of, as you put it, ass kissing did you have to do? Just apologizing, like for offending them, how it was immature, or if there's something I can do to make up for it, Naruto had to wonder if Sirzex had helped in the background, smoothing the process would be something a leader would have done. Issei hummed and they turned the corner, so being a liaison for your own world, how is it? A little boring, Naruto put a thumb to his chin, though, there was this one thing. What? Ah, a noble wanted more than an apology, he wanted me to kiss his feet, Naruto replied, I told him to go himself, Issei laughed, well, it was simplified, but that was the gist of it, the specifics just ruined the story, he didn't have to know of its complications. What about you? Naruto asked, how has it been? My life isn't as interesting as yours right now. Oh please. All this other crap is just making me sick, give me some of yours, anything, anything you've seen, or heard. Err, well, some guy tried to fight me some days ago, Issei muttered, it didn't go well, and seeing how strong you were, it made me want to train. That's good, are you sure you can't help me? Naruto looked at him, right. They entered the club room, everyone else seemed to inside, including the new girl, a name he couldn't remember, he sat down on the nearest seat, beside Akano. Stacks of papers and folders were settled on the table, Rhea sorted them with sticky notes on each pile and sorted into classes and week. There was a light discussion that he took part in, about the things he and Rias had been doing this past week, nothing more interesting than that, most of his thoughts were about his mission. There was movement to his side, Akano moved closer, her legs folding as she leaned into his ear. There's something different between the two of you, almost as if you're closer, you're staring at her more often. Am I? A suppressed giggle, nothing unusual, but it's different. He rolled his eyes, oh really? Are you falling in love with her? That's like, the stupidest thing I ever heard, she laughed again. How cute, maybe you're in denial. She always tells me how exhausted she is on the phone almost every night. He had heard them, but he never paid attention to it. Akano leaned in closer, her hand lightly grasping his arm as he felt her breath run down his neck. Quietly, she whispered, you're in her, aren't you? Wow, blindsided again. That sentence repeated in his head, and it was all he heard, she had rolled the word, hushed and raw he couldn't help but shiver, the image was vivid in his mind. If you don't remember, I kinda hate her, Naruto muttered. She giggled, and twirled a strand of her dark hair, you know, she told me you can heal your wounds, he heard the shiver of her breath, and the coil of her frame against his. What's that got to with anything? Are you rough? I do enjoy that. He felt hot, this was getting intense, and he was growing more uncomfortable by the moment, along with his annoyance. He hissed back into her ear, we didn't bang, okay. Somehow, felt more vulgar than it had ever been. I believe you, she laughed, he blinked, and noted the others in the room looked at them, he was so glad she found entertainment in him, despite his annoyance, there was something fun in this entire thing, it was as simple as a pretty girl that smiled at him, with a hand wrapped his arm. Well, there's a solution to your woes, she whispered, taking note of the others that glanced at them. He couldn't help but smile, oh, and what's that? In was his turn to stare away at something, his eyes caught Rias, who looked annoyed, shoulders tensed before it slumped. Well, an amused breath blew down his neck, you just need to be close to someone, a hum, and you know what happens when a man and a woman get together. Huh, he said dumbly, his mind going blank, that actually makes a lot of sense. Funnily enough, it was an appealing idea, the turn of a key, the door would click open, he'd call out that he returned home, and someone would answer. 
Still, who would do that? The lifespan wouldn't work out. Red filled his vision, and he looked up to see Rias, her lips pressed tightly together. I think it's time we get ready, right? A frown. Yeah, sure, he stood up. Akano smiled, bye you too, she sang. They walked out the door, and back into the school grounds, Akano, was different than he initially thought. We have to go the store first, to get a few things, she said curtly. Sure. He paid little attention as he kept pace, outside the school gate and into the streets, Naruto didn't quite feel like talking to Rias, as they talked a lot, so, he put on his headphones and listened to music, allowing himself to be hypnotized by the pleasant beats. All he did was follow the red hair down the street, Rias set the pace, and they walked side by side, her being a few steps ahead to lead him, at times, she would glance back, stare, then return to her own thoughts. Nothing different than usual, after some time, they stopped and she mumbled something about going inside, and he mumbled back about waiting, he leaned against the wall and watched the cars pass. You're a hard person to find, Naruto stared at his phone, the music blaring into his ears, he heard the voice, but maybe they spoke to someone else, of course, the person who said it was alone, standing several feet away, a white-haired teen, there was a spark of familiarity, but he couldn't quite place it. For a full week, and I found nothing at all, you disappeared off the face of the planet, gone with that other devil. Naruto looked around, seeing no one walking on the open sidewalk of the city, inside the store, Rias waited in line at the cash register, he looked to the stranger, he was supernatural, or whatever they called themselves, and you are. A smirk, valley, I took that weakling from you, right, Naruto rolled the word, putting the headphones behind his neck, and crossed his arms, I am Naruto, is there something you wanted? This was a good thing, whoever this guy was, he was a part of the fallen angels, Naruto had tried to think of ways to get into contact with them, not exactly a part of his mission, but more of a bonus. A chuckle, tell me, was it as easy as it looked? And that golden form, what about that? I can't seem to find anything about it, and that's the strangest part. Naruto shrugged, those are just details, why were you looking for me? A couple of reasons, because I was asked, and because I wanted to. Just get to the point, you're with the fallen angels, aren't you? Valley shrugged, I guess, but I came here to fight you. I'd rather not fight, his brow twitched, it's not a request. I can always just run, and I'd rather avoid a war, I am a devil, there won't be a war, Valley said. A devil with fallen angels? I am with an entirely new group, faction, race, whatever you want to call it. Valley frowned, I don't care about all these groups and their petty squabbles. Were discussions always so annoying to deal with? He gritted his teeth and swallowed words he should nt say, then let's work together, you introduce me to whoever the leader of the fallen angels, and sure, he'll fight you. He chuckled, sure, that's a deal, yeah, but Rias will have to come, trust me, you don't want the fight interrupted. He frowned, and crossed his own arms, fine, Naruto grabbed her wrist when she walked out of the store, she gave a questioning look. We're doing something, he said, she blinked, and saw a person that she had seen at Kokabiel's fall, the strange boy that had taken the fallen angel. This is Valley, and this is Rias, Naruto said, you got a place for it, right? Valis only response was a nod, they came close to him, and one of the seals appeared from below, they appeared somewhere in a forest, lush and green, with a wide meadow, she heard the low, distant rumble of civilization. His hand was still clutched around her wrist and Naruto led her away from Valley, he stared at Naruto's back, without warning she was picked up by him and they flew to a small cliff no higher than the trees. She was set down, before she could ask, he answered, I am fighting him, stay here okay? Nothing serious anyway. Any words that she said were lost on him, he jumped down and joined Valley. Rias strained to hear their exchange, all she could manage to get was Naruto mentioning where she was set down, before she could try to hear more, they stopped and moved against one another, it was a flurry of arm to arm combat, she wasn't sure if any one of them landed a solid hit. Naruto was thrown away, cast away in the brushes, panicked birds flew off in the air, cawing and singing, Rias felt her pace quicken, and she wrung her hands together and tried to find a better view. Naruto appeared once again, and as if they were both testing one another, they began to move even faster, there was a laugh. She cheered as Naruto landed several successful hits and the stranger staggered back, another laugh, they fought again, and disappeared behind the mass of trees and brush. Rias struggled to find them, she walked along the edge, following the sounds of their clash, the ground rumbled beneath her feet, pebbles and earth fell below. They reappeared again, Valley talked again, and they stared at one another. Now, 
Where's that golden form of yours? Rius leaned in closer, curiosity taking hold, he never spoke much of it, even when she asked. If it comes to it, if. Valley said, insulted, they engaged each other again, with each beat of her heart they increased with tempo, their fists and feet becoming nothing more than a blur, they disappeared again, lost somewhere below, but she heard their yells. Show me that thing. What? The earth trembled, trees cracked and groaned, they're getting more serious, she muttered, she was curious as to where Naruto's strength lay, was the gold form a temporary power? Could he only use it in bursts? There were too many questions. Rias heard the curses from the stranger, the fighting stopped, a lull, a disturbing break from the chaos, she released a breath she didn't know she had been holding, something ripped through the rock near her, and standing at the point of impact was Valley. Cold eyes stared at her, he closed the distance, he was so fast, she couldn't react in time, Rias blinked, Naruto, cast in golden shroud, a hand was extended, settled in Valis' gut. A bead of sweat trailed down Valis' brow, thick black lines crawled over his clothing and skin. Naruto stepped back, the golden visage disappeared, we're not doing this anymore. Valley fell to his knees, he strained to speak, and not finished, his arm trembled as he let out a gasp. I don't care if you were only using her as bait, Naruto looked at her, let's go. Rias stared at him, and nodded dumbly, Valley let out a frustrated groan as they disappeared. Another change in scenery, they returned to the apartment they shared, it was then she realized she had lost her bag, however, her thoughts were concentrated on Naruto. His back was turned, he stretched, and groaned when she heard a pop, I wish I can relax, too bad we gotta visit some other devil. Rias decided to blurt out the first thing that came to mind, what was that about? Valley? He asked, he went to the fridge and grabbed a drink, he wanted a spar, but he was getting pissed, I guess because he wanted me to show more. She stared, and after a moment, he noticed, so he stared back, Rias still couldn't voice her thoughts, it also got scrambled by the intense look in his blue eyes, Eno, I am getting tired of your constant staring. Rias blushed red, and looked at the more interesting rug at her feet, her heart rushed, why you notice that? I thought you weren't hiding it, do you sneak glances at me? And why would I do that? I, I don't know, she mumbled, her hands clasped together, she felt a tinge of hope swell inside her, it was a strange day. Whatever, let's get this business over with, okay. We're done, Rias heaved a sigh, she stepped into the kitchen and plopped down on the nearest chair. I know. It felt like ages since we had some free time, he looked inside the fridge out of habit, but there was nothing he needed or wanted, tomorrow, well go back to my home and see if the Hokage is back. She nodded, okay, she paused, is it, okay if we talk about something? We talk every day, silence, well I am not stopping you. If he had to be truthful, had rather avoid talking about heavy subjects for a while, they did just come from another meeting after all, nonetheless, he restrained a sigh and leaned against the fridge, because it would be odd to sit across from Rias, for whatever reason that may be. I wanted to explain myself, again? Better, he stared outside the small window by the sink, it would be easy to leave with the options available, the next words wouldn't have to come. Fine, he muttered, he tapped his left foot to settle that ache to move. She frowned, but continued, it's about the day we met, and the day you turned into a devil. Of course, what else would it be about? Rias pressed on, I thought so much about it lately, I can even see myself on the sidewalk, the faceless people around me, minding their own business, it was every day that I thought, if I turned any one of them, would they be able to help me? Sometimes, I would have a little hope, what if they had magical talent? What if they had a sacred gear? What? Rias stopped abruptly, her lips trembled and she took a breath, it's just that, Riser has always been an expected part of my life, ever since I was a little girl, and, I am just so happy that I never have to think about those things again. He bit his tongue to catch the fleeting words, his nail dug into his arms, the thing she did wasn't unforgivable, it could never be, but it still was hard to listen to, he just couldn't help but think of the future. Rias continued, so when you crashed into the road, blood gushing out from your stomach, I, she paused, I couldn't help but notice your energy, I won't lie, and say that it had nothing to do with it, when you went still, I thought you died, so I did what you asked me not to. He drummed his fingers along his lap, she was silent, expectant, truthfully, he had no idea what to say, it was a long time before he said anything. I get it, you thought you knew better, when you didn't, I don't know if we'll ever be friends, but I don't really care. Her shoulders slumped, I see, that's the best I could hope for. I guess, he muttered, despite his words, her stiff shoulders settled, and a tiny smile appeared, did she have to look so satisfied with herself? 
I am just going to go to my room, he turned to leave but he was stopped by a question. Is it okay if I left for the school? Haven't used my powers in a while, you're good, I think, it was good that she didn't add anything. He left down the hall, and back into his room, he crashed into his bed, blanket covering his face, it smelled fresh, soft and cozy, Naruto heard her steps, the door closing and being locked. He pulled out his phone and fiddled around with it, the latest message being from Issei asking if he was free the other day, Naruto hadn't been free in a while, and Issei was in school for another couple of hours. It was some minutes after when he heard the knocking at the door. She has the keys, unless she forgot it, he could make the excuse he left somewhere, he then turned off his phone, he sighed when it continued, he was more inclined to lay about in the fresh sheets. There was a voice, and it didn't belong to Rias, it was enough to get him off the bed and to the door, not enough to make him grumble and curse for forcing him away from comfort. The person behind the door was a woman with cat ears, black hair and a deep revealing neckline, the ears weren't fake, nor was the tails behind her as they slithered about behind her. Finally, she smiled, large and bright, she talked so quickly that he almost didn't catch it, both of you are really inseparable, I thought we'd never get a chance to talk, help me make babies, Naya. He blinked, and stared at the woman, he did a couple of things, raise a brow and close the door, it was an almost instinctual response, of course, it didn't make sense, he paused, his hand edging near the handle, the door opened again. Oh, she giggled, is that a yes? He stared long and hard at this strange person, are you from the leaf or any part from back home? What does that mean? Any answer would have been confusing, if the girl was from home, then her question made sense, except that she somehow made her way into this dimension and found him somehow, nothing was right. Never mind, tell me, you're joking right? Wah, why would I joke about that? He shirked back, because only crazy people would say that, I have no idea who you are, and you don't know who I am, so, who the hell are you? She folded her hands behind, her chest sticking out, I am Kuroka, and you're Naruto-kun, the woman stepped closer, and he nudged her back into the hallway, Mini, she whined. That's not going to happen, Naya. Why not? How do you even know me? How did you even find me? And what do you really want? I am Kuroka, and I know you from Valley Kun, and I want to have your babies. He narrowed his eyes, like her head were a tomato. I am more creeped out more than anything, he crossed his arms, Valley, how do you know him? Kuroka obviously wasn't the leader of the fallen angels. She pouted, he's my teammate, I was there when you both fought. I'll save you time and say that I would never give you babies. Then, I am just going to convince you, a man has needs, so we can help each other. He shooed her away, like a pesky cat digging into garbage, go away, I am tired of people like you. She swiped his hands away, I, I am not the first, and I only need to have strong babies. You're acting like that's not a big deal, he muttered, Naruto imagined kids, cursing up a storm, running around, holding a child in his arms. Did you ever say yes to one of them? Kuroka tilted her head. Never, but you're much creepier than them, no, I am not, she stamped her feet, he wasn't convinced. Ask someone else, he closed the door, immediate knocks. I can get you to meet someone important. He was on his way toward the kitchen when he heard it, he sighed, and returned to the door, you don't need to try hard to convince someone to have with you. But I want to have with you, a lot, guys like video. He suppressed his blush as much as he could and adjusted his shirt, well, if you weren't a total creep about it, he still didn't know how she found him, what's this about meeting someone important? She giggled, the leader of the Chaos Brigade, heard of them? He shook his head, never, and I still haven't heard from Valley, so I am not talking to you until I meet this leader first, he closed the door but was stopped when her foot caught the door. Wait. So, if I do this, would you make strong babies for me? What was with girls and being so annoyingly persistent? My answer want change. Will you ever consider it? He sighed, fine, yay, I'll be back. I am back. Rias called out, she closed the door behind her, feeling the plastic bags crumple together as she swung them in. Welcome back, Naruto muttered, he peered back from the loveseat, before looking back at the television, often, he was in his room, so it was a pleasant surprise, hopefully, he was no longer bothered by their talk earlier. I got junk food, and some soda, he said nothing. Instead he stood and wandered over to where she had settled the bags of junk food, he helped himself and pointed to the another bag, thanks, what's with the movies? She brought them out, stacked on one another, I was hoping we could watch one, there's even some Hollywood movies. He shrugged, sure, why not, she smiled, and prepped for the movie, he chose the film, 
a comedy film that she found. It seemed their relationship had taken big strides in last couple of weeks, Naruto was right, how could she have made progress if she was too afraid of doing anything meaningful? While the movie was running its commercials, she made small talk, did you do anything while I was gone? Not really, played games, but someone did come over today. Like who? A supernatural, she's a pause. A cat girl I guess, very weird too. What's her name? She asked, a supernatural should NT be around here. He stared at her, well, you see, she's doing something for me, apparently she knows someone that I would like to talk to. There was a knock at the door, great timing, I didn't feel like watching a movie with you. She puffed her cheeks, but at least he was playing nice, Naruto was the first to reach to the door, it opened to reveal a little girl, she had long black hair, and a pink frilly hairbow. Oh, Naruto muttered, despite the strange and curious appearance of the little girl, she was a supernatural, who were the people that he had met? Who are you? He said dumbly, where's, uh, that girl? There was nothing said, there was only a blink and staring that the girl returned, she narrowed her eyes. Are you going to say anything? You're Naruto, you fought Valley? Naruto glanced Arias for a moment with a raised brow. The only thing she could respond was with a shrug, she had no idea who this person might be. Naruto was the one who set up this meeting. Yeah, he returned to look at the girl, I did, you're strong, how strong? Why does it matter? Naruto replied, Can I at least get your name? All I know is that you're a leader of some group. Ophis, the name struck something familiar, but she didn't know why, join me. Well, I can't join you, but I can help you, Naruto replied. Do you think you're that powerful? I don't know the problem, but you do know how this works right? I help you, you help me, then we're friends, allies, that's almost the same thing. Ophis narrowed her eyes, are you powerful enough to help me? Naruto restrained a sigh, his brow twitched, all this diplomacy business is really getting on my nerves, you have a problem, show me what it is, and it'll solve it. Ophis stood straighter, seemingly pleased, come, was her only words, she turned, and a portal appeared directly in front, she hopped inside, disappearing somewhere in the unknown. Naruto smiled at her, well, let's go check it out. Wait, you're actually going to follow her? Well yeah, she's important, I think, besides, it's my duty to try and find allies out here. It did make sense, now that she thought about it, it would be difficult, as they were already in talks with the devils and the shinobi. I just, have a bad feeling. You're crazy Rias, now, come on, he tugged at her arm, drawing her closer to the portal, it can't be so bad. They found their shoes and stood a step away from the pale purple of the rift, I just can't place why her name sounds familiar. Naruto frowned, maybe it's a bit common name here, maybe it'll come back. Are you sure it's a good idea to trust her? He sighed, this is how trust works, okay, are you gonna help or not? She pursed her lips, and nodded begrudgingly, she couldn't really stop it, but of course it was as simple as saying no, but that wouldn't help her relationship with him at all. Rhea stepped with him, and they both went in together. From the backdrop of well-furnished apartment, to an explosion of color, her feet found purchase and she couldn't help but stare into the sky, it reminded her of bubbles, like she was looking through a thin sheen that wrapped around the world. Color and endless space above, below her feet, an almost black glass-like plate, and in the horizon, Numerous pillars and structures of the strange rock littered the landscape. Ophis stood some distance away, her blank expression bored into Naruto, they neared her, and she talked more than a couple of words for the first time. I want my silence, she said, I want it back from that that thing, it won't give it. It, other than the tall pillars of jagged rock, there was nothing, looks peaceful here. Naruto looked in the distance, and Ophis stared in the same direction, just, what exactly stole it? He asked. Rhea strained to listen, and to see what she was missing, it was a few moments later when she heard the gusts, thick and powerful, then a small dot in the distance, almost lost in the colorful haze of the world. Um, Rhea, he muttered, do, uh, dragons exist? She looked at him, with terrifying clarity from the suggestion, Ophis, with an annoyed look, gazed at the horizon, Ophis, a dragon of legend, Ophis was this little child, the infinite dragon god. I I remember where I heard the name now, she's a dragon. Well if she isn't, that one is dragon, Eno, wings and all. She heard it, felt it, each flap of its wings, she heard the winds, like a drum being struck, ahead, its size had tripled, and only grew with each passing second until it directly above them. Rias was filled with morbid fascination as stared up at the dragon, titanic in size, it was the biggest living, breathing thing she had ever seen, 
gusts of wind bore down on her from its wing, if she hadn't held onto Naruto, she would have been knocked down. It landed, the earth fell apart, trembled, and made her fall, fear gripped her heart and never let go, oh Ophis, have you returned? How thoughtful of you, it laughed. No, Ophis said, others are here with me, she pointed at Naruto. Rias rose to her feet, trembling as she stared at the massive crimson dragon, she clutched at Naruto's arm and stood behind, the only place that provided a faux place of safety. It's safe to say you're not a little girl, Naruto muttered, and uh, I don't think this is something I can do right now, getting back your silence. The dragon hummed, its red eye centered on them both, a girl too, she looks, a chuckle, delicious. Let's go Rias, Naruto muttered, hold on. A massive claw crashed in front of them, Rias gave a yelp, and stumbled, if Ophis is interested in you, then there's gotta be something special about you. Well, I said I can solve the problem she had, because I said it didn't matter what it was, Naruto replied, almost calm in the face of the big red dragon, even then, there was an edge to his voice. Big red grinned, then it laughed, typical Ophis, and you, little human, what do you think now? Well, maybe I can, maybe I can't, that's the funniest thing I've heard. A claw reached for them, it moved so impossibly fast for its size, she was pushed away, and the hand crashed against the ground, in the air, she gazed back to find Big Red slamming another claw against the ground. You're like one of those flies, before she could even think of calling Naruto's name, he appeared and grabbed her waist, something appeared from the corner of her eye, like a toppling building, a red tail swung at them. Rias closed her eyes at her death, it was all dark, but she heard the sounds, Naruto yelled, and there was light, she opened her eyes to see the Naruto encased in black and gold, and everywhere else was dressed in the same light. There was another yell, from the dragon itself as she heard the thunder cracks of falling rocks, she stared after it, it picked itself up, boulders and earth tumbling from its back. She couldn't find words even if she wanted to speak. I knew it. There was something, but I don't know you, are you new? It chuckled. There was another, disembodied, rough and loud, damn, felt forever since I've done anything, and look, a flying lizard. That voice, where did it come from? She saw it immediately, in front of her, there was the strange sight of a fox creature she was inside in, had she been eaten alive? Was Naruto in the same situation? Snap out of it, Naruto said, it brought her what out of her thoughts, and she stared into his blue eyes, she felt the solid ground beneath her feet, despite seeing the earth further below. He focused on the red dragon, it spoke, a lizard? That's something coming from a baby fox. You. A dark blue ball appeared, and shot at the dragon as quickly as it appeared, it struck the dragon, and the blast was tremendous. What the Karama? You don't need to make Tia gasp. Her head whipped forward, her teeth bit down on her tongue, and for a moment, she was weightless, she covered her mouth that tasted a blood, ow, emtong, she mumbled. There was another slam, the earth being ripped apart as they cracked, a moment later, Naruto brought her to her feet, he shook his head and cleared his throat. That felt like a meteor, the voice that belonged to Kurama growled. Didn't feel too good inside either, Naruto replied, he peeked at her. I am bleeding, she managed to say, you're fine. He looked forward and followed his gaze, she saw the disheveled earth and destroyed pillars along the path they had been thrown, they had bounced hundreds of feet away from where the red dragon stood. Woo! You should stop staring puny fox, that was just a test shot. It's hard not to when you're so ugly, Karama shouted. Damn it Karama! This time, Rhea saw it coming, despite the distance, despite its size, it was impossibly fast, any rock in its way was obliterated. Just as it reached them, the fox's fists were brought together to hammer down the dragon on the head, it slammed against the ground, unrelenting, Karama grasped its horns with both hands and slung it away. Fat ass lizard. Karama roared, she saw it crash in the distance, boulders blasting off into the sky. This was unbelievable, what was this fight? Naruto snapped his fingers in front of her face, hey, focus okay. There was him alone, that was all that mattered, he gave an uneasy smile, just, a pause, remember what I said with that fallen angel. What did he say? It wasn't hard to remember, it stuck with her. The only one allowed to hurt Rias Gremory would be me. It had always stuck with her, but she didn't know why, not until now, her voice trembled, I I remember. Good, now, get ready to teleport when I say so, I can't fight this thing with you around, now let's stick to the plan, Karama, Naruto said, his hands were brought together, three perfect spitting images appeared alongside him. There's four of you, she didn't understand that, they said nothing, 
and disappeared as they traveled down below toward the fox's hand, Naruto paid no attention to her. Kurama scoffed. Whatever, what plan? How could they have done it so quickly, and so wordlessly? The dragon returned, soaring overhead, each heave of its wings brought dust and debris flying into the air, obscuring sight around them. Fat? You're just a skinny little land roamer, it laughed. I hope you don't mind we keep this short, oh, really? I hope that little devil is feeing, another chuckle, Rias didn't quite understand why it said that way. Besides, who needs wings to fly? Kurama shouted, they rose higher, standing on its hind legs with a hand that rose above its head, she saw a massive yellow sphere form to life, Kurama threw it at the dragon. Rias thought it was a true shot, but the dragon twirled around the orb, it exploded harmlessly behind it, it was so large, like sun had born, if it had hit, would it be enough? Ha! You missed, idiot! It mocked, sure, both Naruto and Kurama were undeterred. Rias didn't see it until it was underway, three other giant glowing foxes appeared underneath the dragon. Nine tails, Rias muttered, seeing the tails behind by what appeared to be a fox, she hadn't noticed that. They grabbed onto its limbs and wings and they brought him down further away, curses being thrown out along with the sounds of the land being changed. Another one, Naruto said, Rias saw a hand in front, the same power as before appeared in the palm of the fox. The light disappeared then, Naruto was no longer there, she gave a yelp as her footing also vanished, before she could manage to summon her wings, a large golden hand grasped her. She was returned to where Naruto stood, somewhere inside the chest of the nine-tailed fox, she heard an explosion off in the distance. Sorry, he said, I forgot you can't even come with me. Um, she was breathless, is it over? About that, she heard the dragon yell, that actually tickled. He's pretty crazy, Naruto finished, of course. The dragon not being hurt by the technique was appalling. There's one more thing, Kurama muttered, a sigh, go ahead. Kurama swiped its hand, most of the dust shot away and there was a clear view off in the great distance, the dragon was the horizon itself, the other clones had disappeared. Kurama shouted back, that was nothing more than a little shock. What about you? You might as well be a lizard if you can only fight with claws and tail. Ha! Huh. Big Red snorted, that's the funniest thing I heard all week. If you want the might of me, then it'll show you. Its maw opened, a deep blood sphere formed in its mouth, a cultivation of power. Rias felt it hard to breath, like it made the air thick and heavy. She was shaking now and felt her heart might burst. It was only a moment, but it seemed not to end. Shit, this is something else, he said. Rias, be ready. He loosened bandages on his hand and held his hand out. Kurama dug its tails into the ground, nine impaling straight down. Rias wrapped her arms around Naruto she would never let go. Boom. The dragon yelled, the red energy shot toward them, she couldn't help but think of all the things she hadn't been able to say. Even if she knew it would never reach them, what she didn't expect, was the explosion, the blinding red light, the roaring of the dragon, then the terrible ringing in her ears and nothing else, she dug her face into him, it reminded her that still lived, it smelled like him. The light disappeared, and she opened her eyes to see Kurama had left too, they fell to ground, she was caught and was put down on her feet, she could barely see, all was dust. Rias remembered what needed to be done, the teleportation appeared underneath them, and she thought of a place that felt safe. Wow, Naruto said, he sounded far away, he walked forward, his shoulders tensed before they slumped, he turned to her, so, uh, can we never share what happened with your brother? That was the furthest thing from her mind, Rias looked at him, deep blue eyes, once with hate, but now with something else. Rias didn't want to be careful, she didn't want to be the slow one anymore, she walked to him, his head tilting in a silent question. She found her voice, I love you, she said, and kissed him. She could feel his lips, and the taste of them, she pressed deeper. Her shaking hands had wrapped around his neck, it was over too soon, while expected, there was a small lingering hope that he that he wouldn't stop. What the, were his first words, he practically threw himself away, his brow furrowed, and his features bunched up like he saw tasted the most terrible thing. I love you, she repeated, her heart skipped a beat. Naruto stared long and hard, like she was crazy, are you crazy? I don't get it. Her hands were shaking feverishly, she hadn't realized how telling his eyes were, what's hard to understand. Did you even hear yourself? Do you realize how how little that makes sense? She laughed, you're very cute when you're flustered, did you know that? He flinched, look, I don't get it. I haven't given any reason for you to even like me, damn it Rias, what is the matter with you? 
She stepped closer, and he stepped back, I don't think there's anything wrong with me, she replied, she took a shaky breath, she placed a hand over her heart, feeling the utter wild drum within, it hadn't calmed, she felt like she might faint. Despite it all, she was happy, are you sure? I mean, like, you're not confused or anything like that. What? No, of course not. She trembled, she confessed. Why did she say that? This is almost a surprise to me too, but I know that I love you. You said that three times, I mean, why? His words sharp and icy, it was to be expected, but it didn't hurt any less, she didn't know whether her heart was leaping with joy, fear, or pain. She was making it worse, all that progress undone with three words. I I don't know, maybe it's how you always called me by my name, that you never once thought I was no one other than Rius Gremory, that you helped me, when you didn't have to. I helped you, because I am forced to be around you, Riser. She faltered, how can you know that? You don't, do you? You would have been fine, all you had to do was not step in, he might have been a bully, but he couldn't be that cruel, she felt tears that was blinked away. T tell me if you feel even the slightest regret that you didn't step in, then I'll believe you. Tell me that would still step in, and do everything the same again. His lips pressed together, and he was silent, you see, she replied, you're not that cruel, I hear what they say about you, that you're funny, that you're caring, I notice that everyone here loves you, so much so that they gather round you and ask for your autograph and all you do is smile and talk to them without any complaint, it was hard to speak, all I want, is for you to treat me the same way you treat all your friends. She tried to stop the tears, but they kept coming, she thought he would leave, or that he would yell and say more hurtful things, instead, he spoke quietly, his words strained and quick with little thought. What do you want me to say? That I love you and that everything will be okay until the day it isn't. I don't know okay, she cried, everything that I want to hear doesn't make any sense coming from you. She really tried to stop crying, she still didn't quite know the reason why it continued, Rias didn't stop looking at him. Rias, he said softly, his shoulders were slack, and he looked away from her, why are you such a big baby? Somehow, she laughed, frankly, she felt as everything would spill, another push and she would burst. You know, he murmured, his hands cracking aside the curtains, it was dark outside, but the illumination of the village was present, in a strange way, I am a little jealous of you. That's weird, he cracked a smile, she felt heavy. You feel so strongly about stupid things, she sniffed, that's not stupid, me loving you. He was quiet for a long while, she halted her tears, he wasn't yelling, nor was he running, he was still around, and he didn't seem mad. You should get some sleep, I don't think today is something you're used to. She didn't notice when it had gotten so quiet, however, he was right, she was shaken, and exhausted, she didn't think she could ever feel so overwhelmed, all she heard was the whine in her ears and her beating heart. You're not going anywhere, are you? She whispered, any louder, and it would shatter this glass, she found his door, the wood creaking when she opened, she didn't expect him to say anything. No, he said, and Rias, there's not a single part of me that regrets what I did. The door clicked behind her, and she fell to his bed, she cried with relief, and didn't notice when she fell asleep. The people walked by him, faces changing into a blurring clutter, they waved and greeted, and he muttered back his hellos to carry on. I love you his arms crossed, he flexed his fingers, they felt stiff and shaken, he forced his arms to his side, but it felt too idle. Oh, she said, her dainty hand motioned to the left, down the path was a street littered with vendors, the crowd shopped and filled it with conversation, can we check it out? He shrugged, but that wasn't a clear answer, um, sure. Rias smiled, and turned down the street, she weaved in and out from the crowd, she wasn't hard to see, her height and hair easy to spot. He wondered what her thoughts were centered on, the nervous wreck that she was last night all but disappeared. She stopped with her back faced him, then Rias laughed, it was light and musical, her hair whipped when she suddenly pushed something into his face. They actually make figures of you, she laughed again. Oh God, he frowned, she started gushing, her hands trailing the figurine, it's so cute, look at your little feet. It looks nothing like me, and stop playing with it, it's weird, what was going on? Someone else interrupted, the owner, oh my gosh, I am so embarrassed, I'll stop selling them until I get better, I promise, her hands swiftly brought down any objects with likeness to him. Naruto burned red, don't mind him, Rias said, he's just embarrassed, she brought up the figure again, it looks like him just not as cute as the real one. Why are you like this, Naruto said, he was ignored. The woman spoke, oh oh, is it okay? He swiped the figurine from Rias, gimme that, on closer inspection, 
he could see the similarities in the little doll, it's good. He stared at Rias, and she stared back, let's buy it. What? And no way, I love you Rias pouted, he imagined a little stamp of her feet, I've given you an allowance, and. Alright, I get it, geez, he pulled out his money and paid to a relieved a thankful vendor, they walked the street again, the vendors weren't as crowded as they went down deeper, he spied a glance at the girl, ah, uh, can you at least not have it out? I wanted to show it to the others, she said, she did as he asked. He wondered what she was thinking now, what's with you? I thought you'd be, I don't know, weirded out from last night. Do you know how hard it is to confess to someone? She looked to the sky, green into blue, Naruto couldn't say he knew, so he stayed silent, it's one of the harder things I've done. I was no help either, he mumbled, again, he was conscious of his crossed arms, though, nothing felt natural, everything felt wrong. What about you, or are you too manly for love? He wasn't going to answer, it was a lose-lose question, so, he might as well just lose by not answering at all. I love you Rias ran ahead again, of course, this involved him yet again, she leaned forward his gaze went down at painting of him, her lips glistened in the light, those lips were on his just the other night. How soft they were. His mind went to last night, instead of avoiding it, it would help, it had too. Of course, her confession was fresh on his mind, he loved ramen, he loved his friends, village, teachers, Ichiraku, dad, mom, so many countless things that he could list. This was, different, beyond what he thought, how his mother loved his father, it was different in how he loved those other things, her kiss made it obvious. I love you that answered solution he came up with, it didn't help. They were somewhere else now, he hadn't noticed, gone was the stands and market, changed into streets that led into nearby stores. You look lost, Rias said, I am thinking of my mission, he lied, he didn't bother looking at her. That fox that appeared, you called it Karama, right? Yeah, are you, she paused, him? He laughed, somehow it was funny, no, we're different, he lives inside me. Oh, it's just, Ophis could turn into a human form, to think that years ago he would have vehemently protested the suggestion, Karama could think on his own, and he doesn't like other people much. Oh, what does he think of me? He laughed, and she frowned, he doesn't think you're much different from us here, in his words like rats with wings. She puffed her cheeks, that isn't very nice, no it isn't, he's an ass, he thought, often. Naruto looked inside, Karama was snoring and drooling all over the place. I love you oh, Naruto-kun, I heard you were back. His mouth went dry, he knew that voice, though, at the same time, it was music to his ears, since had returned, nearly all sounds here felt that way, it was another person that was on his mind. Naruto turned to the voice, she looked different, but he couldn't describe it, Hanada Hayuga had gentle white eyes, often, he would think to himself as to how a girl like her got to be a kunoichi. Hanada, he murmured, all he could imagine, was the day of the destruction of the village, how she appeared from the edge of his vision, how she flew down with her hair flowing behind her. A gentle smile, I thought you'd be okay, you always come back. Soft spoken, he couldn't imagine her shouting either. Yeah, he said, Naruto was uncertain on what to do with his hands, so much so that he forgot to speak, it wasn't just Rias' confession on his mind. Oh, hello, Rias said, she stepped in front of him. Hi, my name is Hanada Hayuga, Rias Gremory, it's nice to meet you. He was supposed to introduce them both, thankfully, it was enough for him to find words to say, Rias is from another place, from another dimension, so, there's that, her brother is a big shot, Naruto said, he avoided Hanada's gaze, as well as the other person. Instead, he looked elsewhere, oh, she blinked, how strange, but it's not surprising that you made friends. He shared a glance with Rias, um, sure, he replied. How do you know each other? Rias asked. We went to the academy together and we were in the same class, Hanada paused, oh, sorry, I forgot to add it's a shinobi academy, they talk to one another, they'd get along of course. I love you either he was the biggest idiot, or, he wasn't sure where he was going with this. It was strange, after all this time had been that stupid, of course, he took it the wrong way, if his life wasn't the way it was solitude and parentless he would have thought differently, it wasn't though. Hey, Hanada, he said, she hummed, her soft eyes flickered to him, it's nice to see you, but we gotta head back and see the Hokage, he paused, and with an afterthought, we should hang out earlier, if I get the time. Okay, an ID like that, a smile, tomorrow, at noon, Ichiraku. I can do that, she waved a goodbye and headed on her way. Naruto took the lead on the way back, if it made any sense, his chest quivered, it tightened, like it would cave. 
Is there something the matter? Rias asked, eyes with concern, but hidden within was fear and apprehension. Just, a breath, a little thing, oh, is there something I can do to help? The apprehension disappeared, replaced by eagerness and love? He looked away, and bit his lip, like I said, it's not much to worry about. It was silent between them, he appreciated it, because it felt like his head might explode, everything since yesterday, and even before that nod at the back of his head, drilling deeper and deeper with every passing moment. It was a good thing they weren't far from his apartment, through the gates and inside, up the stairs and in the door, the apartment felt strange, it didn't feel empty, right, Rias was behind him. I am going to take a nap, he said, oh, we're not going to see the Hokage? He pointed at the stack of papers on the coffee table, I pretty much stayed up all night fixing my report, Hokage isn't going anywhere. Okay, I'll just watch a bit of TV, he set aside his jacket on a loveseat before going into his room, it smelled different, and it didn't feel as much as his room anymore, some perfume lay on his desk, and Ria's clothes stuffed into a bag, even the bed smelled like the girl who confessed to him. As he lay in the light dimmed room of his home, his face dug partially buried in the pillow, the shadowy tendrils slowly prowled toward him. Hanada and Rias had confessed to him, he lifted his head and dropped it, over and over, he repeated. You look like an idiot, Karama said, you were drooling on the floor not too long ago. Except you're doing it intentionally, so, you're saying you're an idiot, wait, never mind, Karama laughed, Naruto was silent, and continued, just, thinking of yesterday. Karama hummed, I was wondering what got my partner distressed, I would have thought you'd be yelling at the girl like usual. How would you know that? Same way whenever I influenced you when you became a ninja. It made a lot of sense, our world and theirs are different, Naruto muttered, three different groups, and now we're in it too. He was in an odd place amongst them, he wasn't with the devils, but he was one himself. Don't change the subject, this is about the girl, what about her? She's too much, and it isn't about her, sort of. It's about being with a girl, he muttered, it was a strange thought, I don't know, just, I would never ask for my friends to turn in devil. I don't think they would willingly choose it, they have their own friends, their own family, being a devil, you're different, I just, I don't know, I can't fall in love with a girl here. Karama hummed, well, there's always those others, I guess. If you really want that, then there's a girl in the room right next to yours, of course, he laughed. Shut up, never mind, he chose the wrong thing to talk to about this, he should see the Hokage. Rias had decided not to join him, and instead waited outside, if she was needed, there was no doubt that Kakashi would call for her. How did it go? Kakashi asked, he took the folder of the report and placed it alone on the oak desk. Naruto rubbed the nape of his neck, he still felt strange, lost on where to start, he had written most of everything in the report, but Kakashi wanted a little talk, I got to talk to several factions, I met the leader of the Chaos Brigade, I don't know much about them, I also met a person who's with the fallen angels but haven't met with the leaders, no luck with the angels. Impressive, Kakashi said, that will make it easier for us in the future, find out more on that group, anything else I should know? There's dragons, 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 and they're powerful, I got into a little scuffle with one you can thank Karama and he just ignored my massive Rasen shurikens. His eye narrowed, we can't afford to make enemies, as far as I know, that dragon is alone, I guess I am on friendly terms with the other dragon. The leader of the brigade, Naruto replied, besides, that dragon, was playful. I guess. Playful? Bored, I don't know, I was trying to protect Rias. Kakashi sighed, I suppose everything going perfectly was a fool's dream, well see how it plays out, Kakashi turned around to face the window, a hand swept through his hair, you'll continue with coming and going with our guest, but there's another mission for you. This about the five cage meeting. A nod, we decided on a course of action, I'll spare you the details, and of their opinions of how you handled the situation, your duties of being a liaison will be given to another. Naruto had expected that, someone like Shikamaru would be a good fit. Kakashi continued, the other cage wanted to be more involved, your new duty to be a retainer, that someone, will be the Mizukage herself. What? He blurted out, really? You won't be the only one of course, retainers from the other villages will be used, your focus will be mainly to attend to our guest, the other cage have also supplied us their sealing masters to help us with your problem. Wow, they're doing that. Kakashi nodded, have the Satans know well have one of our own leaders meeting them for next week, after that, you're free to do what you want, but I would ask you to attend the Mizukage's arrival in several days, you're free to go, Naruto. The fifth said she wanted to meet with you at the hospital, 
be sure to see her tomorrow at the latest. He hesitated before he left, but he had thought of another person, tomorrow would be the day. How have you been doing? She asked, her soft voice filtered through the busy street. There was that pull to say he was fine, and he was feeling good, he didn't want to cause her to worry but something else sputtered out of his mouth, I don't know, I feel like I am out of my element, her brow bunched together, a look in those pale eyes, what? It's true. Is there any way I can help? Hanada asked, there was a reassuring smile, and it felt like it could come true. He could bring it up, he should, but, he was afraid of the answer, he was afraid of the brainless thing he would do, a love life was an entire different monster than facing enemies on the battlefield. I don't know, was his lame reply, he wanted to talk, but he didn't, of course, he couldn't talk with her with Rhea seated close behind on another table, I don't think it could never be. Hum, she looked, confused, sorry, I didn't catch that. It's nothing, he looked back to the other table behind him, Rias caught his eye, instead of looking away, she locked his gaze, Naruto focused in front, Ayame was happily serving another costumer. Naruto missed this place, Hanada had gone back to her own bowl of ramen, he had hung out with her several times before he disappeared, Naruto had to wonder how much higher that number would be if he never left. They went back to small talk, until she finished her bowl. I have to go, Hanada said, my father wanted to see me, should we do this again? Yes, he said automatically, whenever I get the time. Of course, the duty to our village comes first, if you see any one of our friends, can you tell them I am around? He asked, she nodded happily, and he watched her leave again. He ordered another bowl to try and relax, comfort food it was, it calmed him down some. Rias talked to someone behind him, the boy was loud, and he could barely hear Rias. Naruto? Yeah? He swiveled around on the chair, the other boy caught his eye and froze. I am finished, are we going soon? She said, sure, Naruto replied. The boy stammered off an apology and ran off. Naruto paid for their meals and off he went with Rias in tow. Where are we going now? To see the other Hokage, she nodded, and went silent, it was honestly started to aggravate him at how often she was doing that now. You're a lot quieter, he said, sometimes away, keeping space. A smile, I am, silence, he frowned, are you going to explain it? I am a foreigner here, and a representative of my home, your friends will never be themselves if I am around, you miss them, I want you to feel like your home. There was not much else to say, thank you, he murmured. He couldn't describe the smile on her face other than delighted and radiant, that's the second time, but this time it's not about food, she laughed. He felt a pull at his lips, it lasted a moment, she asked questions as they traveled to the hospital, he didn't mind answering them, even if they were numerous. Once they reached their destination, he went directly to the front desk, which he was then directed to the clinical ward and where exactly she might be. I'll be back, Rias said, he could imagine the smile on her face, but he didn't look back. He knocked on one of the doors, and he could hear the granny words to wait, after several long minutes, a sickly woman emerged from within, he was disregarded as she went on her way. Ah, there you are, I was wondering when you'd show up, Tsunade said. He noticed her eyes went behind him, but focused on him once the door closed. Granny, he said, he saw the immediate changes from his last encounter, she seemed more relaxed. She smiled, well, it's nice to see you too brat, she reached out and scuffed his hair, you got a little bit taller since I last saw you, not counting the last time. At least you're sober, for now, another knowing grin. How couldn't believe he hadn't noticed the change, perhaps he had been far from home for too long. Too happy to notice details. So, Tsunade continued, how has it been with that girl? He sighed, she confessed to me, a spray of whatever liquid she consumed flew out of her mouth, he could smell the alcohol. Are you drinking? Coffee, but never mind that. Tsunade laughed, I guess some of my worries were for nothing then, tell me, are you interested in her? W what? How can you even say that? He said, well, you're a young man, and she's a blooming young woman, don't think I've noticed. Tsunade took another sip from her coffee and scrubbed the counter she had spilled with a rag. Do, he paused, do other girls actually do that? He couldn't believe he heard the obvious disappoint in her sigh, you're an idiot. That's not helping, listen kid, why did you bring this up? Because, god damn it, I hated her since day one, it makes no sense. Expected, since, you know, whatever happened to you, maybe she sees something in you, you did say you were forced to stay close together since you turned, Suck it up for now, she dug into her pocket and brought out one of the chess pieces that belonged to Rias, at least, until you're free. 
He stared long and hard at it, he forgot about his original intentions, what did you find out? As much as we could, it has a similar signature as inside you, we can't replicate it, as it might be unique to the devils, some of the information you got for us helped, it's meant to change someone, similar in practice to how you achieve your sage mode, though, we don't know whether it's permanent, or if it will disappear once it's removed. Most of the words went into the air once he heard permanent, he swallowed thickly, permanent? Like I said, we don't know, it would make sense if it's a temporary vessel, and once it finds a proper host it stays there. Naruto moved toward the blinds and looked out of them, Rias sat in the waiting room, talking with a child and mother. Like sage mode, he said, she acknowledged him, he recalled his master, the old toad Fukasaku, the training Naruto had undergone to utilize natural energy had been strenuous, even now, as he lay still and relaxed, he felt the pull, its feel, his hands wrapped around the windowsill, a little pressure and he could break the wall, it also like training with Karama's chakra. Then he released it and the telltale sign of exhaustion hit him, however, he couldn't help but think that perhaps it worked like that. He found himself inside the humid, flood cage that housed his partner, Karama was awake, paying attention to the outside world, he knew the fox had been listening. Karama, he caught his breath, what do you think? He explained his thoughts. It's worth a shot, but, but what? He asked, I don't think it's that simple, maybe it's like me, I am a part of you, I can call you if I am forced out of you, it might have the same result. He thought for several moments, I am going to try forcing it out, I am tired of waiting, it's better than doing nothing. What if something goes wrong? He frowned, Rias, shall help me. Karama chuckled, using her now? She made a promise, he reasoned, I don't think she's doing anything. Naruto, Tsunade said, he was brought back to reality, the granny took leisurely, but frequent sips out of her spiked mug, there was a piece of paper that she held. Since I think before you go off on whatever you're thinking of doing, I got several things to say, one, I am setting up an appointment with you on Tuesday at 9am, second, get more copies of these pieces, third, don't break her heart so much that Shell do something stupid. He thought it was joke judging by her eyes it wasn't. Okay, was his lame reply, I am not sure how genuine it is, she said softly, Tsunade turned toward the window that displayed the village, her words were quiet and hollow, love is something else, once you feel it, you can barely put it into words, you feel complete, their faults are gone, and days are much too short. He swallowed thickly, he didn't dare say a word, don't let it build, she said. I am gonna try. Naruto could tell she wanted to be left alone, he left quietly, closing the door behind him, his back leaned against the door, it was strange how his hands shook. He knew how Tsunade had loved a person once upon a time, it had ended in blood, Khaled in a war that also took her brother, Naruto never wanted to feel the loss she experienced. It was strange, because he couldn't help but yearn for Tsunade once felt, what his parents had for one another. It was the strangest thing, your explanations are boring, and awful. No, they aren't, she sighed, just follow my instructions and you should be able to get it down in no time, she didn't know how often she had to explain it in detail, in the end, all he would say is that it didn't make sense. Your teaching skulls could use some work, he replied, he stood from their seating positions and stretched, Naruto wept his brow, sweat clung to his hand and he wiped it off with a cloth, it wasn't too hot, relatively cool even. This won't work, she frowned, you're not giving up, are you? He rolled his eyes, no, we're going to one of the training grounds. Why? She stood with him, inside seemed to be work fine, perhaps he wanted some air. We need a bigger space, Rhea suppressed a sigh, his apartment was rather homey, it felt nice to be here, he had replaced whatever plants that had wilted away in his absence, there were framed pictures and odd trinkets, there were also quite the number of weapons that laid around the apartment. After putting on their shoes, she followed him out into the street, sometimes, she would see kids jumping along the rooftops without a care in the world. No one knew her, the name Gremory meant nothing, and no one recognized her or praised her for her beauty. She felt her heart beat a little faster when she thought about him, how gallant he was. That worry he had carried, was that for her alone? You know, you actually failed with your promise, it was a cheap shot she knew but she needed confirmation. Oh yeah, how? That dragon hurt me, it made me bleed. He snorted, if you count biting your own tongue, sure. That's only because we were hit by it, that counts. Okay, you got me, I am a failure, he shrugged, my first and last promise. She stopped and puffed her cheeks, never mind, it doesn't count. Oh goody, she had to catch up to him, you're a real knight, aren't you? You even have the golden shining armor. 
She didn't see his reaction. His quickened gait had hidden his features, perhaps she saw a blush, but it likely her imagination. I could have been a real dragon slayer then huh? Would you have been able to beat it? He frowned. Why does it matter? You brought it up. Ah. Uh, I am tired of talking about fighting, it's only been causing problems for me, haven't you noticed? I fight this guy. Then this guy starts another, on and on and on and over again. She blinked. Oh. Uncertain on how to continue the conversation, you don't like fighting. His shoulders tensed, and his jaw set, he shrugged, it's just other things, it was obvious to Rias that he no longer wanted to talk about it. She could contemplate about it, the subject bothered him, a series of events that stemmed from one fight. Do you blame me? She asked, it started with me, didn't it? He tightened his lips, I am a bigger problem, as they made their way through the village, he begun to relax, as most he can around her, but it was different. Are you upset with me? She wondered if he was ever tired of talking to her, he used to sigh, or just outright ignore her. No, but he looked distracted, on their way, he stopped by what appeared to be a school, there was a crowd of kids that shouted at one another, he leaned against the chain link fence and stared wistfully. See that? He pointed, that's the academy where I became a shinobi, or rather, around the same place, still has the name and everything, it's newer. So, it was rebuilt. A nod, there was a chorus of children that noticed them, each of them called for something different, a new technique, or another demonstration, he couldn't, he had said, they continued, despite their disappointment, he elevated their mood when he promised to come back in a week or two. She was led through the village, the building grew lower and less frequent, then to trailed paths as they left the walls and finally, turning into trees and grass. The surroundings looked a little scuffed, whether it was odd fallen leaves or broken branches in the trees, the only other thing of note were small targets pinned to trees. This one looks empty, he said, there were distant sounds, and she felt the ground rumble, a training ground? He stretched and pressed his fingers together, she flinched at the explosions of smoke, in field, and in the forest, it was filled, hundreds of him, copies of Naruto, she didn't expect so much. Oh, she said, she watched as many of them decided to either sit or stand, each with looks of concentration. It'll be faster this way, how does that work? They each learn an experience, you know, practice makes perfect. She could stare at wherever she liked, and it wouldn't be suspicious, he didn't join them, instead he sat against a tree. It's too different for me. What is? This energy you're trying to teach me to control. Maybe you're a bad teacher, who knows, except he had a smile, he was teasing, I knew my own powers, and how to control them, this one is different, I have to think of something. I see, she replied, after a few minutes, she noticed several of them popping into smoke, Naruto shifted his weight, and she noticed a grimace, more clones disappeared in his shoulders and chest began to noticeably rise and fall with each breath, when too many dispersed he would take a breath and summon more. Whatever was happening, it was affecting him, then she remembered him collapsing at the party when he tried to call upon it. She wanted to say to not push himself too hard, but she remembered those words, I'd die for anyone here, he started to tremble, she needed to help him, calling attention to it wouldn't do a thing. How long have you been doing this? Being a ninja? Rias said, it took him a long while to respond. Let's see. I went to the academy when I was six, thirteen years, six years of being a ninja, that's a lot time to avoid dying. So young, she thought, that was normal. He nodded. This place was different, training ninjas at such a young age. Rias remembered going to a zoo at that age, it was no wonder he was so good at fighting. How quick he could build his energy, she was getting off topic, but she couldn't help it, you don't seem very ninja-like. I'd imagine black clothes and a mask, or even armor. He chuckled, can't exactly dress like that during the day, wed stick out, we're supposed to dress to our surroundings. Why? So, we can blend in, duh. Oh, she was running out of things to talk about, however, he looked to be in higher spirits, but it was a fleeting moment, tell me about your friend, Sasuke, was it? Yeah, he's my best friend, he muttered, he almost callid me several times, we took others' arms off and almost died. Rias went doe-eyed. How horrible. Um, there was other leaders, right? Do you know any of them? He smiled. Gara, he's my age, he's a good friend, being the case cage means he's busy though, we tried to cal each other a couple times. Did friends try to cal each other? Naruto didn't look so well, and he was making it extremely difficult, he tried to look normal, his eyes were tightly shut with knuckles white. Yet, she couldn't help but think on how he forgave them for trying to cal him. How long have you been trying to be Hokage? That. He took a breath and looked out to the sky above, something seemed to wash over him, honestly, I don't even know, 
ever since I could remember I always wanted to be Hokage. Then she realized why he hadn't forgiven her yet, he let out a little laugh, a faint smile, it's kind of weird thinking about it now, my reasons why have changed over the years, I have to be better, I have to see the bigger picture, so that kids don't have go on without their parents. Naruto gained a quiet resolve, and he didn't seem quite as bothered, Rias could only think on his dreams, and what he would suffer through to achieve them. He stumbled back, closer to safety, he should have expected it, especially when he practiced earlier. He heard a question, and perhaps it had been asked a few times, he hummed, a beckoning for a repeat of the question. Are you okay? It'll pass, he replied, a heavy weight of his heart swinging, the pressure of his chest, like it would cave in, all normal feelings whenever this happened, instead, he focused on getting near her. If you're sure, she said hesitantly, a terrible shiver flowed through him, one of the last symptoms before he got better, he sat down on the nearest thing appropriate, it took a long time for him to respond. I am, he was barely a couple of blocks away, Naruto looked at Rias down the street, seated by one of his clones, it was significantly worse whenever he wandered too far, instead of trying to access it. We can't go further than this, I suppose, he dipped into an empty alley. Hanada looked to him with her wide eyes, and he could barely face her, what did you want to talk about? He wasn't sure where to start, since becoming a devil, I had to come to grips with things, my, no, perhaps this was the wrong place to start, yet, whenever he thought of another, it didn't seem right either, he should have thought of this before he wanted to talk to her, he was sidestepping the issue. I wanted to talk about when, Nagato attacked the village, what you said to me. Her eyes widened, darting away, oh, what exactly about? I am in a really complicated spot. I mean, I am gonna live for so long, and what you saw earlier is what happens to us when we turn into a devil, he sighed, it didn't seem so far-fetched, even Karama thought so, it's not a life to live, I might not even become Hokage. He looked out to the street of the passing haze of legs, despite this, he heard nothing, muted by his heart in his ears, she had family, he didn't, it might not even have worked between them, it was too strange to think about. I understand, Hanada said, perhaps if this haven't happened. And Anbu appeared then, I hope I am not interrupting, but this is an important matter. No, Hanada replied, we were just finishing up, yeah, he agreed. She turned to him, you're my friend, and you'll always be my friend, that won't change. Kakashi leaned back into his chair, the Mizukage stood off to the side, already having dismissed her retinue, their stay here would be provided for, and they would have to wait here, he could use that some time off, a brief thought of regret of taking up this position surfaced, he could be at home reading instead of here. Back to important matters, such as their dealings with another realm, one day, and the return of Naruto Uzumaki created such complications. Mei Terumi stared at the portraits of the Hokage, she ran a hand down her long auburn hair, I think this might do some good, if you want to look at it from another perspective. How so? The discovery of another realm, with unknown military might, would unite our countries again as it did against the Akatsuki, perhaps the smaller countries would be inclined to join our forces. Kakashi signed off on a report and set it aside, he briefly pitied her that she might have a backlog of work when she returned, though her thoughts had merit, going by that, then we can't rule out that these devils might consider a similar approach. True, though judging on Naruto's report, their armistice is tenuous. From his perspective, he replied, she nodded, that's still only one faction, and leaves us with two. It was already a discussion that they had at the summit, the rakage had called for a militaristic showing of their prowess, it involved a more violent method that the other cage only agreed to a certain degree, in the end, they had agreed on several plans. Who knows, Naruto had some contact with their fallen angels, their dimension seemed to possess strength similar to the power of tailed beasts, here's the new report, he pressed it forward and she took it from the desk. She looked through it before Naruto arrived alone, no doubt Rias Gremory was nearby. Oh hey, it's the Mizukage. Why, it's the hero, and it's just Mei, okay. She smiled, it's been quite some time. Sure has. Kakashi cleared his throat, calling for their attention should any unnecessary talk should appear, Naruto, I called you here so that the Mizukage can meet our guest. I've also arrived with our best seal masters, the fifth said, so that they can lend a hand, the other cage are doing the same. His eyes glowed, wow. Really? Thanks a lot, I could really use some good news. She laughed, my my, such enthusiasm. Can't say I am surprised if I were in your situation, though, it might solve a few problems of my own, she sighed. Silence. Well, Kakashi said, Naruto, the fifth scheduled an appointment at noon tomorrow. Don't miss it. You also three days of free time before everything gets busy. Use it wisely. 
How does one become a cage of their village? She asked, while her eyes were settled on the television, her mind was elsewhere, her brief meeting with Mei Terumi was on her mind, full of confidence and what being a leader entailed. Naruto sat on the love seat, his legs dangling off the edge, they had to be respected by the village, but I guess they're usually powerful too. Naruto easily fit that description, she glanced at him, but he was gazing out the window, he looked distracted all day, she wanted to ask, but her thoughts were also clouded too. I had a better look at the village, and it reminded me of Japan. There was a channel that paid she half attention to, it appeared to be Naruto on the television, singing with a woman, the type of music being played was classical in style, however, the real one was here in the room. He looked up, and she added to her comment, not modern Japan, but older. His eyes grew distant, yeah, I was always reminded of home whenever I saw pictures of those kind of places. They kept the architecture, because it's still culturally significant, but they did modernize it. Wow, he replied, which meant he wasn't really paying attention. He must have been woefully homesick, Rhea still remembered the easy grins and lightness when he first returned, he didn't seem so interested in the strange similarities between Japan and his home, Rhea thought about her savior, it was true then, all those times when he said so. What's the matter? He asked, she flinched from the sudden noise, but also by the question, he never asked what was bothering her, and she didn't quite know what to say, he waited, and she decided to go for it. I was just thinking about you really did mean what you said, those times you helped. He rolled his eyes, well, obviously, you did it for your dreams. He shrugged, and well, I really don't like it when people try to take the freedom from others, why are you bothered by that? I just thought you would have done it for me, or to improve our relationship. I disappointed you, what else is new? She couldn't help but laugh. Then he smiled, this helped, it truly did, what are you doing, or trying to do? There had been a document on his lap the entire time, but he glanced at it a couple of times, he he yawned, I am reading my mission dossier. Oh, that's so cool, she gushed, her thoughts flashed between pictures and gadgets. Naruto had a curious stare, like he could tell what she was thinking, yeah, that's what I thought when I first started, he showcased several pages, and there was only text. It's no use, he closed the folder and threw it across the room atop a desk, I am bored wondering what to do. You can hang out with your friends, I don't mind if you leave me here, what you have on the TV is already interesting enough. No, that won't work, you see, whenever I use a lot of chakra I won't be able to go that far, it's kind of a toss up to when it goes back to normal, I haven't figured it out yet. She bit her lip, and quietly said her words, perhaps I can come with you and maybe hang back? His gaze went far away, you know. I found some interesting things back in that dimension, like all these English sayings. What does it have to do with this? You said so yourself, my friends aren't normal around you. She frowned, she couldn't deny it, especially after what they found out who she was and why she was in this dimension. It's like you're the broken spare tire in the trunk, then he laughed. Stop teasing me, she whined, you can invite them here, and I can hide away in your room. He stopped laughing, his arms crossed, and he stared at her, he rubbed his neck, it will get busy soon, and I don't know when it will calm down, sounds like a good idea, come on, we gotta get stuff. Why are you hiding in there? I thought you looked pretty miserable, he rolled his eyes, stop doing everything you can to please me, I don't need it. If she did what she pleased, then it would be kissing him, he would be mad about it, he grabbed a hold of her wrist and pulled her out of the room, is Hayuga here? Hanada said she was busy tonight, Naruto said, he let go too soon and directed her toward another woman, a blonde, that sat on one of the love seats, this is Eno. It's a ple she was nudged, and she had to catch her balance. Come on, just act normal, he paused, on second thought, not so normal. It was the woman, Eno, that interrupted, and here I thought you would turn more into gentlemen, he glared at her, go on, I got it from here, there's only boys here right now anyway. Where's forehead said she will be stopping by, late night at the hospital, Eno said, he gave a salute and wondered to other his friend, there were only three others here so far, Kiba Inazuka, just without his dog, she turned to Rias, so, I am Ino, seems like you both know each other pretty well, I am not surprised. She smiled, but it didn't feel right, I suppose so. Oh, look here comes Shikamaru, she glanced to the door, a tall man walked in with dark hair and a ponytail, Shikamaru returned a little wave, alright, what did you do now, Naruto? Those are the first words you say to me. Shikamaru sighed, right, Everyone who actually knows you wondered where you got off to, it was just a matter of time of when you got back, I just have a feeling that's all. Your slacker senses? 
she couldn't really catch much more than that after they wandered off into the kitchen. All of you have a lot of faith in him, she said, Eno grinned, he's just like that, I guess, but you wanna know something else? He was kind of a dork back when we were younger. Her eyes widened, really? What do you mean? She giggled, it's hard to imagine, but he was dead last in our class, he was a big jokester, claiming he was going to be Hokage, pulling pranks, once, he even painted on the monument. Wow. Rias wanted her to continue, she listened with rapt attention. Most of us thought he was good for nothing, she sighed, and went silent for a few moments, no one gave him the time of day, but now every girl wants him, it's so weird to see. Really? That was strange to hear, Naruto was handsome. Anyways, what about you? Ino asked, me? Yeah, I mean, you're someone important right? Um, the daughter of a great house Gremory, she felt embarrassed to explain to someone who didn't know and wasn't a human from Earth, I guess, the sister of one of our leaders. Thankfully, she wasn't mocking, a house? Is that like a clan? I am the head of the Yamanaka clan. I suppose they mean the same thing, she replied, since my brother is one of the Satans, I will inherit House Gremory. A slight smile, Eno turned to the window, a faraway look, the others were laughing in the kitchen, Rias felt uncertain, but Eno smiled widely again, clans aren't so busy anymore, apparently it used to like that, I mostly do ceremonial stuff, the Hokage handles everything else. Someone came barging through the door, oh god. I am so damn tired, why did I wear heels, how can anyone wear heels? A pink-haired woman, wearing a doctor's coat waltzed in like she owned the place, she kicked off her heels, strewn her coat on the couch, and stretched. Sakura-chan! Naruto exclaimed, he came from the kitchen, Rias was gobsmacked, this was the first time had ever used such a thing. She grinned, well, you're looking, pretty much the same, brought Sai too, um, he's coming up the stairs, he must have gotten you right away huh, we barely even talked since the last time we saw him. Yeah, I don't think he barely said more than a sentence to me. More than I got, she frowned, there was a strange silence before Eno decided to break it. Forehead. I didn't think you'd come from how lame you were, Eno reached down into a paper bag and grabbed a wine bottle, Naruto hadn't bought any when they went to the store, but she wasn't certain. Shut up. She smiled, I could use it, this is our third time? I could get used to it. Drinks? Naruto said, Sakura rolled her eyes, relax, it's just a glass, her green eyes found Rias, hello, I am Sakura. I heard Naruto here came with a guest. Yes, my name is Rias Gremory, she smiled, well, if I know Naruto, he probably has a whole other batch of friends now. They shared a look, um, he's pretty well known, yes. There was a commotion at the door, Sakura pressed her lips together, that's a, uh, sigh coming in. Why, what did he do this time? Naruto asked, the door slammed open, and with it came a large doll, or so she thought, it was squeezed through the doorframe, before turning toward them. He waddled through the entrance, and his face popped through the mouth with a big smile, hello. It's nice to you again Naruto. They stared him, what the hell? Why are you wearing that costume? Naruto asked. This. Isn't it obvious? I've read that all the greatest parties are the ones where you have to wear costumes. This isn't a costume party, I guess that speaks for your party then. Naruto grunted, this isn't even a party, get out of that costume and stop reading those magazines, they barely help. But I am naked underneath, Ino guffawed, and Rias couldn't help but join, Naruto kicked Sai into the room, making him wear his own clothes. Well leave them be, for now, Sakura said, they sat around the coffee table, Ino brought out a several glasses in the wine bottle, she didn't ask, but they gave her it, her parents would occasionally give her some wine over dinner, so it wasn't a big deal. She decided to start with an easy question, how do you know Uzumaki-kun? They raised a brow, we went to the academy, and were placed on the same team, along with, Sakura bit her lip, you met him, he brought you both here. How did he look? Ino asked, well traveled, he wore a poncho, he didn't say much. Sakura sighed, that sounds like him, he barely said anything to me either, not a how have you been doing? He just did what I asked, she took a particularly large drink of her wine. Is he, special to you? Rias asked, she barely held in her sigh of relief. She laughed nervously, you got that impression? I haven't seen him in more than a year, he's not well liked around here. Perhaps she asked the wrong question judging by the silence, Uzumaki-kun and I met when he landed near me. Right. I almost forgot that you're from another dimension, Sakura replied, I've had my fair share of them, that's more than enough. 
It seemed to be normal here too, perhaps it was the glass, but she began to relax, especially when the topic turned to clothes and other mundane topics, Sakura worked a lot at the hospital, Ino helped at a flower shop when she wasn't working. They talked about many things, fashion, complaints, TV, they especially talked about some of the differences and similarities and fashion between their worlds. Then, the other group came over and chatted, she felt a little left out when they began to reminisce about memories, she didn't hold it against them. Hey! Remember when you told us you didn't write anything at all for the Chunin exam? How about that time when you tried to take a pay sai, we talked about this. My apologies, I've forgotten, they watched a movie, some comedy, afterward, they began to clear one by one, deciding to make another plan tomorrow, since many couldn't make it on a short notice. Ria stared at the three empty bottles of wine on the coffee table, she didn't quite recall how many glasses she had, two or three, lost in her nerves and fun. Well, that's not all of them, but it was good enough for me, Naruto sighed and sat at the end of the other couch, Ria stared at him, while he was smiling, something troubled him. Her belly felt warm, and she fiddled with her hands, he turned on the TV again and watched some other show that she paid no attention to, Rias wanted to talk, but it always made her nervous to bring up some topics, they needed to improve, she felt emboldened. We should clear the air, yeah, he scratched his head, it's that you think you love me. She frowned, I don't think so, I know so, he frowned too, you said you never experienced it, I haven't either, so there's no way to be certain. And you're certain that you think you know my feelings? She retorted, have you felt love? No, he sighed, she felt a smile grace her lips, she won, I kinda want to find out. She edged herself closer, the taste of fruit on her lips. Do you remember that conversation with my pawn? Issei? Kinda blurs together after a while, especially since most of them are the same thing. Oh, what about? Her question could hold, you, he really likes you, get to know him. She frowned and decided to change the subject, tell me, you're a devil now, would you ever consider a harem? He laughed, I already answered this, I think that's the stupidest thing ever. Truly? She asked, she fell deeper in love, if he were hers, she would be hers alone, she edged closer, to the middle seat, well, devils usually have. Yada yada, devils are more selfish and stuff like that, I don't buy it, so far, I haven't seen anything different, it's just culture. Once again, she felt it come, she hoped, truly hoped, there were always traitorous thoughts. Besides, he shrugged, I am not even sure to begin with that, I just want what my mom and dad had. She sighed and rested her head on the couch, she stared at him, his deep blue eyes would occasionally glance, it's normal, even my father has one, I really want what you want. You know, never thought I'd have a serious conversation about harems, he muttered, he made the word so vulgar, he wore a tight short sleeve, his arm looked firm, she brought herself closer. Thank you, she said, for bringing me out to meet your friend, he had been considerate all day, she tucked in her legs. He shifted his weight, learning toward her, they'll get used to you, she smiled, thinking of when he trained, the lengths he would go, just like I have, I guess. Rias couldn't help herself any longer, she grasped his arm, it felt hot, he stared but didn't react, had he drunk some of the wine? She brought herself closer, shaking all the while, scared that he would push her off and storm out mad. It didn't happen. All she could hear was the wild drum of her heart in her ears, she feared that if she said anything, it would break the spell, she had to speak, and it came out a whisper, are you going to stop me? He didn't reply, and she felt bolder, she moved her legs, seating atop his lap, Rias leaned down, thinking it was a dream, yet, even as she brought her lips to his, it felt as real as their first one, she felt his hand trailing up her leg to rest on her thigh, for a moment of bliss, he returned the kiss, but then he pulled away, he nudged her away, almost reluctantly. You kissed me back, she said, her heart was going to burst, you feel something for me. His features twisted, his voice low, you're imagining things. Whatever happened, it was broken, she moved away, realizing that he was uncomfortable, am I? She whispered. He was silent for a long time, it feels good, but that's all to it, you're a pretty girl, Rias, but it doesn't go much deeper than that, go for someone who would return your feelings, and not someone who would just use you to feel good. It hurt but it also felt nice to hear, it just made her fall in love deeper, but I only want you. There must have been something, anything, in that moment, did he use her? Tell me, why did you return the kiss? Is what you said true? Like I said earlier, I've thought of having something like that, you thought of being in love? He stared straight ahead, his jaw set, it wasn't of you, if that's what you're asking, are you sure about that? I just know, then I just know what I feel about you, 
he cleared his throat loudly, obnoxiously, anyway. I am tired, so unless you want to sleep on the couch, it'll take the room, by the way this didn't happen thanks for watching.